prophecy. He promised that he was going to open the door unto us, and he did. Hallelujah. You know, towards the end, when that began to speak about door again, I just remember that that was what he promised from, the, from Monday when we began to pray. And the Lord showed himself faithful. He showed us mercy. Can we open up our mouth this morning and give God thanks this morning? Let's start on that note of thanksgiving, opening up our mouth, speaking to our Lord Jesus Christ, thanking him for how he came to us in writing the vision yesterday throughout last week from Sunday till yesterday evening. We give you praise, our Father. Can we open up our mouth? Don't whisper the thanksgiving. Don't whisper the praise to our Father. Let worship go out of your heart. Let blessing go out of your heart to our Father this morning. Alebra tama shanda kalide mezi pro kabalata kabrata ya galegeleba ojanda kaprotegeli araga bagabata mbazanda galiere gebagabago shide geleba abrato zibro kabagabash keliande ere gagagagabaga shanda galiere ezenda kaprotegeli abagabagabagabahata ere kabrato zibro majanda kalege Eba, agenda kala dazia, agenda kala dadia. Can you open your mouth? Can you bless our Father? Mina nosia patadia pakalegeria. Agenda kapare kepata zadeke patozi dagande. Ore papata zada kata gande kele kada kada gada. Oh, we glorify you, Jesus. We bless you, our Father. We honor you today. We say thank you. Thank you for the atmosphere of the Spirit. Thank you for hot trance that we experienced. Thank you for grace for to pray that we experienced throughout last week. Thank you, Lord Jesus. O brande shimananandi aratoziba. Mare papa protegelema. O jende cabrone mansia patoleda. Are capra babagabalege. Mejele naha. A jene manda. Ejene moza, ejene mande, ejene monde, ajene mande, ejene mande, ajore capa zande capalia rosonta lide, me juge pour le prata liere gebo. Thank you for the blessing, thank you for the blessing, thank you for your presence, thank you for life, thank you for giving your Sabbath utterance, thank you for the blessing, for the atmosphere of the spirit, thank Thank you, Lord Jesus. O bele mania nasa, miro tezi manoshiga, ajele keboleba, ejele manopora, erute bole para pata le pratobe riara sande, majonjele, o jange maniande, ejengele barate, ejenge boreba, ejenge manaza, habole, hepasia, manamba, hapapa, hepopa, eleka, merepa, azomira. Tosia para gabagabagabasa. O jirio popa prote ke propa pre naniana sate. O pre tu zushi gabolia pariara gabasa. Ele cre copasodia pariara gabagabate. E protege liere geboska. Honor to your name, Jesus. Thank you for the building of God. Thank you for the bread of God. Thank you for insight, for understanding, for the blessedness of your spirit, for inspiring us, for touching in our soul, for helping us to believe you, for helping us to see you, to see the building of the Lord. Oh, brother, Sande Garida, Majanda Caprote Geribo, E Prosiva, Mijando Fita, Abreto Mana, Abrato Mena, Abreto Mena, Abreto Mena, Brata Siara Cabrata Yagalegereba. For in Jesus' name we are praying. I would like us to pray this morning. I know we have a very short time to pray, but I would like us to pray with all of our hearts. You know, in my heart, I'm just seeing the Lord, you know, using this platform to continue what he began to say, even throughout last week to yesterday. Hallelujah. 
God has provided us, provided for us an opportunity for the things, for, for the furthering of what God has begun to say. Hallelujah. God wants to continue. And I want us to be set. I want us to be ready. I don't want you to think, ah, you are full. Yesterday is enough. Wow, the experience from morning to evening was beautiful. But God is still, still wants to say something. God wants to bring his building down. God wants to continue the thought and his intent in this, on this platform. We've seen that happen over and over and over again. Whenever this, this, this place is made available to, to his servant, our daddy, Reverend Kyle, okay, God continues. God uses every of, the, every of the platform as he goes there to further whatever he's saying per season. Hallelujah. Can we pray that every one of us will be hungry today? You know, you, we don't want to come. We don't want to come. Uh, I'm tired because I know some people are late right now because they are tired because of yesterday. Even me, I got late. I was running like, uh, <laughs> I don't know how, how I was coming. I even got here to start praying right now. It's by mercy. Hallelujah. Every, you, you have tendency today to switch off, to, to not be hungry, to be tired and, and be distracted and be weak in your body. But can we pray that whatever it required for the blessing of the Lord to come down today upon this service that the Lord will give unto us. He will give strength to the weak. He will give grace to the, to the, to the feeble mind. Everyone that is there, he will give understanding to us. He will give hunger. He said hunger is a blessing. Can we pray that he will baptize every one of us with hunger? We one father's blessing. That father's blessing. God gives us the opportunity. Whenever our dad comes here, Jesus, we are asking. We want to be ready as a church. It's upon us to be ready. It's upon us to be hungry. It's upon us to be to, to, to cry to God for help, for to draw from the Lord. We want to draw from him again today. Can we pray that the Lord will baptize you with hunger. He will help you to hunger and thirst. He said hunger, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. He said they shall be filled. This is your intent. This is your blessing. When we cry for hunger, for help, Jesus, we are asking that you send that help to us, the help of hunger. Help of hunger, help of thirst, help of understanding. Help us to be hungry for what you want to give. Help us to go beyond our limitation. Every one of us this body, over this service, in the teenagers' class, in the young believers' class, even in the, cl in the class of the children, the Sunday school, and the ministration of the world, every beat of this service, we will pull, we will draw, we will draw from you again. This money in the name of Jesus, we will draw, individuals will draw, families will draw, husbands will draw, sisters will draw, our parents in the Lord will draw. They will receive blessing for us today. In the name of Jesus. Yando pratalada. Ere paro shimana. Mezi frotabalata. E greke bolo shimanate. E protali ere kebolo shandagosia. Ere kalatayele. Mere paratalele. E protari aragalele. We want you what you want to serve. We want what you are putting in the heart of your servant. We ask oh God. We are hungry. We are thirsty. Help us to draw. Help us to bring it down. Help us to be hungry enough to feed us. We know you are ready. Don't let this door be locked upon us. Let it be open upon you and leave you a church. Help us to enter. Help us to find entrance this body. Everyone in this assembly, brethren, that will be online that fellowship with us, every one of us, Jesus, we will be hungry. We will be thirsty. We will begin to draw from you. We begin to long for you. O pratalemne no shibara, a regelema, o janda toma, e jende pala, e jende pona, a jende prina, o pratabosia, e pole para, a catalema. Egeria potesime anahata, e greco breco brata lide. Open the door to us. Open your door to us. Help us to find entrance. Help everyone that will attend this service this morning. Find entrance. We want Father's blessing. We want Father's blessing. We want communia. We want to fellowship with you. We want to participate in your fellowship. We want to have a counter with your spirit. We want to have entrance into the door. 
that you have opened upon us. Lord Jesus, we are asking this morning. Have mercy upon us. Let everyone have entrance. Let everyone come in. Even in Sunday school, help us to come in. Help us to come in. We will not miss out this blessing that you are bringing upon us as, a, as an assembly, upon us as a church. Lord Jesus, this money, we will not miss it. When our daddy come, blessing has come. Something will drop. Something will rest upon our daddy, Pastor Mega, Guchuku, and Pastor Lily, and Guchuku. And in turn, it will rest upon us. Therefore, we are asking, position your servant. Position your servant. Oh, for blessing. Position us for blessing. Position every one of us for blessing this morning. Help us not to be right. Let our heart be right with you. Let our heart be right with you. Help us to be instant in season and out of season. Even in weakness, we will long for you. At any state we are, you will meet us today. You will help us come up. You will touch us. You will touch us. The way you touch Daniel, you will touch us. And he said he's ready to hear you again. We are here to hear you again. Touch us this money put in us life the way you touch Ezekiel touch us again help us to come alive help us to rise upon our feet help us to yeah be on our watch and trap blessing let your servant trap blessing for us let everyone receive blessing today in the name of Jesus Oprato Mirashia Balata, E Greporia Posirio Patale, Ajengele Pale, Ajengele Pale, Passions, Passions, things that are for new and living way church in this open door, Lord of heaven, let it come down, let it rest upon his servant, let it rest upon us, let it come down, let it rest upon your unmaiden, O God, Oprata Liele Sanda Carida, Mazongele, Ajengele. Jembreto, a jembreta, a jembrote, a jembreta, a brendola, a gendialo, mesandola, a papale, a pepele, maratole, a retale, a repole, a zondele, are you pray, a zanda caprata, liaragabalasa. O pretesiri a patosima nanash cabalata. E grepo polina. O zishe fetimanasia. E gembra tomanoba. E gembre caboleba. A gembre cobaleba. A gembro caboleba. E gembro cabalana. A preele siato. A preano sande. E le copande. Mare pokena. A re catoma. A re cotema. Are catema, o gende cana, a preto mania, o re papara, a zanda cosica, a protaminasi morele. O girio papa protegeriba, e pratalia racapapa palierosia, e protege lege lege lea. O jande caprote manazotia, o grande lebo shibereba, a janda calena, jande geleba, e re papa paprote, gelia rosia, matania no si taboloha, o gemanioro, chandelea, a jandelia pro paprataega. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. I would like us to pray this morning that the Lord will bless this service with all trans. That the Lord will press out the things, you know, we are, we, we are praying that God should continue what he has begun to speak. The portion of what is for New and Living with New Way Church in this open door. The Lord uses this platform, we know. But there are things when they come, they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are for us. Hallelujah. It's for New and Living Way Church and there's only a Living Way Church without the people, without our pastor. Hallelujah. We know we want that blessing. And the other way around, the blessing or this open door, we are, we are spoken into it. Hallelujah. We are, we are able to assess it by words, by the things declared to us. Jesus must be made manifest. Our Lord Jesus, everlasting life must be made manifest. The door must be made manifest by speaking, by declaration, by things that God that, will, that God will press out from the breakthrough of utterance in those thoughts concerning the door. The door, God began to speak it in many ways that today, the portion for new and living way church will be pressed out. It will be brought forth by great utterance. That 
that there will be breakthrough of utterance. Can we pray for our daddy, Reverend Kaya Deoyegoke? And everyone who will have a new breakthrough, a new landmark, a new download, a new blessing, a new access, a new grace. Lord Jesus will rest for the prosperity of the world this morning, for the prosperity of your thought, for the prosperity and painting of that which your purpose for new and living way church with this apostolic blessing, with this apostolic co co convocation, with this apostolic coming of your servant, even to our midst, Jesus, it will come and rest. There will be blessing of our trust. There will be blessing of our trust. There will be breakthrough today. In the name of Jesus, men, women, will be equipped by servant, by your mercy that you are placed over him. There will be equipping. There will be so much power. There will be deliverance. There will be deliverance. There will be deliverance. There will be deliverance. Everyone that their walk has stopped. Jesus, you will energize again today. You will help that leg again today. By the word of your servant. By the word that you are put in the mouth of your servant. You will have mercy, oh God. Breakthrough of all trust. I can't hear you. Are you praying with all of your heart? Can you open your mouth and pray? This is how laws are given. This is how keys are given. This is how entrance are given. He's my utterance. He's my utterance. He's my utterance. He's my utterance. He's my painting. He's my being able to say those things and paint before us. This open door. Every adversary today is quenched. He's quenched. Will not prosper against us, against your word, against your speaking at every level even with children in the name of Jesus in teenagers class in the name of Jesus even in the young believers class every level today that will be our trust our trust given 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 back your servant back your servant even at the Sunday school back your servant oh God Ajeliere Pasandalia Ekrato biria posi manda o jengelio potalia bosia a prepo bariada sandaha eke komeria patale galane a pratale cabrataya galaha a gele o gelema a jolebo a gelena a geleba a geleba a geleba a geleba a geleba a geleba a ria Shanda Kapariata Liaraha Ejembolia Posi Prataleba Ojendiara Taliere Kabalaha Achelliore Pariara Gabata Ariele Cabrato Zinahaha Akale Kratoma Nahaha Erika Prata Libro Talena Ajole Cara Sande Etebo Sida Pande Ale Capole Pande Ale Capole Pande Ele Capole Pande Ejoria Patasiria Palaha O je 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 ja, a je 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 ja, e je 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 ja, a ja je 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 ja, me repa je 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 ra, ale na na ha, me repa tama, a prepa tane, a repa toba, ale kelema, e repa rata, ale kosande, a rakadenda. Bless your servant with great utterance today. Oh, you will come to us. You will speak to us. Us. You will speak to us. You will grant great utterance. Even to your servant, to our pastor, Pastor Tuji, to all the pastors in your believers class, to all the teachers, even at every level, the teenagers class, the children department. We want to experience great, 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 great utterance. Even in this service today, upon your servant, our daddy, Lord Jesus, aid him, aid him, help him, let the angel. Help your servant. Let it help your servant. Let there be help. Let there be help. That help yourself. That ministry spirit yourself. He will minister to him. He will minister with him. He will minister to him. He will minister with him. Oh, Prala Shande Kariarata. 
O jise fro tabariba, o jenda krato beria patazande, o jina mbro tabali, a tomba, a prato, a jena, a ganda, a gele, a posa, a tona, a jele, koporiba, capra, kamba, sande, kapalata, o kopo, paparia, papapapa, paparia, pa you pray, can we pray in this way? Can you open your mouth and pray very well? We want all, we desire all, we desire all, we desire all, that you have your mind and plan and purpose for new and living way, church. Lord Jesus, we ask, oh God, let this place be checked. Let this stage be set. Let the atmosphere be ready for the divulging, for the, 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 the bringing forth of those things that you have proposed for this door. This door that you have opened. Lord Jesus, passions, passions of new and living way, church. We will come into it by speaking, by speaking, by declaration by saying in the name of Jesus Yando Aprota Abela Mejando Apara Apara Osana Akata Abola Abala Osane Ekatia Palosia and Joje J J Balia O Jandia La Talaha Mere Parasontia O Tebro Palia Echombra Palia Aperia Palia Aparia Palia Eperia Palia Aparia Palia O je 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 brote boria pato sibra e krato beria palia bata a jole paria doside e poli e paria baba a le 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 e re le le posibali a le 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 baranda o jandele para to siba o chele para to sande a le ke para tandega a le ke para tonia a le ke para tondie e re ke baria tondie a perie para Jesus, O prepare a ragabata sia palega. We give you glory, Jesus. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. I would like us to pray for every of our brethren. We thank God that you are able to be here by now. I know there is a lot, a lot of us are still out there. We ask, can we ask ever to bring them here safely? And it will take us home back safely today. Can we open up our mouth and pray in the name of Jesus? Don't reduce the prayer. This is important. The Lord will have, even our daddy is still out there, that the Lord of heaven will clear the road. There will not be any form of delay for everyone and anyone that is meant to be here in Charity Pavilion this morning, Jesus. We ask, O oh God of heaven, that indeed you will send your ministry spirit. You will send it to all the roads, everyone, everyone, everyone that God has ordained to be here in Charity Pavilion. None of them will be hindered. None of them will be hindered, both spiritually and physically. On that road, their movement and their migration towards Charity Pavilion right now, they will find aid, help of spirit, help of ministry spirit. Lord Jesus, no vehicle will bring Break down on the road. No punctured tire. No, no accident. No accident. In the name of Jesus. Yando bara taleba. Ojelia para talega. Ojena paria ragabata. Ajelia poria bagabola. Ajelia kaparia na sandeleha. Ojendeleha. 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 Ajendeleha. Ejendeleha. Ajandaleha. Ojanda. Para ascenda cara a patabole parieregebo everywhere anywhere our brethren are coming from Lord Jesus your hand will be on them your hand will help them no one will lose their good no one will enter one chance you will show mercy in the name of Jesus you will cause our brethren to migrate to journey down by grace and mercy in the name of Jesus oh Ale Shandelema Ekrataba Sandepolia O Jele Parotemanda Ale Kazia Bole Boba Ele Kobere Patonia Ajeli Kabaria Tosende Kapola 
Can you pray to her that you are here is by God's mercy? Can we pray? Can we pray? Our prayer avails much. Makes tremendous power available. Makes safety available. Makes angel available. Makes strength available. Makes wisdom available to escape the trap set by the enemy. In the name of Jesus, on our way, our everyone that is coming, on the way of everyone that is coming, those trap who will escape it. Satan will not take advantage. We will not be disturbed. We will not be distracted. Our heart will come for this Father's blessing. Our heart will come for this open door. The heart, every heart of everyone that is out there, that is journeying towards this place. Our heart will begin to turn towards it. Satan will not have way. His way will not prosper. His things will not prosper. His passions will not prosper. Against our brethren. Against everyone of us, our going back, we know Satan is always angry. Whenever our daddy is coming, he's always angry. Can we pray that that plan will not prosper today? That our daddy will be able to come easily. Our brother will be able to come. In the name of Jesus. Oprah la shande, olina sonda, maro sapata, ere kabonda, hale minasia, hapala toma, he karo taba, he pozandeba, he kala toma, he rosha patalida. We pray, O oh God, O oh, Jijele Poti Manada, Ele Tuzevi, Azuzevi, Esuzevi, Azuzevi, Azasevi, Esesevi, Azesevi, the road will be cleared. Whenever it's coming, when the time it begins to come, angels will be on God. That road will not be hindered. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be also for every of our brethren out there. They will be helped to come. Ejimani apashanda kaliele ojeje repalote amanaha eriata zande karibo apasa tagalata e prata zandaliela e protezi parotama e ropa baba 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 Jesus we call. We cry, we ask, oh God, have mercy upon us today. Bring your servant here. Help us to be blessed. Help us to be blessed. Help us to be blessed today. In the name of Jesus, position us. Position us. Help our daddy. Help our mommy. Jesus, we honor you. Hallelujah. For in Jesus' name we're praying. Can we deliberately from our heart give God thanks for what he wants to do today? That this assembly will be positioned for this open door. The things that will, you know, that our daddy Pasebeka will be will be ushered in. That every one of us will be ushered in. Our mommy will be ushered in. Everyone that wish that God has, has allocated for New and Living Way Church in this open door season, in these times and season, in this time, Lord Jesus, that we will not miss it. Can we give God thanks? You know, we have prayed concerning it. Can we rise up and give God thanks? You are not doing well. You are just looking. Can you give God thanks? Let it come from your heart. All that we have lifted before heaven. We have prayed for our trust. We have prayed for a great atmosphere. We have prayed for a blessing. Blessing that the Lord has put upon his servant. You know that blessing that started since this week and it continued yesterday. We know that it's going to continue here today. We give God thanks for it. We bless you Jesus. We thank you for our brethren. We thank you for everyone that you have ordained and proposed. Jesus Jandeli Arahata. We give you praise. For well, because you will bring them. We give you glory. We thank you for answer to all our prayers this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the visitation you have for us this morning, even the coming of our parents to bless us this morning. Lord, we ask that the atmosphere of the Spirit will be contagious. Amen. That, Lord, there will be so much leverage and so much help Amen. given to every soul Amen. to ascend. Amen. Lord, I pray that there will be so much faith in the hearts of the people. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I pray that none will be left out. Amen. That everyone will take part fully 
at different measures in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for those who are coming on their way. Lord, you will bring them here safely. And for those who are online, I pray that the same grace, the same blessing will reach them in the name of Jesus. Thank you for, as we go into Sunday school, our teachers, they are before you, oh God, I pray that you will anoint them specially, that they will be of great blessing to us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. You may get seated. And those of you who are going to the other class, uh, other classes, you can begin to go right now. You can begin to go to your classes. We have the Young Believers class and also we have the Reception class. Uh, let's begin to go right now. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I think this is the last of the... This is the last one <laughs> as well. Praise God. Amen. Aren't you excited? Okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But have you learned something during this series? Have you learned something? Suppose I turn today to interaction. I'll call you one after the other to come and share what you learned through this uh, series that we've taken in Sunday school. Praise God. Are we together here this morning? Yes, sir. Some people seem to still be at home. Some people are still making up, you know, dressing their faces and all of that. Uh, I want you to be here. I want you to gather yourself together. Just gather your mind and, you know, your faculties. Just bring them together and let's be here in fellowship, right? So I said, if I call us to come and share with one another what we've learned through this meeting. I hope we have something that we're going to say because we'll get to do that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Nobody's saying anything now. Okay, but I'll just allow this on the school teachers do whatever they want to do today. So if it pleases them to call you, they'll call you, you'll come and share with them whatever you learned through this lesson. Praise God. Amen. 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 At least say amen. amen. I will not call you because you said amen. Amen. All right. Uh, let's welcome our teacher this morning, Pastor TJ, as he comes up. Pastor TJ is dressed like a general, like a veteran. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Miss Bobo. Miss Bobo. All right. Praise God. We thank God for another opportunity like this to study um, along the lines of the emphasis that the Lord has placed over us at this time. And as Daddy said, um, even if we might not be too excited about the topic, but it's not every topic that benefits you that you're excited about. So... We will rise above the excitement or lack thereof and take the lessons that the Lord wants us to take in the name of Jesus. Okay, by God's grace and glory be to God, this is the last in the series of church life in the times of troubles and tribulations. This is the last lesson. Yes, I said glory be to God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Tribulation. Of course, you know the end of the topic doesn't mean the end of it is somebody's life I wish it was, but it's not that. In fact, this for, for, for some of us, it's just about to start. And you know, God waited for the series to come to this point. Say, hey, now that you know what you are up, what's going to be coming upon you in the next couple of seasons, now you know, let's start it. Also, I pray that we all gleaned as much as we could from uh, the lessons. I thank God they've been recorded. We can go over them again and again. And uh, I'm sure there'll be a source of encouragement there and there especially the lesson Pastor uh, AY2, Pastor Ayo took. That one was very encouraging. I was here listening to everybody was shouting, yeah, 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 bring tribulation, tell your neighbor I love tribulation. <laughs> it's good. Ginger, somebody say ginger. It's normal, why are you about to go to war? <clears throat> your general gingers. 
All those songs that you used to sing in NYC when you were marching, those are songs to ginger you for war. You know, when you finish singing, ah, let's go, let's go, let's go, and take endurance trek, let's go! And then five miles in, who sent me a message? Who sent me a message? So, uh, it's necessary for those kind of, that kind of ginger. Um, the Lord will see us all through in the name of Jesus. Just remember, at the end of the story is not tribulation. The end is glory. Tell your neighbor, the end is what? Glory. Yes, it's glory. It's glory. Amen. All right, this is lesson seven by God's grace. Um, um, the topic is the essence of understanding tribulation. Um, let's quickly go through our memory track. It says, by God's grace, in our last lesson, we looked into the times of tribulation after the historic biblical age. When I say historic biblical age, you know, we explained last week how the Bible is, first of all, the spiritual archive. Well, not even an archive. Archive is something that is past. It's a spiritual document before it is a historical archive and then it has its, uh, of course, it's a prophetic document first uh, after the spiritual document, then it's a historical archive. And then it's finally a literal document. So in our interpretation, we always start from spiritual to prophetic to historical to physical or literal. So it's, it's the historical times. After the historical times of the Bible, we had, we had persecution during the historical age of the Bible. We also had persecutions after. And um, God, I believe, raised some people to document those um, experiences so that the church doesn't uh, doesn't uh, detach itself from its heritage in tribulation. Let's say amen. So um, uh, we looked at that uh, extensively. Uh, Lord raised some people and daddy also recommended some books for us to read, God's Generals. Um, there's one of them that's called The Martyrs. One of those series called General The Martyrs talks about people who uh, went through thick and thin for the preservation of the gospel, the gospel for us and also in allegiance to the Lamb. Okay, we saw how the church went through over a century, actually three centuries, almost three centuries, a long persecution period. Uh, it's known as the ten primitive persecutions, I know, uh, persecutions of the church. Started from Nero and ended up, I think, in Servius over 300 years, with many of God's people being called to pay the ultimate price. We also saw how their sacrifice paved the way for the truth of the gospel to be, to be preserved. And in some cases, restored. Some like Martin Luther, who the Lord used in a season of great persecution to restore certain truths to the church. And it has been like that over the ages. We also saw, so that, so, right, so that we could have light to walk in the ways of God in our generation. Let's say amen. The truth of the matter is that we are standing on their shoulders. We are standing on their sacrifice. We are standing on their blood. We are standing on their sweat. We are standing on their tears. We are stand, standing on their dealings. They laid down their lives so that we would have the gospel heritage in our generation. Satan has fought tooth and nail to make sure that the gospel in its purest essence is removed from the earth. That is his ultimate battle. He wants to remove God's footprint completely. But God in time and again has raised men and men and women uh, to stand, as it were, stand for, to hold the truth. Somehow I wonder, why is it that we need people to stand? <clears throat> why? Because man is the object of the gospel. Man is actually the object of the gospel. The intention of the salvation program is for God to inhabit men. So the two most important entities in that scenario are God and men. And if you can remove the, uh, the, the footprint of God and miss men, then the program of salvation, or what we properly call God's agenda, will not run its full course. So the Lord will definitely have to come through those same men that Satan is attacking and use one or two to preserve the gospel so that we can stand today and, and preach the gospel and hear it and be changed thereby. Um, we all, we, I think one of the things, you know, sometimes I think when, I swear, when we finally when the rule is called up yonder, as they say, finally, and you meet some of these saints, there are some people I would love to greet personally, you know, some biblical people, and then some people you've read about, you know, I just want to, I would just, ah, I say, thank you, sir, thank you. Somebody you should, all of us should thank very well, my, my brother Martin Luther, you know, he's very much alive. As much as you say, I smell like, I'm telling you, that is one great major foundation that all of our gospel is hinged upon. The just shall live by faith. Of course, it's been in the Bible, but somebody got to use somebody to preserve it or to bring it back and make it foundational 
even in the, in the, in the uh, uh, salvation program for all of us, especially the church. So there are people like that, many of them. Uh, we looked at a few of them last week. Uh, so today, by God's grace, in the final lesson of this series, we shall be looking at the essence of studying this topic. Now, um, for some, we might have thought it's a detour. And um, it's actually not a detour. It's a continuation, I believe, uh, for the, uh, uh, of the theme of this year. Who remembers the theme of this year? Who remembers the theme? The theme for this year, the beginning of the year. What, the year of what? Great exactly. Say your neighbor, the year of what? Great appearing. Yes, remember. Now, there is a very, very, very close-knit relationship between appearing and tribulation. Very, very close. Um, they, are, they are strange bedfellows, as it were. Tribulation and appearing. They are very closely knit in scriptures. So um, we're going to be looking at the essence of why we have to study it. Um, it's, it's like I said, it's not a deviation. It is to prepare us for what this atmosphere or this, um, this season that's over us as a people. Let's say amen. All right. So in this final lesson of the series, we shall be looking into the essence of studying this sobering topic. Why should a believer be taught about tribulation, persecution, and trouble? You know, it doesn't seem to gel with the blessedness and the salvation. Most of us, the salvation program we heard, the salvation message we heard is come and be free. And it's not like that. I can't translate it. What is it? What is Igbala? Come run and come and receive salvation. Yes. Sare o wagba iwosan healing. What's it dandy? Thank you. I was singing this song. I didn't know what I was singing. But I shall know that there's something about it. When you hear it, it's liberty. And we have preached the liberty aspect of the gospel. And we have thought that that is all it contains. Unfortunately, or fortunately, actually fortunately, that's not all. Because if that is all we received, come and be free, all is well, we will never grow. We will never amount to fulfilling the agenda of God for humanity. Because it means we are oblivious of the fact that we have an enemy in a very great degree. All right. So we're looking today as to why we need to study tribulation. Let's read one of our passages. It's fairly long. Let's just read it. Uh, Matthew chapter 3, 24 rather. Matthew 24 from verse 3 to 24. Matthew chapter 3, 24, sorry, from verse 3 to 24. Um, is it? Okay, can we all see it? All right. All right, we are going to, we're all going to read together. Is everybody ready? It's on the screen. I hope the projectors, or maybe you should also open to your Bible because sometimes the projector, uh, sorry, delays a bit. So it will be good for us to open our Bibles as backup. Matthew 24, because I want us to read it together. Matthew 24 from verse 3 to 24. All right, are we ready? Are we ready? Let's ask your neighbor, are you ready? All right. All right, let's read. One, two, go. He sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be? I'm only hearing my own voice. And it shall. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And shall deceive many, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must be come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes and diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a wit for witness unto all nations and then shall the end come when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet 
Stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let him which be in Judea flee unto the mountains. Let him which be on the house top not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that our flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great... And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the sake of the elects be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or here is Christ, if not, let's say amen. Let's read on 25. Let's stop at, we're going to stop at 30. 25, let's go. Let's say amen. amen. So what is the end? At the end of tribulation is what? Glory. Great glory. Let's say great glory. Great glory. So the end is of your story is not tribulation. So if you are going through something, it means you have not ended. Let's say amen. amen. As you with it shall come what? To pass. Tell your neighbor it shall come to pass. As it come, it will go. It will go. And it will leave you better. Let's say amen. All right, so why are we studying about tribulation? Why have we taken time out to study tribulation? I know some of the, uh, this is a very, uh, not too interesting passage in scripture. You prefer to read Ephesians 1, 17 to the end than read this. You prefer to read Colossians 1, probably even prefer to read John uh, than read this portion uh, because it's, it's almost like a horror movie. But it was Jesus talking. It was Jesus, and many people have tried to act it out, they've played it out in dramas and stuff. And uh, we're not delving into the uh, nitty-gritty of it. I'm just trying to show that one thing about this is that the first, people to me- first person to mention anything about trouble upon us, I'm sure the prophets mentioned it here and there, but Jesus explicitly, he did not mince words, he explicitly told the disciples. And why did he have to do it? Because he had to prepare them for it. Let's say amen. So one of the reasons why it's been taught, the first reason is that Jesus taught it. Is your Bible, is it not read? It's red, Abby. It's in red letters. And we know anything in red. That means Jesus said it. So from our manuals now, Jesus taught it. Our Lord Jesus did not mince words when intimating his disciples on matters concerning tribulation and persecution. So if Jesus deemed it important enough to teach his followers, then it would be remiss of us to ignore the topic. In fact, it would be dangerous. There's a reason why Jesus had to explain this to them. One reason, it's not even because of the trouble, physical pain. Jesus told us why. Let's go back to verse 9 and 10, or what we just read. 24, Matthew 24, 9 and 10. You know that story that they compressed in how many chapters of whatever book you read? Exodus, Leviticus. You know it's 40 years. That book is, that book is longer than some of us have been alive. 40 years, I mean 40 years, 40 years. So it's not just a short thing. You tell them, ah, they are, they are. Why did they behave like this now? It was so short. It wasn't so soon. You say, ah, but they, they just finished uh, punishing them in, in chapter 2. Why in chapter 5 are they behaving like this? No, just through chapter 2 chapter 5 can be 25 years. Can you remember the instruction God gave you five years ago? Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to say that the, one of the reasons why it's documented and being preserved is that 
That story, that, 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 as they said, there's written for our example. The way they live is exactly how we are. And you see, one thing that happened to them in the wilderness is that they got offended. And in the midst of tribulation, those that got offended and got offended and, were, and responded to the offense ten times, none of them entered the promise. That is the detriment of not learning about tribulation. It's not about, okay, let's prepare ourselves so that well, when they are catching us, that we're not to brace us. It's not about bracing yourself. It's about not getting offended. We have sung that so many times. I will not be offended. This is where it is. You have sang it oh, for 10 years. Some of you have sang it. I know how your spirit carried you when you sang it. When it's all, when what is coming down? It's your life. When your life is being pulled down, like they told us yesterday, when they are breaking it down, when it's being crumbled, I will, may I will never be offended. And you have sworn, you have prayed. It was a prophecy. That must come to pass in your life. And that was the, that was, if anything that Jesus was concerned about is that. It is that. It's not even the dropping of your physical body. That is nothing. The issue is that you must not be offended. You mustn't be offended. To be offended is to, is to undermine the program of delivering you from your enemy. Your Bible will say, what's that mean? The, um, the enemy is in your backyard. But the person where they do you go, 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 and inside your house today. I know that's a very, very nasty, robust statement. But it says a bearing scripture. The Bible says, the enemy, your enemy, you know, they used to want to tell you that the people that are doing you are living in your house. That's not what that scripture was saying. The Bible says, the enemy is your enemies are of your own household. It's not, it's not your brother, your sister. It's your household. They are here. They have been installed in your gene. Now, to separate you, it takes tribulation. How many of us are science, scientists? You know centrif centrifuge? Uh, somebody that's a scientist said, yeah. You know centrifuge? When you want to separate, or the medical people want to separate blood from plasma, it's all together. Now, imagine the plasma. Who, sorry, I'm, I've never seen it too, but I've heard about it. That is a different color. That when they separate it, the red corpuscles and the white corpuscles, they, in fact, they start separating. You start see two red colors. Now, when you bleed yourself and you see, you just see one red, all you see is red. Abby, that is you. Now imagine the plasma, the white part, is the part that should remain and all the red should go. Now they put you in a centrifuge. Have you seen a centrifuge? How many of us have been in a roller coaster? You know roller coaster, that thing that you girls are, ah! they'll be shouting when you're spilling. Ah! And the guys will be forming. They too are shouting, but they're shouting inside. <clears throat> Jesus, who sent me? Who sent me? They said, this is fun. This is not fun. Centrifuge. But then they spin. You can be offended. Now, if you are offended, they will not separate the bad from the good. They will not separate you from your enemies. Those ones living in you. Now, if you are offended at that, it means two things. One, you don't understand the program of salvation. And the essence of being separated from your enemy. Then you get offended. Then when you, are, when you get offended, you are saying that Jesus does not know what he's doing. You are undermining his wisdom. You are undermining his love. So that was why Jesus was telling them, I'm preparing you so that when I come to deliver you, because that's what tribulation actually is, you will not be offended. May we not be offended. The issue, the main issue is offense. Offense. Now, who is the instigator of offense? Of course, it's the enemy. Like I like to jocularly say, the last enemy to be destroyed is what? Bible students, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is... You know, death went into lake after the man of sin, after the, the Antichrist. Hell went into lake after him. He was the first to go to lake, but they produced him. They are his. Hell and death produced that guy. But hell and death were af afra are afraid of lake. The last enemy to destroy is death. So I'm saying that to say that the death in you does not want to die. So it will now rise up. What actually gets offended in you is that part that should go, that part that should be expired. The Bible said God subjected them in the wilderness to prove what was in their heart. What are you trying to prove to them? They must acknowledge that what does it mean is not okay. It needs to die. Two people did that and they inherited another spirit. The rest of the population didn't and they all died in the wilderness. Now in the season of tribulation, there's always temptation. They're not the same thing. But in the season of tribulation, there's always temptation. Temptation to be offended. And Jesus had to warn. 
his disciples. This will happen. You will see brethren betraying brethren. You will see all manner of things. See, I'm telling you these things ahead of time. So that you will be prepared for it. So that your heart, when you begin to see your heart going in that direction, you can begin to sanctify your heart. Sanctify your heart before the Lord. Sanctify your heart before the Lord. Say, Lord, you know what you're doing. I mean, you will, it, it will be a remiss of us to tell you that you will not go through hard times. Even if you are not born again, you will go through hard times. Hard times happen to all. If you say today, okay, I'm not going to, Jesus is not, Jesus is not the cause of hard times. The world is hard. Forget it. The world is hard on everybody. Hard on everybody. It's just you, you that have the Lord should, it should not just be hard, hard for nothing. You just suffer for nothing. Let me suffer for glory. Let me suffer for something worthwhile. To separate suffering from your life, it will not happen. Forget it. Remember when my baby, my daughter was uh, maybe about maybe uh, three weeks or four weeks, she now got had a lefo. What they call a lefo? Big, 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 big um, boys. I said, hey! I said, your small girl, your warfare has begun. It has begun. She had to, and as a parent, I would do what I can, but it's her hormone, her, what, her antibodies, her, what else? Her ability to regenerate that's inside her, it's not inside me. I can pray, I can fast, I can, but it's the, what's in her that has to work. I said, hey, yeah, I said, hey, yeah, I just say, hey, I said, your offer has already started. Oh, yeah, mele, mele. But that's what I can do. So I'm saying, everybody, suffering is part of humanity. Look at your neighbor and say, suffering is part of humanity. Now look at another person. Look at another person. Look at another person. Say, don't suffer for nothing. <laughs> suffer for glory. Let your suffering be worthwhile. Uh-huh. Amen. So one reason why I look at it, this is one reason why Jesus taught it. Jesus taught it because he was particular about his disciples not being offended. Not being offended. Did we get that? All right. Now, we said it is dangerous. Another reason why it is dangerous for us to ignore this t- topic, if we have, Jesus Christ took time to teach it, is because of the unavoidable connection that exists between tribulation and entrance into the kingdom. We've said that time and again. We, um, Acts 14.22, we can read that again. Acts 14.22. <clears throat> Acts 14.22. Okay. Acts 14, verse 22. Yeah, thank you. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. So this was part and parcel of the teaching of the disciples. They are showing them here. And like, uh, one reason why Jesus taught it is that you, will not, you are not qualified for entrance until they make you Adequate enough to enter. I think it was Pastor Ayala when he was teaching. He talked about how we are too big to enter into the door. They have to trim us down. The door is the door into the kingdom. Door into the kingdom of God. And it does not happen without them shaking off the excesses, shaking off the things that prevent you from entering. So it is, it is, it, it, they go, both go hand in hand. And your entrance, of course, entrance into the life of glory. I check it. If, you are, if the Lord opens your eyes, a lot actually helps you to see. Men, or your times of great entrance have always been times where you had a little bit of uh, a, a, um, uh, unease, unrest around you. Maybe you've not taken note. Maybe you're too distracted by the wala. But many times, that's the time they push you through. They push you through. They're trying to trim you down, to push you through the, through the door. And you enter through much tribulation. Sometimes the door is in front of you. You don't want to enter. And they say, but come to you. You must enter. Ah, this one, you must enter. And then they shake, 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 shake. And they remove, you remove the road behind you. There's no road. Put you against They put a wall behind you. You know, someone... Who has ever felt hedged in? You hedge me in. You have sang it. You know, you sang it. And then, I just thought, I've noticed many songs we sing. It's the tune we are singing. Some of those songs that even be written by our, by our pastor, Pastor Larry, some of them, go and just, don't remove the music, just read it. You say, yeah, this is what I've been saying since. And you have danced it, you raised, sometimes you even cry. <laughs> you hedge me in. You hedge me in. We skin all around me. You hate me. And I hate you. Ah, Lord, why are you hate me? But you sang it. You prophesied it. You hate me. So sometimes we have been hate. And if they don't hate us, because of the great the level of enmity that lies in souls, men will not enter. 
They have to sometimes remove all options. It's only forward. Forward ever. There's no backward. Go I say backward never because there's even no backward to go to. Just let's keep pressing on. Let's say amen. All right. So this is because it's on, uh, the, of the avoidable, unavoidable connection that exists between tribulation and entrance, and entrance into the kingdom, which was and still very much is the core of the message that Jesus preached. So when Jesus Christ was saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was telling them surreptitiously to prepare for tribulation. Because it's through much tribulation you enter that kingdom that I'm preaching about. And the, and the disciples actually saw it. They went through it. Even following Jesus up and down was a tribulation. I mean, just walking with him. Just walking with, going up and down with him. You imagine you were there when they wanted to stone Jesus. In fact, he, some tribulation to you will be even his response. Say, ah, Imagine Peter, ah, yeah, ah, let's deal with them finally. And God says, calm down. That is tribulation for an activist soul. Why do you think, why do you think Paul Peter ran away and they ran? They didn't run because he was afraid. He was, ready to, he was ready to die there. He was ready. But the response of the person is falling it was so confusing. That is tribulation enough. Tribulation to such an extent that when they said, this is, I don't know him more. Three times, I don't know him. That was somebody that was brought out sword just seconds earlier. I'm saying the seasons of tribulation are seasons. Jesus, your following Jesus will have, will, will, will be like being in a centrifuge. Separate, constant separation, constant separations that are never what a soul will agree to go through. But it's always beneficial. It's always worthwhile. May we go through them all in Jesus' name. All right. Another reason why we are um, studying uh, after this uh, tribulation, looking at... Uh, Understanding how to, how we ought to live in these times is that it is part and parcel of the program of the end. Let's say amen. amen. Let's say amen. amen. We see that in the final appearance of Jesus, we see that the final appearance of Jesus will be preceded by a season of great tribulation. We read that in Matthew 24. Um, let's read it again. Um, that's verse 29 and 30. Matthew 24, 29. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from, the hev from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear a sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming, down, coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's his appearance. That looks like an appearance, right? That's an appearance. But it was preceded by tribulation. Usually, usually. What? I'm going to ask why. I think one of the reasons is, is sometimes it takes a little bit of, excuse me, a little bit of um, shaking for trouble for us to, to get, thank you, sir. I didn't want to say, but it's just, that's what it's true. Sometimes they have to trouble you, if I'm more often than not, they have to trouble you to get your attention. This world is full of distraction. Your mom was telling us yesterday about distraction, the day, times of building, at times of great distraction. What are distractions? Distractions to prevent you from focusing on being built. And that is so that when he appears, you don't see him. Because those that will see him are those that have lifted up their eyes. Say, lift your eyes and look up. If you are bogged down by things here, you will not see him when he appears. And it's the enemy that wants to make sure you don't see him. Because you know that we, one of the reasons why you will be like him is because what? You saw him as he is. Remember that scripture in John, 1 John chapter 3, verse 2? It said, Behold, now we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be like, but we know. Tell your neighbor, we know. May we be in that company of them that know. That when he shall appear, why? We shall be like him. Nobody, you know why they, they use the word for? That word for is because. The reason why we will be like him is because we have seen him as he is. So when he, when he appears and we do not like him, it's because we have not seen him. Now, it takes trouble to focus, to help us focus sometimes. Focus. Remember that song, focus, focus, focus. I want you to look up. You all sang it. Focus. They were telling you tribulation, 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 because it's tribulation that will give you goggles, eyes, distraction. Sometimes you just go through something, you know, Jesus, it's only you, it's only you. You, I've, I've, I've prayed those prayers sometimes. I said, Lord, now only me and you. I'll never forget. One of, one of my, it's not my best year because my best years are not behind me. Let's say amen. But one of my no, most notable years in my spiritual journey was 2010. 
And I remember 20, 2009, 31st December, I was in crossover night and I was praying. I said, Lord, it is only me and you this 2010. Everybody don't go. Now only me and you. And preceding that was shaking. 2009 was major shaking. So by the time I was going to agree to us, I said, this 2010. God, it's only me and you. I said, everybody, just you and me. And that was one of, one, of, one of my most notable years, as it were. So I'm saying that sometimes they need to, to trouble. Why must they trouble? It is part and parcel of the program. You cannot separate the trouble from the saving. Because they're saving you from trouble in any case. Let's say amen. All right, from our manuals. We see that uh, uh, the final appearance of our Lord Jesus is preceded by tribulation. The two seasons are inseparable and consecutive. In fact, we have many, many, many so of such mini seasons like that. You have tribulation and then this, you see. Tribulation and you see. Tribulation and you see. One wisdom Papa Egan taught us that anytime time you are under pressure, put pressure on the word. Put pressure on the word. Not necessarily because of, and I'm paraphrasing now, because of, or you want, you want the season to pass, but because that pressure is an indication that there is a door in front of you. More often than not, there's a door in front of you. And the reason for the trouble or the temptation attached to the trouble is so that you focus on every, everything else but the door. But the wisdom of someone who has been schooled, who has, who has known how to profit in seasons of tribulation, is that he will go, be bogged down and looks, looks for the door. There's a door somewhere. There's a door somewhere. And it begins to look through the door. A door of entrance. A door of understanding. A door. For some of us, one of the reasons why some things have sat is because they shook us in those pieces when those words came. And the reason why some things did not sit is because in the season when they were shaking us so that those things can sit, we jumped out of the boat. But we stopped jumping out. Because you can actually negotiate your way after tribulation. That's why it's not good to have too much knowledge and not enough persuasion. What do I mean by that? If you have knowledge about something and you're not persuaded, you will see the way out. The kingdom of death was something that was a possibility. But it took somebody not being persuaded enough on, on, of the lordship of our God to search and search and discover it and push his way out and begin to exploit. I'm speaking about the devil. So you have knowledge. If your knowledge is not backed up with conviction, and I can tell you, one of the things that tribulation does that if, if, if you're not, if, what you should do, it should, it should rivet conviction in your heart. Or another way to do it is to test the, the, the strength of your faith. Faith that is not tried is not reliable. And faith that's not reliable will not carry glory. So they will test it. You say you love me. You have sang it. You have said it. You have written it. You have, you have told people, I will now prove it. To prove what's in their heart. Do they actually love me? Because God is not a man. God is not a man. But he identified with things of men so that men can come and identify with his own things. Now, the seasons of tribulation are, things, are seasons that, that will, that will that of proving your love. It's easy to say, I love you, I love you. It's even marriage. This is I love you, I love you, when nothing has happened. You truly know you love your spouse when you have gone through things. You know, the beginning, I love you, I love you, they tell you, it's not real. I'm sorry. We just say it because you like to hear it, to be very sincere. And we self, we like to say it because it makes us feel cool. I love you. Oh, really? Yes. Huh. It takes years to prove that statement. Number one, because you cannot love something you don't know. No, love is predicated on knowledge. That's why God loves us and his love is reliable because he knows, <laughs> he knows you better than you know yourself. And he has chosen to love you. You just saw that girl. You like her complexion. And somebody told you and you like the way she talks. And somebody told you and then she, you just, she, she's friendly. And then just two or three months later, you have loved her. I'm not saying it's fake, oh, don't get me wrong. But I'm saying we will test it. Not me, oh, She. Let me explain this way. So there's a story I read about a girl who was picked up from off the street, terrible, under a bridge, picked up by somebody and taken to his house, his house wanted to rehabilitate her, took her to his house. Understand this story, it will help you. You cannot love God until he has, you cannot really love him until he has shown himself to you. 
Because at some point, when he begins to show himself, that's where some people get offended. And it takes tribulations sometimes to show himself to you. When he wanted to separate Egypt from, I'll tell you my story, don't worry. But I know all the antennas are up. What's that story, Pastor? I will finish it. He took tribulation, when the Bible, uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, when he told them, he set them, and put, he, 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 he subjected them to hunger to prove what is in their heart. In fact, in some places, the Lord actually opened them up to some false prophets, so to speak. He said, if a prophet comes to your midst, in the book of Jeremiah, I think Deuteronomy chapter 13, and prophesies a thing, and it comes to pass. Let's read it, let's read it. I will tell you my story, don't worry. Deuteronomy 13. God is not man. That's why we need to be troubled out of our humanity. Back from one, thank you. If there arise a prophet, if there arise among you a prophet, they call him a prophet. Are you with me, oh? Are you reading? If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder does what? Comes to pass. This should help somebody. Whereof he speak unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Verse 3. Thou shalt not hearken to the words of the prophet or that dreamer. For the Lord God proveth you to know whether you love your God with all your heart or all your soul. Let's say amen. Verse 5. Ye shall walk in the fear of the Lord after the Lord and his fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice after the fulfillment of so-called prophecy. I think it's verse 5. I'm going to let's stop at 5. And the prophet of dream of dream shall be done what? Put to death. We'll stop there. God is not man. And God has the exclusive right to subject us to things to prove our love for him. Why? Because there's somebody whispering that we don't love him. Skin for skin. Does it serve you for not? It must be proved. It has to, you know, you sit on the throne, sit on the throne, sit on the throne. The person that will sit on the throne is absolutely in love with the Father. Absolutely. It takes revelation to understand what that statement, that word absolute. Human beings don't know anything about absolute because there's no absolute here. Absolute is a thing in the spirit. For example, this enemy has absolute hatred for God. Absolute. And you. It takes revelation and understanding to know how absolute his hatred is. So that even when he does you good, it is hatred that is doing it. The end of, if you trace it, quote and unquote, good. Quote and unquote, good. He trace it, it's actually evil he's doing you. It takes understanding and revelation for you to agree with that statement. When you agree with that statement, you will hate this world. And all its profit. When you don't hate this world and all its profits, it's because somewhere you are thinking the devil loves you. That's put it very simply. Because the devil is the author of this world. And anything he puts in this world is your enemy. Anything he puts in this world is your enemy. And if you don't treat it that way, you are liable not to, to be offended in the days of tribulation. So they have to prove it. It is part and parcel of the program of salvation. It cannot be separated. So back to my story. Yes, sorry. So this lady was taken off the street taken into the house of this man, and he did everything to take care of her. He did everything. He didn't molest her. He didn't, he wasn't treating her badly, not taking advantage of her or violating her in any form. He just had some kind of compassion. But there was something in this girl that did not rest. Now, many of us are not street people. You are not street, you are not a street person. You know, a street person is a different kind of mentality. If you are homegrown, you are different. You don't think like a street person. If you grew up in a place like uh, Jegule or a place like that, there's a way you think. If you grew up in VI, there's a way you think. If you grew up in up country, if you grew up in Ikorodu, I grew up in Ikorodu, there's a, if you grew up on the streets, there's a way your mind is wired. There's a way your mind, it is it's wired in such a way that even when good is being done to you, you are suspicious. You understand what I'm talking about now? You know that's Yoruba man's infirmity. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you agree. That's Yoruba man's I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I can say it because Yoruba, Yoruba, that's Yoruba man's natural infirmity. You suspect everybody and their mother. Why should you why to why why, why to fake me? Eh? It's a kind of it. So the man did everything. Everything. 
everything. In the end, sad ending, she's the one that arranged robbers to come and raid the house and kill the guy. Did the man show love? Right? Did she receive it? She needed, she needed an alteration of her heart to receive that man's love, sincerely. It's a story, it's not a, just a story. So oh, who did it happen to? Where is the person living? Well, no, no, it's a story. I read it, I didn't write it. But you can learn much lesson from it. You know, when they tell you God has given you something, you forget that Satan has re- re- removed your capacity to receive it. That's what makes people think they have eternal life. You risk Christian, God has given us eternal life. I tell life is in the sun. And you think you have it. You, Satan removed your recipient power. He removed it. God will pour it from now to tomorrow. If they don't wire you to receive it, you can never receive it. And his sister is okay with it. Saint is so one reason why they must trouble you is because that edifice in you that is so confident in that doesn't want God, it's so confident in his, in his, in his ability. It is great incapacity, incapacity to receive the love of God. Is receiving. So the work of God's work of salvation is continuing in that he's preparing you to receive. He's preparing you to receive. He has given it. He won't give it again. But it is hanging. It's hanging. Why? Because people do not have the re- receptacles, the receptors to, to, to reach antenna to pick it in no day, a, a, a mouth to eat it in no day. They have taken everything away. So salvation is a restoration of your capacity to receive from God. And your mouth was not, it's just like you have another mouth that is your taste but trained to receive something else. So they have to, they have to retrain it. Why did I tell that story? I told that story to say that your love, say, I love, I love, I love. In the beginning, it's just appreciation. Maybe the girl appreciated him for taking her off the street. But that appreciation could not last the winter. After a while, she became suspicious. The things in her kicked in and activated something that rejected the love to the extent that she killed the man. Is that not what humanity did to Jesus? That's our story. All of our story. But thank God that it was wisdom of God that in his dying, there will be a program, a kickstarting of a program in us to now make us able to receive that which he was talking about with his mouth when he was walking upon the face of the earth. Do we understand? So the story is you, it's me, it's not anybody. Don't think about it, think about yourself. And pray for capacity to receive. Say prayer you pray, especially in seasons like this, God is downloading things. Sometimes you feel full. It's because receptors have been taken away for you to receive from receiving those things. Why do you think they tell us worthy is a lamb that was slain to receive? Somebody says slain to receive. You are not saying it. Say slain to receive. It is, there's no comma there. Oh. I know all of us read it with comma. Worthy is a lamb that was slain. Comma. To receive. Slain to receive is one statement. The reason why he was slain is so that he can receive. There's no receiving without slain. And slain is just another way of saying what? Tribulation. Let's say amen. So you can see why someone like Paul, who was very, very spiritually smart, intelligent spiritually, would glory in tribulation. Not because of the trouble he's seeing, but because he's seeing what is, what, what is going to work out in him. He said, my light affliction, which but for a moment, worketh out. Somebody say, work out. Say it again, works out. What's that working out? He's working out receptacles. Power to receive. May we have power to receive. May God not pour something and then we have no interest. You see, to have no interest in what God is bringing is death. Is death. That's actually what death is. In capability to respond to God. And God is not somebody that just does things because he is bored. Everything he does with his, is with intention. I am come that ye may have life. And have it what? I am come that ye may have what? So we know why he came. For no other reason. So every transaction, this minutest, most infinitesimal commandment he gives you, it has an intention of passing life to you in it. And your incapacity, your incapacity to receive or do it is a product of another raising or another building that needs to be shaken out. I'm saying all this to say that tribulation is part and parcel of the program of salvation. Let's say amen. amen. Is that clear? All right. Let's read our manuals now. 
The two seasons are inseparable and consecutive. It is therefore, it therefore makes sense that a, tri- that a generation unable to endure tribulation will not be made ready for his appearance, which is what I just explained. It is those that endure to the end that will be saved. Let's say amen. What are we enduring? We are enduring the, our refabrication. The refabrication of our souls. Sometimes it's like doing surgery without anesthesia. Somebody I know one rents recently to have his tooth extracted. I said they put the thing there and then he said, ah. he said, what did they put? He said at one point, it's as if all the hosts of hell were hammering his brain. Bow, 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 bow. He said, yeah, boy. He said, I said don't, don't you know what you are doing? He said, they, they brought hammer. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's like that. They bring hammer and you have seen the hammer and you close your mouth. And let the decay remain. Mm-hmm. Come here. Mm-hmm. Come here. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I'll go and put. I'll put. I'll put. Uh, I'll put salt water. I'll go. I cannot endure this. They are. They are enjoying. Like I just said you are enjoying your refabrication. They are because you are. Like I said your soul has been wired. Your soul has been arranged to. It's like your satellite. You know when you buy Go TV, they say you must turn it one place to be able to receive signal. B. If you also use Go TV, you turn it. It has been turned another way. Now that turning, they say that turning, when you, if you are turning something that has been caked in cement, you first of all break the cement. And imagine the cement is living, it will cry. Then you turn the thing. Imagine the boat is rusted. When Satan configured us, he configured us not to turn. He's, he, he's still trying to make sure we don't turn. So he's, he's, he's you know, as he, when we're small, his game is to pray, turn your head. I don't know if you do this. Turn your head. I hold the person's head. I say, turn. Uh, that Satan is holding our head. It must not turn. It must not turn. So it is not without pressure. Just like it's not without pressure. And as they are turning you, because there will be a pain here, a pain there. But the fact that you are going to receive, be able to receive from the Lord, should be enough motivating factor for you to be go, go to go through anything. I say anything. Does that make God a hard taskmaster? Not at all. There are so many scriptures that speak to God's faithfulness in the seasons of temptation. He will not be, will not be tempted above that which you are able. With this way of, with the temptation, he will provide a way of escape. So we are able to bear it. Somebody say, bear it. Say, bear it. Shout, bear it. Not escape it. Even they put escape. The escape is that you bore it. Like we said before, the easiest way to tribulation is to go through it. The fastest way to tribulation, to finish tribulation, is to go through it. Just go through it. Don't buy, don't stop. Don't sit down and be crying. No, wait. You, because you have to be there. Where you sat down? It's where it stopped. You start up, you continue moving. So just go through it. Go through it and come out the other end as speedily as you can. Let's say amen. amen. All right. Number three, the church needs to be prepared for it. It's not in our best interest as end time saints to be unaware of times and seasons. We saw that about, uh, concerning the Thessalonian brethren. That because of what they went through, Paul had to tell them, tell them said... Look, concerning times and seasons, I don't need to write to you. People will know. What made them know? They had been through enough to raise their antennas in the spirit. They were very much aware of times and seasons. So we ought not to be bogged down by an overwhelming desire for relevance on this side of eternity as against status in the world to come. Let's say amen. Take it. When we say we are troubled or or tribulated, I borrow that English. It's more often than not more often than not, around things that attack our status, our reputation, our relevance here. Check it. Very, you know, there's no tribulation that says, oh God, and they're, they're, they, they, actually it's world to come, they're attacking you. Know? But they, they, it's, it's never, it's never your, it takes spiritual growth for you to, to realize actually that what actually they are trying to gun for is your status in the world to come. What's preparing for is status in the world to come. But here, what they will use are the status here. Status, something about it here. Something about here. It's just always about here. And the, the infirmity or, or the wickedness of Satan is, is to make us so mighty in the present that we are absent in the future. So mighty as in you have spread out here. They know you here everywhere. Even Paul, even Solomon wrote it, said, you want to be a billionaire. So forget about those things. Because so. you know that it, whether the child you live, some people have been billionaires, they've built a mighty legacy, mighty a conglomerate, and then they have one child that just came and wiped out the father's name completely. Completely. You know those earls and dukes and lords in the in, 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 in UK? They have dynasties, large dynasties, large um, castles, land and everything, and they would have one child who's a drug addict. 
The guy will sell everything. Sell everything, sell, the, sell everything. And then he the, the, the said, this is, uh, is, this the, is this the sixth duke of Windsor? This is the, the son of the fifth duke? This is sixth duke? Duke, we're waiting because I'm duke, God, no, duke. The guy is a drug addict. Sir? Junk. Junkie, yes. Drug addict. But he has the name. Now, the father may have done all. He may have, he have mortgaged his soul to make sure he's the fifth duke of Windsor. And everybody calls, Lord, my your grace, your grace, your grace, your grace. And then the sixth duke. In fact, now, now, yeah, because he's talking, yeah, duke, duke. Now, beg him, forget that duke. You see, forget that duke thing. Give, do you have anything there I can use? All ruined. Satan uses, makes people mortgage their relevance there with things here. It's one mind you have around. You see, one mind that God is helping me develop in recent times is you check these things. Let me, let me move say it because it might help somebody. You know, there are many, 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 many decisions and reputations of our lives that are tied to money. Even some of our righteousness are tied to money. It is just money. That statement has been coming to me all, maybe last, for the last two months. I said, it is just money. It's only money. It's only money. There's a way money has been used to measure righteousness or righteousness that is neither. There's a way, there's a way, because money is one of the ways, well, on the signs of relevance here. You have a plenty, you'll be very relevant. You can drive one way, you know, <laughs> what else? You can do many things. You have the uncle to do it. In fact, they won't invite you to drive the one way as because of the uncle you have. If you are wise, some of us say, some, some, someone was telling me recently, uh, this just, it's good to use things like that. He, and he's, when he goes to the street at night, one thing, he has always been settling all those gate men. So they know and they'll shout, ah, Baba Soso, Baba Soso, they'll be shouting when he's driving because he settles them. Yeah, so I'm saying, your money can give you a kind of, you know, leverage here. And sometimes, if you're not careful, you begin to think that it's actually leverage. It's not leverage, it's a prop. It's not, it's your soul, it's not where, if your soul wears it, it's a lie. Because it's not you, it's not you. It's not, not nothing to do with you. So there's a separation, those kind of separations, it, I don't have a chance to pay it, but there's those kind of separations are things that tribulation must put you through, we will separate you from. There's a way all of us somewhere secretly, secretly, secretly are standing on our bank balance. Secretly. You are there, one toe is on your bank balance. You know, it's just there. It's a surish foundation. You don't say sure because of your spiritual sense, but it's a, it's a, it's a somewhat foundation. It's just there, you know. That thing is a, is a, is a leaking pipe. It's a leaking pipe. It's tribulation that makes you, it's, it's tribulation that can separate you from that thing I'm telling you. I am telling you. So the church needs to prepare for it. I was saying all this to say, there are so many things that make us relevant here. And if we are not careful, uh, if we're not careful about mortgaging, mortgaging our relevance as well. Daddy that said that, he said, life here, God told him, your life here is a seed. If you, see it from, if you don't see your life here as a harvest, this is not the best of you. The best of you cannot find expression in this world. The best of you can never, this world is not worthy of you. Because this world cannot understand you. I can understand you, you are useless to it somewhere. So it will make you feel irrelevant. Thank God this world makes you feel irrelevant. Your relevance is somewhere else. Somewhere that matters. But it, because it does not yet appear what you shall be like, you can fall into diverse kinds of temptations and tribulations. But you need to have need of patience. You have need of patience. Let patience run its course. When it runs its course and it fortifies you, then as the Lord wills, you can see manifestations of your true face once in a while. Just pop out. If the Lord so wills. And if not, until his ways, you arrive in glory. As long as you arrive in glory, then it is worthwhile. Let's say amen. We ought, we ought not to be bogged down by an overwhelming desire for relevance on this side of eternity as against our status in the world to come. The surfeiting of this present life, if not punctuated by tribulation, will tie every soul to this present decaying world. You know, a thought that just occurred to me recently in the course of the week. One of the reasons why the world keeps changing form is because, you know, it looks new. It's not new. It's a lie. So, the world must keep changing form because it's decaying. So, it's decaying, but it will just, you know, a house that is being dilapidated. So, today you screw it. Tomorrow you paint it. You sell it. Then it's but then another crack. You screw it. You paint it. Then the foundation is broke. You screw it. You paint it. One day, one day, plus the screed, 
and all the layers of paint, 66 layers of paint you have put, that the paint is almost like a wall. That's what the world is doing. That's the world. So, new age, new fad, is decaying, but it's doing you abracadabra. So, oh, new, go new, irony. It's a lie. There's nothing new here. So, Satan will not tie you to things that are decaying. Ah, oh, I got the new iPhone. It is older, it is deader than the old iPhone. Benz of 1980. That Benz of 1980. Baba Bang Basita, that's what they call it. Baba Bang Basita. You jam it, just go to the panel beater. That's what they call them, panel beater. They don't feel. One feel hammer, Basita, and bam, straighten it. It's going. Do, I saw an accident between a 2003 Corolla and a 1988 Benz many years ago. Jesus is Lord. I'm just trying to say, this world itself is decaying. But you will feel better. If I give you 1988 Benz now, you will, you will take grace of God for you to tell me thank you. <laughs> but I give you a 2021 Nissan Rogue with, with driver assist. You know, it's driver assist. Driver assist is when you're driving, if you want to jam something, this, this, the car will take you. Say, don't, don't jam, don't jam. Say, hey, car. If you are reversing and you're about to hit something, you're about to hit something, the car will break by itself. God, don't knock. Farabale, makbare, makbare, farabale. And then you're like, oh my God, I'm current. You're not current. You are deader than the person that was driving manual. Because when, God forbid, an accident come, you will now see that that Benz is a life preserver. This one is a death trap. And that is the whole world for you. Everything is decaying. So, of course, everything is decaying. The, the, a, 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 God forgive me. A, a message was now preached to us about the acquisition of this decaying life. And they tell you to be trendy. Be in vogue. I hate that statement so much these days. Uh, you should be spiritually in vogue. You should be spiritually trending. Now, one of the trends now is being prepared for trouble. A Christianity that's not prepared for trouble is a Christianity that will not survive the winter. It will not survive the winter. Our, we, should, we should want to be trendy in the spirit, not trendy. You say, I want to, what, is the, what is the latest garb in the spirit? What are they putting on? What is the linen? Where's the linen sewn to in the spirit now? That's what I want to be wearing. No, no, no. It's not chiffon now. It's um, Damascus or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying my own. That's the one that's raining. What is raining? Have you ever thought, what is raining in the spirit? When we were young, we used to ask, I'm about my friend, someone. He's up on the street, they were asking, Kai. Say, so what, what, what's that in Stafilo? What's the spirit? What is the, what is the spirit saying now? That's what, so what is the spirit? What's the emphasis of the spirit now? That's a kingdom mentality. Yeah, kingdom mentality. And then you've gone on. Well, we didn't know what we were saying then. But I shall, that sense of being spiritually trendy must be there. You should have a sense of you, all you want to be is outwardly trendy and spiritually a cake. Because he knows the things we clothe ourselves with are things that will not survive. They are, they are all decaying. They are decaying. Don't let me tell you they are all decaying. Know it and no peace. They are all decaying. My father used a radio that did not die. Since then, I know how many radios me have used. If I will not use radio again. The radio did not die. He got it before he married my mother. I left it in our house. It refused radiogram. It refused to die. It refused to die. It did not die. There's nothing they make now like that. But about three, four years, you must change it. And then you feel bad that you're not be able to change it. Then I come and give you a 1988 radio. You think I've done you bad. Have you seen how, how they have twisted our thinking? <laughs> I said all this to say something. You see, that gospel of that hyped, and I'm saying this for one of my parents, that, that hyped faith towards God above things like repentance or change, which must go time to, hand in hand, ruined a lot of strength in the, in the church. So people were just, all they thought about is, ah, oh, yes, God has done it, God has done it, he has done it, and all I have to do is just rise and claim it, rise and claim it, rise and and you are not paying attention to your transformation. That's why I said repentance, because repentance is not a word for transformation, conversion, which must be an ongoing process in the life of a believer. And one thing that will be responsible for your constant change is godly sorrow. Godly sorrow comes in seasons of tribulation. You just sober. And then the Lord begins to instruct you. And then changes happen. And then you are far better off because of the, 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 the transformation that has occurred in such a soul at that time. Let's say amen. You should look to be more spiritually trendy than anything. Is there any trend that you should worry about? What is, the, what is TikTok saying in the spirit? What is the present TikTok short in the spirit? 
I'm not saying there is, but just think like way. I don't know that God, I don't know that Jesus has TikTok. But I'm saying, you know, you know, just ah, this, this is this trendy, this trendy. This what is what is the Instagram post in the spirit? Not of what a church is saying. What is IG in the spirit? What's the heriting God in the spirit right now? What is the present? What's the present trend? That's where we should live. To live outside of that is to be is to, is to pay allegiance to a decaying world. This world is decaying. Is dying. Forget the new colors. It's dying colorfully. But it's dying. It's dying. We must not die with it. Now you not dying with it. Sometimes you will eat locusts and drink wild honey and be dressed in animal skin. But you are better. You are far better. Give it, give it, to, give it time. You will see. The people that are dressed in white robes will come to you in your locust and wild honey and come and you will be baptizing them. You didn't get me. But you will get me. Let's say amen. All right, for Emmanuel's. The suffering of this present life, if not punctuated by tribulation, will tie every soul to this present decaying world. Hence, the salvation program has in it a curriculum of separation from, as it were, from the present, as it were, for every saint. They must separate you from your allegiance to this present. They must. You must see your life as more than just here. You must. You must. Don't live as if you will never die. When I say that, you will never, or this is the, you, this is the shortest time you will ever exist. Even if you live for 200 years. It's the shortest time you will, this is the shortest period. There will be a punctuation and you will cross to another one. And that other one is age, is forever. Why would I mortgage 200 years for 2 million? Does that sound like good business sense? You, you left 2 million naira and took 200,000 naira. Let me use naira because I know, okay, no, not naira. Let's use dollar. You use, you use two, you left 2 million dollar and you went to pursue 200,000 naira dollars. Everybody will say there's something wrong with you. But when it comes to spiritual things, we have been taught to pursue 50, 60 years and make a name for 50, 60 years or 70 or 80 years at the expense of two, 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 agelessness. May the Lord rewire us. We need spiritual auto electrician to rewire our soul. We need it. They need to put plug, scanner, check those deformities, and one by one, knock off those errors. Knock them off one by one. So that we will not, we will not, we will, we will not be shortchanged by the enemy. Let's say amen. Thus, there is a need for every saint to be made aware and adequately prepared for the seasons of separation that will definitely come. There is no way you will not. It's not possible. Unless the Lord does not love you. You may not even have the language of faith of the Son, everlasting life, but if you sincerely love the Lord, if you sincerely love, I'm talking about some, there may some people who never met as well, our daddy, Ricardo Yoko, physically. I probably never heard a message that he preached, but I can tell you there is a program. If you have this program, what daddy is talking about is not, it's not daddy that uttered it, it is what has been in the scriptures for ages. And Lord will launch many people into it, probably with a different vocabulary. But there is a program in God to separate you from this life in your soul. If you are journey, you are growing, when you say growing up spiritually, you will get to that point where the Lord will cause you to mortgage, to choose, 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 choose. And as you make choices for life, choices for life, you live and live until you live and die no more. Let's say amen. All right. F the final point. The church needs to have the right disposition towards tribulation. That has been said in, uh, many, in, in many forms uh, in the course of today's study and in other ones, in other uh, lessons. But let's look at, let's read our manuals. It says, um, okay, First John 3, 13, it says, marvel not that the world hates you. You know? It's good to know this. It's good to say this. Now, I'm not saying you go about not minding what people think about you. No. 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 That is, that's an extreme. That is also darkness. I don't send anybody. I do what I like. No. That's also devilish. But don't always be looking around for approval of this world. No, some of us are approval, are they approval that we are Christian. We like it when unbelievers say, ah, he's a Christian. What does the unbeliever know about being a Christian? Say, ah, pastor, nee, pastor, nee. and then all of a sudden, you. Now, it's good to be known. I, on my own street, for example, I don't know how everybody calls me, but I don't know. I don't know why. I don't think I've ever done, okay, we did one crusade. But that was many years ago. But they would just say, because you are, he said, but ah, sister, you are born again. Yes, yes, I know, they would. They would. But... Much, but that should not, that should be not the only, more than that, spirit should know that you are, you are, you are, you are somebody. 
more than that. Of course, it takes, it takes shaking out of the, compon the components of the enemy from a soul to make spirits know that, ah, this guy is, has actually uh, uh, brought new. Peter, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. They knew him because of the level of life that he was carrying. Let's say amen. So the church needs to be prepared for it. I say the, old, the world will not, will not love us. And we must not seek for the world to love us. That's what I was trying to say. We, will not, we must not be too cons overtly concerned about the approval of the world. No, we shouldn't be. Overtly concerned. Now, you should live with a conscience void of offense before God and man. Uh, Peter even said it. He said, when you do wrong, suffer for doing, if you suffer for doing wrong, that's okay. He said, but you should rejoice when you suffer for not doing wrong. When you not suffer for end, then those that, those, those that, uh, 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 that even put you through such suffering will be, will, will be ashamed sometimes. Sometimes they're lying like they did for Jesus. They tell lies. They just malign the person and give him a bad name. But you know. They know in their heart that you've not done anything wrong. He said, they, Peter said, there's nothing wrong with that kind of suffering. Thank you. First Peter 3, 7. For it is better if the will of God be so that he suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Let's look at, is it 18? Is it 18 or 16? Let's see 18. 18. Okay, let's do 16. Yes, thank you. Ah, 16. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. So the world will hate you and the world will tell lies about you. Some of you have been in offices where somebody is trying to, to, to use, give you a bad name so that they can climb upon you. Rest. Maintain a good conversation. When I say good conversation, are you doing your work well? To the best of your ability, not the one that you are lazy and they are saying they are persecuting you. They are not persecuting you. They are punishing you for what you did wrong. But if you are doing your work and then there's, a, there's somebody in your office that is constantly maligning you, we have them. We have them. This happens. It happens like that. I've worked so I know those kind of things happen. But it's always speaking, trying to pull you down. Maintain your conversation. You are archiving things. You use the words of our daddy, Pastor Ty. You are archiving a record of faithfulness in the spirit. Don't malign the person back. Don't try and pull the person. You will be tempted to pull the person down. I can tell you, the person will do something. That person that's speaking in love, you will do something that he, his, case will fall in your, his case will fall in your lap. And you'll be like, hey, hey, or God has caught you. God has caught you. The Pharaoh that does not know Egypt, I am the Moses. Your first son will die today. Your first son will die today. No, that's not righteous conversation. Cover the person. That's tribulation for you. You, will, you can do it with crying. Go and meet your pastor. Be pastor. Lake is your pastor. After you do it, go to him. Go and say, Pastor. He will console you. He will help you. And you go on. I can tell you, you are, you are doing something to your heart. Eventually, they may now. This is, now there's a way you can do it in hope. That one day, one day, they will so deal with the person. And while I'll be rubbing the person's head, I'll tell him, Oh, well, I'm a saint. Me, spirit field. On my trajectory towards glory, you are tribulating me. <laughs> you take his last. <laughs> uh, you don't. You don't know who I am. No. Be that just because of week. When your enemy is suffering, don't rejoice too much. Oh, they will change it too. It's in the Bible. Say, don't rejoice over the suffering of your enemy, lest I forget about him and deal with you. I paraphrase TJ version. But it's there in the Bible. It's there. Don't rejoice when your enemy falls. Don't rejoice. Don't. Oh, because actually, he was being used. He was actually being used. He was racist, he was being used. It's the enemy that you have only one enemy, really. But I'm saying, you have such season. Maybe somebody's going through that season. Do your work well. Do it above board. Make sure your work is beyond reproach. Now, if they are now, some people will take the work you did eh, and change your name. They will do it and submit it and say it's their own. Calm down. Did you do the work? Calm down. Don't worry. Don't worry. Ha, ah, pastor, will they promote me? They won't promote me. Promotion does not come from anywhere. It comes from up. Answer to, and I can say this without blinking. I, I won't, I'm, I'm not going to balance this. There's no balance to it. Promotion does not come from anywhere, from, from above. God employed you. He employed you. He chose to use that job to, as a grace level for you. He can choose not to use it. Ah, Pastor, what if they sack me? That, don't be attached to anything here. You see, one thing I'm trusting God for my soul, I keep telling people, say, don't let this devil use anything here to threaten you. Here. Yeah. Check it. Is it rooted here? Don't let him use to threaten you. He does that a lot. He uses this place to threaten you. He has never threatened you about your, your place on the throne. Never. Because he doesn't even know it. He has never threatened you about the meekness level you come. Ah, 
If you do this, your meekness will suffer. Your meekness will suffer. He's never. He's always, ah, they are cheating you. Ah, they are taking advantage of you. Ah, ah, one, one, they will call you swag bear. Ah, they will, they will, they will, they will, ah, and it's all tied to here. May the Lord give us better eyes. In the name of Jesus. All right, we are done. The, the enemy has, gone, has done a whole lot to erode the consciousness of suffering, trials, and tribulation amidst the church. So this has led to a generation of believers that see any inconvenience at all as an attack from the enemy. Ah! They are doing me. Any inconvenience, what at all? Ah! And then I ask myself, how do, you, how do you walk in love? Because walking in love is not done conveniently. Best love work is done in... Most inconvenience. Like I always like to joke. I say you, you cannot score too many points loving someone like Pastor Michael Kukui. You can't score points. They won't score you high. Because he's just a lovable being. You see me? If you love me, know me and you love me. Ah, you have done well. Ah, you have done well. So I'm saying inconvenience is what makes your love potent. It's easy to love that person that always smiles. I just like, you see that one that when you smile, you frown. You see that one? That one, God, God, that is your love project. Sometimes you have love projects. Sometimes I remember, I, I've not had one recently. Maybe I'll soon have one. I tell my wife, ah, my wife, well, I have a love project too. This person, I'm seeing that we have issue. So this is a love project. That means this thing between us must die. It's a love project. And you check about the love project. You use your money. You use your time. You use your air time. You use every of your resources to bridge that gap. That's, that's wisdom. And it will not be done in your convenience. God can tell you you're trouble. Go, go to Yanoba. You are living in Shomulu. Go to Yanoba. Go and greet the person. It's far. It's far. You see, you see, inconvenience. You see, that, that spirit, that message of convenience is devil. It's devil. After a while, everything will be convenient. I'm just walking towards convenience. There's no convenience on this side. Your convenience is when you enter rest. Let's say Amen. I'm not saying that that means you're going to suffer, 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 have no break. No. There's respite. You see the words of daddy? Sometimes they'll be cushioning. God is just that he will cushion you. I'm cushioning daddy, you go, you go, you go, and it's true. They will cushion you for a season or two or three or four or five or ten, but that's not the end. You will enter again. As long as you're not be purified, you will go back into the fire. So they bring you out, they put some more ice water, and they put you back. You must done. Tell your neighbor, you must done. Ah, you must don't know. All right. Where are we? Okay. This has led to a generation of believers that see any inconvenience at all as an attack of the enemy or a break, not a, or a bear, a break in spiritual transmission. Ah, I've cut off. God has left me. Ah, I'm going, going through this. God has left me. Oh, no, God has left me. Ah, oh, I've been abandoned. It was Pastor Tyler that told us we must learn to trust God when we can't trace him. That was the secret of Job. You know, God, was not, God did not say pim to Job throughout all those discussions with his miserable comfort, comforters. God did not say a word. But he's in the midst of that. He said, though he slay me, I will trust him. Now, he was trusting God without tracing him. Now, that is somebody who had recognized something in the spirit, which we also need to recognize. So, the fact that you are going through something, something does not mean, number one, that the devil has attacked you. It could be a, I mean, that's, it could be the devil, God, you align the devil to do things, but that's not the, that's not the core of it. Neither is it that God has abandoned you. Ah, because that's what something tells, also tells you. I have sinned. Ah, you now remind you of something you did 15 years ago. Ah, and you not, should not be very fresh. Say, yeah, this is why this is happening to me right now. Ah, who has that happened to? It has happened to everybody I know. You don't have to raise your hand. I raise your hand for you. He has told you that, ah, the reason why you are going to this now is that thing you did five years ago. Your sin has found you out. So suffer away. Suffer away. Pay for it. You will pay for it. You will pay. You will pay. You will pay. And you, oh, God. Why are you forsaking me? And there is a door. Just, just turn your legs. a door. Oh, God. Oh, no. No. No hope, no hope. And the key is there. No hope, no hope, no hope, no hope, no hope. You people are not watching me regret progress. Uh, I would have sanctioned all of you because I know all of you have watched Avengers. Go and watch Pilgrim's Progress. No hope. And the door is there. Key is there. No hope, no hope. It's Satan. That's Satan. So this is a sneak attack against salvation in that the untrained soul will not 
no to glory in tribulation or count it an honor to suffer for his sake. Let's say amen. amen. Small color in your life. Small. I say small because the Bible says it's small. To you it's big, but the Bible says it's small. Small. Just something that does not seem to be going in the order of all humanity. You expect after this, this must happen. This, this, and your own is not like that. It's not a time for us to be to oh, know what has happened. Now don't get me wrong. We have, been, we have talked about, we talked about faith. Engage faith. If it's the devil that needs to be rebuked, rebuke the devil. You do it three times and it doesn't go. Ask the Lord and receive a word from the Lord. The Lord will, and that word is actually your door for that season. You know that my grace is sufficient for you. Came on the backs of somebody who went through an, a great ordeal. Say, that same word is my grace is sufficient for thee. That came through somebody going through something. And beg God to remember. God, and that, that's what came out of it. To tell us that every tribulation should birth a word. It should birth a word. That it should birth a word of comfort, not just for you, but for somebody else that your life is going to console. Because when you speak that now, when you read, when you read my grace is sufficient for you, it blesses you. Because somebody used his life to experiment it, quote and unquote. Let's say amen. Okay, the untrained soul does not recognize uh, the glory to know to glory in tribulation or count as an honor to suffer for God's uh, for. Uh, the Lord's sake. Why it is true that not every trouble is a dealing of the spirit. We are uh, we studied faith, so we know that not every trouble, because Satan is a bully. Satan is a bully. He will take advantage of your seasons of of going through the wilderness and send Amalekites to come and be killing children. And, and it was not God that sent those Amalekites. That's why God judged them. But in the season, in the season of the wilderness, he sent things to trouble the Israelites. Because Satan is like that. And that's why we have the power in the name of Jesus. You stand your ground in the tribulation and you rebuke Satan. In the name of Jesus. He, doesn't, he, was, he has no right to encroach upon certain things. Let's say amen. amen. While it is true that not every trouble is a dealing in this, of the spirit, we must be alert not to allow the enemy to bully, bull, and we must be alert not to allow the enemy to bully us along our way to glory. It's also good to know that we will be subjected to trials, at times fiery, in order to purify our relationship with Jesus so that we can come to the fullness of salvation. Let's say amen. I spoke about this earlier. Your every faith will be tried. A faith that's, a faith that's not tried is not considered precious. If it's not considered precious, it will not be added to the house. It's precious stones that they add to the house. It will not be added to the house. It has to be tried. It has to be proved that it will not capitulate under pressure. You think tribulation is, is weight? God is more weight. To carry God is much more weight. So they will use those things to fortify your inside. To make sure that you are sturdy in the spirit. Let's say amen. Finally, tribulation is part of the salvation program. Let's say amen. amen. No saint ever finished his or her course without partaking of certain sufferings and inconveniences that made faith precious enough to withstand both the accusation of the enemy and the face of God. May we all endure to the end and be saved in Jesus' name, amen. Let's appreciate uh, Pastor TJ. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Amen. Were well, you blessed listening to this? This is so, 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 so encouraging. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Do we go through what we learned and just ask you to come and share with us what you learned now? Should we do that? Should we do that? I'm not yet. Yes, sir. Okay, that's good. So if you want us to do that, let me see your hand up so we'll... No, no, we want to vote to know which one we should do right now. Yeah, no, no, that's part of rounding up. You can round up. Anybody can round up. Praise God. Let me see your hand. If you want us to do, you know. Okay. So you don't want us to share. But th that tells me you didn't learn anything. If you did learn something, let's share with one another. Don't you think so? Amen. Amen. All right, let's begin. Who will do that? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. 
Let, let me get a volunteer. Let me get five volunteers. You know you learned something. So see, see, I want you to, you know, we have to edify one another. Praise God. We have to edify one another. And I also want to know how much you gave yourself to the lessons that we uh, have, uh, the teaching that we took through Sunday school. I want to know how much you gave yourself to it. Uh, we are just whiling away time. But we, want, we need to exalt one another. Probably your own lesson, your own story, your own experience, what you learn through this will encourage someone else. So I want, I want some volunteers. Five, I'll just allow five people to talk just for two minutes each. I'm, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying you should teach the Sunday school. Just... Let me see your hand. Volunteers, faithful men, faithful women. Are you raising your hand or they are raising it for you? All right, let me see another person. Now, I know, okay, thank you. I know, can we clap for them? They are wonderful people. You know, let me tell you something. You know when you read Hebrews 11, when you read Hebrews 11, we call them heroes of faith. Is you know what you call them? We call them heroes of faith. If they kept quiet, or what they, their experience in the journey of faith had been left out, will you be encouraged? We needed Moses to be a witness. We needed Abraham to be a witness. We needed Jacob to be a witness. We needed all of them to be a witness of God's faithfulness in their sojourning here on earth. And from there you can draw strength. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So these ones are also heroes of faith. So amen. Praise God. I don't want you to just clap. I want to see hands raised up. Don't clap. Don't clap. I'm not, I'm not saying you should clap for them and do woo. I want you to raise your hand. So I want five volunteers. Okay, one, two. Who else again? Who is that? Three, four, remaining one, five. All right. Let me see you come out. Bring the mic. Bring the mic. Here. Praise God. I want the five of them to come out. Just come out. This way. Amen. These are heroes of faith. You can join them if you want to. You can actually, the door is still open. Let me have the microphone. So, we are going to have one person. Okay, they have a microphone there. Just give them, uh, give the first person. Let's give, let's give him. Just share with us what you learned and how this lesson impacted you. Good morning, Daddy. Good morning, pastors. Good morning, church. So, I just want to share the experience that me and my brothers had this time last month. So it was tribulation, tribulation this season. And so after WTV set up on um, Sunday, oh, sorry, Saturday, in logistics, our usual practice, we go to Koshofe to drop the things that we use. And so this day, we were just delayed unnecessarily, kind of. So usually by 12, we get to our houses, 12 a.m., we get about, we get to our houses. But this time around, till like till 2, we're still out there, and we will get home. But because it was a season of tribulation, Satan played pranks, right? And so we got into trouble with the police. They were raiding, so they just picked us in the, in the front of our HOD's house. <laughs> like, they picked three of us, then we slept in the jail, in the cell. Um, <laughs> we slept in the cell Saturday night, that night. And three of us, myself, Victor, and um, Julius, 
you know, the first thing we just told our pastors, our senior brothers, we just started to drop messages that these people have carried us to. And we could have revolted somehow, but we just knew that it was, there was something there. And so, the first thing that came to our minds, what we Pastor Tayo first on do in this situation? Like, it was, it was, it was clear. It was very clear that the Lord was there. You know, we, in fact, one of us had the Bible. You know, they said, okay, you that you have the Bible, go. And we were like, we cannot leave, one of us cannot leave the two of us. We have to be together. We are brothers. We are coming from the same place. We have to go together. And so our brothers, that is bro, um, bro Michael and bro Tunde, they drove down to the police station, but they did not attend to them. And I think they had, we had informed people, Sha, like that, till the next morning. And we slept. It, we, what we just could say was that we were counted worthy. You know, it was... In the, in, the, in the cell, we're picking spirits, we're fellowshipping, and it was just, and to think that my name is Silas, I mean, <laughs> well, I love that. So, then, and somehow, somehow, the Lord gave us, at least three of us, we work in reputable firms in courts, but we did not see that thing. But like, if I bring out my ID card, all these police people, they will calm down. All this, if I just show them where I walk, they will be fine. But we just put all those things aside. And when they came, when Pastor Arab and Pastor Kalejai came to, release, um, to bail us in the morning, the way we prostrated, the way we were, it was, I was just like, I, I valued the relationships we had. I thank God that the, I knew it was tribulation. It was clear. And the Lord brought us out of that cell, more Hallelujah. spiritual people. Hallelujah. I love that testimony. You archived a testimony. You know, one, you were not offended. Secondly, you took it with joy. You did not revolt with the police. Uh, that, that, that's the heart. That's the heart. Thank God for you. Thank God for all the brethren. You want to say something? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, go on. It's all Amen. Right. Okay, we had a similar experience to his, so I just felt I should just witness to that. Amen. Uh, some years ago, um, one fateful evening, one of our sisters that stayed with us was getting married, so we got them an AC. So we said, okay, let's drop it for them in their house. Lo and behold, uh, we didn't know there was coffee around that area at night, so some policemen you know, picked us up, and they took us to the cell. And before we knew it, you know, of course they knew they wanted not just money, and we were careful not to be quick to, you know, want to negotiate at their terms. We didn't know that there was a curfew in this area around that time. We tried, we pleaded, it wasn't, you know, um, they were turning deaf ears, and then immediately I knew that this was a hour of tribulation. So I just had to connect with my spirit. I knew the Lord wanted to us to, you know, archive a testimony <laughs> thereby. Amen. And so uh, uh, I was just praying beneath my, my, my breath. They put the other two brothers in the cell. They said, okay, because I'm a pastor, they will put me on the bench. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that uh, tomorrow morning they're going to charge us. They're going to, you know, the threat and what have you. I just kept praying. Then at, some, at an hour, maybe around midnight, it now occurred to me that I had a privilege that I wouldn't have had but for that experience. And what was the privilege? To pray for the Nigerian police. And so, from that hour, and maybe the next two hours, I found myself, I knew I had indebtedness. I knew I was indebted in the place of praying for the country, praying for the Nigerian police. So, that, that experience, you know, in like a gate of hell, in that whole hellish environment, because there was mosquitoes, there was what have you, woman of stinking, you know. So I knew it was it was a window of opportunity for me to address an indebtedness of, of some prayers I should have prayed for the nation and for the Nigerian police. So I used that opportunity and I told others, okay, they were in the cell, but I think I was able to encourage them. So I, I did I prayed, I think from like maybe 12 to 2, 
And then around three, four, somebody now came. He said, okay, you're a pastor. Now what have you? Now at last, I think they released us. And they, they, released, us, they released us around 5.30, 6 a.m. in the morning. And it was the person's wedding the next day, the next morning. But God helped me, me primarily because of understanding to redeem that time. Because I knew it was a hour of tribulation. Hallelujah. We have a lot of Paul and Silas, you know. Thank God. Now, one of the things that, one of the thing that uh, these testimonies um, is doing is, is showing that the, the message, the, what we are being taught, what we are eating is actually having effect in us. Because really, if you've been to police, and I've gone several times to bail brethren, that place is a gate of hell. In fact, it's a gate of tribulation. It's a place, that's why you always hear me, I will say, please don't have anything to do with police. I don't want to get there. They can make you, you know, you understand what I'm saying? And uh, uh, But to, to be there and you... You're able to fetch out from your spirit a conversation that can, you know, overweigh whatever atmosphere that Satan is, you know, uh, has in that environment is victory. So these are victory testimonies. Amen. Let's hear the next person. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I, so in my case, I think... I think I, before this teaching started, so there was a, a little issue like, with my sister, my other sister. So she was not feeling very well, and I think she came, she was in church. Pastor, Pastor prayed for her one time, I mean, and then before, so in January, the issue she had, like kind of a mental issue, so it disturbed the entire family. So I, so at the point I was like, ah, God, I mean, I'm here in the world of righteousness, and I, I know that it's strong because see, judging how I was before and how I, and who I am now by God's grace, I've changed. So why can't God just touch my sister? Let her just change the way we have changed. So we kept, I kept praying about it and it got worse. So I was like, I don't know, I, I was confused because, of course, so after a while, I, had to, I, speak with, I spoke with Pastor Yola. He came you know, to, to help with, with the medication and everything. And I kept asking myself this question, why can't God just do something? So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not Job who lost his entire family at, in one go. I mean, um, Jesus Christ is there as our advocate. So I kept asking those questions, but somewhere in my heart, I knew that, well, I mean, God knows that we are going through this. He knows he cares about my sister more than I even care about her. So when this series started, I said, okay, perhaps, so perhaps what that whole situation was, maybe what devil was trying to do was to get him to be offended at at maybe ask the Lord that, why can't the Lord do something about this? Why, why is this happening to me? Why am I going through so much stress? Because it was actually stressful. You know, I go to work in the morning, I come back in the evening, I'm, I didn't want to come back home sometimes because coming back home to meet, the whole issue was very burdensome. But by God's grace, through this teaching, I've learned that it's part of, it's part of like it might be part of the tribulation. I'm not sure. I'm entirely sure. <laughs> but but I, I'd just like to read one scripture. Um, That's another Sunday school teacher. Yeah, um, so, so I've read this scripture before, but it didn't, it didn't really stick because... It now made a meaning. It now made a meaning. That's um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. And it says that, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And the way Pastor linked persecution to entering the kingdom, it means that if I want to enter the kingdom, then by all means, I should expect persecution and tribulation. And last week, I started reading the Fox's book of Matthias, and I was very shocked to see how, like, I was like, I asked my sister, I work in the same place. I'm like, why, why do they really, why do they hate Christians so much? Like, why, 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 why this wickedness towards Christians? So, He's the prince of this world. So I, I, was, I was able to see the scriptures in a better light, and I begin to, began to even expect tribulation, I mean, from, <laughs> yes, so it just helped me to be more to have more grace during those periods, to know that the Lord is there and yeah. He will see me through yeah. everything. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Let's clap for Him. Praise God. L let me encourage you a little bit. Your sister will be okay. Yeah. Very well. She will be okay. She will be okay. Uh, uh, what you need to do is just keep your heart, keep your heart 
in the love of God. Keep your heart. And most of the time, when Satan does that, it's true. Your heart is going after your heart. He wants to. Even when you're bereaved, your heart is what he wants. He wants to get you offended, like we said. Get you offended, and then you miss. Uh, I may not be able to tell you everything, but it's just, just watch your heart and keep focus. But your sister will be okay. God has plans for her. Uh, God knows her much more than you do. God has plans for her. All right? God bless you. All right. Let, let's hear you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, I, I actually don't have a specific experience to share. Okay. Just a lesson you learned. A lesson I learned. And one of the things I've come to understand about tribulation. I really don't like playing with my season of tribulation. I value them a lot. I, I learned a lot in those seasons. And one of the things I learned is they always prepare you for the next phase. Mm. If you don't go through it well, you might, you might not be able to enter into that next phase very well. Mm. So I really treasure my seasons of tribulation. Mm. I ensure that I go through it as well as I can. Mm. If I need strength, I pray for strength. Yeah. And sometimes there's always comfort in the world. When you come from meetings, there's a lot of comfort that comes from the meetings. How to be patient, how to be tender, how to be able to go through those things and suffer long. So those things really, really helps me to go through those seasons. And season after seasons, I've just noticed it's like from one level to the other. You always go from one to the other. For this season, it might be to build your faith. The next season might be to build your patience. The next season might be just to be tender. And from one season to the other, it's like a course. Yeah. It's like you're going through university. One semester to another semester, yeah, tribulation always subject. comes with different yeah. things specific that you want to go through. And you must learn in those seasons. So that's everything for me. So it's like a, it's like a training. It's like a course. Hallelujah. That's what I Amen. How, how many of us know that? Come along. He's a great brother. Come along. I, I didn't ask everybody to come up. He's a great brother. He's a brother that his faith still challenges me. You know, uh, I knew him in Unilag. I also was, you served in Port Harcourt, right? And those were the days of Word and Prayer Summit. You were there and... Uh, Finished school, and somehow the Lord, the way the Lord did it, it happens to be a time when our brother, that's a big giant, had his, you know, uh, more like affliction. It, that thing was affliction. It was Satan. Uh, but I saw this young man. You don't know, some people are hidden heroes. Men with crown that you may not. When the Lord will be rewarding, you will be shocked. Each time I look at him, I always say, this young man. Because many would have wanted to, okay, let me pursue my dream, let me pursue my ambition, let me pursue my this. But he partook of that affliction of our brother. Much more than every one of us did. We prayed for him, we prayed for we did all of that, but he was there. He partook of it. He stayed with him. This is a great man. He's a great saint. And just listening him to, listen to him talk, you could see that through this whole thing, the Lord is betting something inside of him. I won't be shocked if he ends up in ministry. I won't be shocked at all. Because something, there's a, you, I, I, I'm just seeing him having grasp on this life in, in such a way that is, is amazing. Hallelujah.
quickly. Let me say this before I lose it. I just felt the Lord saying to me, I, I, don't, I don't think that's interpretation, so don't. I just felt the Lord, you know, whispering to me. He said, you partook of the afflictions of my servant. You didn't just partake of his affliction. Through that, you partook of my own affliction. It's Jesus that is saying that. You partook of my own affliction. Because when he was being afflicted, I was also being afflicted. And you were not ashamed of me. You are not ashamed. It was my affliction that was manifested in his life. And you were not ashamed of him. And then as much as you were not ashamed of him, you also were not ashamed of me. I reckon it to you that you partook of my affliction, see the Lord. Amen. That's it, man. All right. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. He's a great man. He's a great man. Let's hear you, my sister. Okay, praise God. So mine also is not an experience per se. So it's just what I learned, a yeah. lesson. So the lessons brought a whole lot of clarity to me um, as, as regarding the topic um, tribulation. You know, prior to now, somewhere secretly in my heart, I've been scared of it. Tribulation, go through tribulation. But, and I see how that it's actually a, a requirement for us, for all believers, for us to, you know, to come to glory. I, I, I just, I understood that um, our soul ha, ha, has acquired a whole lot of um, things, junks, you know, from this world, and the Lord needs to prune us to remove those, because we are, we've acquired height higher than even the entrance into the kingdom. I remember Pastor Ayer was saying we are taller than the, 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 the gate of the kingdom, and you know, the Lord needs to prune and remove those things in us for us to be to, to be able to enter the kingdom. So to, to, the tribulation is, for, is, is to prune and remove substances that is not of God in us and to also instill life into us. So it's a way of God um, is putting his life in us. So I, I saw how that tribulation is actually a good thing. It's actually God's mercy for, for to receive us. So that's the end. Praise God. Wow. <laughs> Amen. In other words, you're able to see tribulation in a good light. That, you know, when by, uh, James says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, which also includes, when he said diverse temptation, that includes tribulation. Praise God. So you can count it all joy. Amen. All right, let's quickly hear you because of time. Good morning, church. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Okay, um, for, um, when we started treating the topic tribulation, I was somehow concerned, like, we know that when a body comes, like a topic, definitely the atmosphere will rest. Then I was struggling you can go back with to your having now. to receive the Sunday school Only those who want to. until Pastor um, Ayo came up. And the Sunday where, you know, mommy also emphasized, Pastor Ayo said tribulation is a blessing. So that day my heart was open. Okay, I was like, how can I receive this blessing? So I now remembered a day I was praying. I was praying, praying for the new year. And I just had in my spirit temptations, troubles. I'm like, God, I beg you. What kind of trouble? I just ended the prayer. Like, we should be praying for good things. What is this on this kind of faithful day? You know, that was, that was just somewhere. But I noticed after that period, some unnecessary trouble. I'm someone that I don't like being troubled. I'm always happy. When you're around me, you have to be happy. If you're not happy, I will do everything to make you happy. Even if it displeases you, you just have to be happy around me. So, but since that moment, I can be shining teeth, but people don't know that. I was having different trouble. Then I remember the scripture that Apostle Paul said. He said, we have troubles within and without. So somewhere there, I just saw that, okay, nothing outside really, really troubles me to an extent. I can ignore anything. If you like, you have me from now to tomorrow. It will not shake me. But I saw that God had to work something. And you know, Daddy started talking about the church of Thessalonians. And Daddy said that they received the word in much affliction. So I now saw that those troubles, you know, there was a way they were coming, and somehow they were, they were almost, always, almost making me frustrated. You know, I was almost going to be angry with God. I was going to be offended. I was, ang I was angry that, ah, God, by this time, I should be perfect. 
by now, your touch should not be far from me. By now, I should be very, very close to you. At this time, as in if it was after I finished school and I'm getting all this trouble, I was normal as a young girl, yeah? But now, as in Ridier, Oyakati Manye, Koton Soi, wow, am I being troubled like this? So, you know, I just saw um, this place in Romans 5. I think one of the um, Sundays, they emphasize it. Romans 5, verse, um, 5, verse 3. And, not, and it says, um, and, not, oh, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So I saw how that the different troubles that came since that time that when I was praying, and the Lord told me that I was going to have, you know, those seasons, I saw that I was not open to it. I was kind of dodging it. But immediately the Sunday school, starting from when Daddy started the book of Thessalonians, and the Sunday school was introduced, and I saw how that somehow the Lord has to trouble you. And Pastor Ayo gave the example of Job, how that what he feared was what the enemy used to trouble him most. And because he was faithful to receive the Lord in that trouble and not give way, at the end of the day, he saw the great coming of God and his estate was better. So somehow this Sunday school has really helped me to embrace the different troubles that have come to me. It might not be so obvious, but Pastor T can bear witness small. And maybe Pastor AK small. It's very small because I don't tell them everything. But then I've led to know that tribulations help me to receive the comings of God. Because in those times when I'm very, very troubled, and when I come to meeting being like, damn it, today, I can't, as in, whatever comes, however it comes, I am here for God. I want to receive God. And those meetings, I always have great understanding. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, we glory in tribulation. Can you say, we glory in tribulation? We glory in tribulation. Did you say that? No, did you just say that? Did you mean what you just said now? Or you're just reading pages of the scripture? Are you actually sure you glory in tribulation? All that will live godly. All that will live godly. In this world. Thank you. 2 Timothy 3, 12. Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ. Ah, haba. It means that some people will not live godly in Christ. To live godly in Christ is to live out the life of Christ, to live according to the standards of Christ. And all that will live that way will do what? Suffer. Persecution. Now, I know persecution, you look at persecution majorly from the external, you know, maybe when, like when you read Fossil's book of Matthew, what they did to them. But I also want you to know that spirits also persecute us. Spirits. What was, the one who was persecuting Paul was a spirit. It wasn't just men, it was spirits. They will use men, they will use, they will throw everything. But Paul said, Yea, in all these things, we are more than. Now, you can't say you're more than conquerors when you've not fought. I don't know if you're with me. You can't say, Yeah, we are more than conquerors when you have not had to. Nobody declares himself a victor when you have nobody to fight. Yea, in all these things, we are, like, oh, thank you, Romans chapter uh, 8. It says, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. One of the things I do, praise God, I'm seeing a lot of people coming to be a witness. One of the things I do in times of trial and tribulation, all that I keep praying for is that the Lord will help me to see his love. His love can take you through anything. 
just understanding of his love in a fresh way. His love, just an understanding of his love in a fresh way that this is love, that God loves me. No matter what it is that I'm going through, his love is more than enough. Praise God. All right, I'll let them talk. Uh, Arab is here also. <laughs> okay, quickly, so that we'll begin to round up. Praise God. Um, I want to thank God for the Sunday school. My is twofold. In throughout, throughout the Sunday school, one thing that stuck out for me is don't waste your tribulations. So any situation that comes, I will just tell the Lord God, I don't know what you want me to learn in this situation. Don't allow me waste it. Let me get the reality of whatever you want me to learn in the process. So I actually had to go home with, I practically carried Pastor A.Y. description of we going to visit our uncle who has a house at Lekki, comparing it with the mud house that they build on the farm, you know, and I wanted to be that house at Lekki so I could, ha and so I have to learn to submit myself to the Lord, all the drillings, all the, the way he wanted the house to be built so that he can come and dwell in the house conveniently. So I was seeing myself as that house that God wanted to raise. Then, as in terms of experience, the past two months has been the kind of, a kind of years, but I had a colleague that raised. One of the sisters led it, raised the prayers and she said how to handle it. So after that prayers, it has become, it has come, it, the situation became calmer. I can relate to the cases. So when I even go to court to stand in as a witness for my company, and most times the cases are waived. So I've had situations where the cases are adjoined. I don't have to talk, but God is trying to make me understand that I am helping you through this stage that so that you will come out of it refined and become better. So I now can embrace tribulation and say, what, what are you bringing that you've not brought before? We are going to go through it. What are you bringing out? So now I've, become, I've come to realize the love of God. One of those days I had to look at that um, Proverbs, um, Roman, Proverbs, um, Romans chapter 8, that what can separate you, me, from the love of God? Romans chapter 8, that what can separate you, me, from the love of God? So I said, have that scripture, please. Romans chapter 8, where, what can separate me from the love of Christ? Yes. Shall tribulation or distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, I could list all of them like that. And I'll say, in all these things, I am more than a conqueror. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Courage. Can you say courage? courage? That's one of the things that I'm also trusting God that this lesson that we've taken God that this lesson that we've just gone through will, the Lord will build fortitude, strength, strength in us to go through whatever the enemy might want to throw, to stand our ground, not to yield our ground, not to allow our faith fail. Hallelujah. All right, quickly, time. Good morning, Pastor. All right, good morning. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Church. Um, okay, so I naturally did not want to come outside, but my mommy said that um, should I be shy of God's faithfulness, so I decided to come outside and share this experience. So this happened before the series of um, tribulation, but during this series, I got to like understand that, okay, so actually, the Lord has actually been building us for days, winter per se, that is coming and all. So this happened on a very good day. I was going to work in the morning. Before then, in the house, I actually led um, the morning prayers, morning devotion. So you know when you lead prayers, you are all spiritual. You are feeling very hot for the Lord. So that was how I left the house, very hot for my God. And <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so, uh, so, of course, you, you're like your spirit antenna is very high there, but I entered into one chance um, vehicle. And I'm like, when I got inside the vehicle and I sat down and they closed the door and I saw myself from the chair to the floor, and I realized, I said, God, 
we prayed about this this morning. What's happening? You know? So from that um, chair to the floor, I realized that there was an attack on my heart, and I was saying that, how can I, um, a word of righteousness sister, go through this kind of thing? And that I'm supposed to be, angels should be around me, left and right, front and center. And I was like, so that experience from that chair to that floor was making me fight God's faithfulness, was making me, was making me ask questions. And, you know, they started asking for money, asking for this here and there. And the, the other, um, one of the people in the car just brought out iron, very big rod like this, and started hitting me on my knees. And I'm like, brother, it's not that difficult. You want money, I will give you this money. I'm not holding the money. I'm not fighting with you. I'm a sister. I cannot fight, you know. So I, it, it was not funny. <laughs> but yes, so... He was hitting me, hitting me, hitting me continuously, and I was crying out in pain. Then I realized that my pain was actually exciting him. Then I decided to take in the pain. So when he hits me, I don't make any excuses, any sign, any sound. I take it in. You know, I was crying before, but I stopped crying. I said, smiling. And then he was like, do you have someone to call to pay for this? I said, okay. I called a brother. And then the brother... um, pay the money and all of that, and they were like, okay, they will drop me very soon. Then, but I've paid you this money. He still kept on hitting me on my knee. And I said, no problem. Enjoy yourself. At the end of the day, something came well up in my heart, and it was that, you know, the devil has done one. I have to do my own back. And then the word that um, um, Pastor Lade always tells me is that, you know, pray for those that despitefully use you. And that was the word that came to my mind immediately. And I said, I will not leave this vehicle without doing devil back. So let it be one, one, you know. So I just prayed immediately that these people will be saved. You know, there was no bitterness in my heart for them. I checked my heart very well. There was no bitterness. I was really praying earnestly and I was smiling. I was smiling to the extent I was happy that the man asked me that, um, are you, uh, you asked my, about my church, and then he said, you are going to marry a pastor. I said, yes, I will marry a pastor. <laughs> you know? And then he was, he said, asking me, where am I from? I told him where I'm from. He said, oh, we are sisters now. I said, oh, you're my brother. <laughs> he said, yes. He said, oh, he said, engaging me. And the same person that asked me, that told me he's my brother, put um, a boniki balm inside my eyes, and still was telling me he's my brother. I said, no problem. I'll be the last person you will carry on this um, particular journey of yours. And then I came down, you know, and here is my, <laughs> my scar of tribulation. So I want to thank God. <laughs> I want to thank God for, because, you know, the, 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 I just got to realize that actually, you know, the, the series made me to see that I did not waste that opportunity. Yeah. I actually used it well. And, you know, it's, it's easier now to pray for people that despite yes. use me. It's easier now to obey certain yeah. commandments. So I give God all praise. Hallelujah. I'm not going to give all the time to everybody. I'm only giving to Arab because I asked for hands up then and some of us didn't want to. Because of time, we can't do this for the whole day. And Pastor... Uh, that is... <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. All right, so I actually didn't want to come out, um, but uh, one of my brothers at the temple kept pushing me and saying, sir, you have to go. You have to go. You know what? We've been through together. <laughs> Okay, so um, this time and season for me um, just um, placed a, a, a knowledge, you know, that we are agents of God's mercy. Yeah. Um, if there's something that, you know, will actually re- resound for me concerning this particular season of my life, is actually that God is merciful. God is merciful. Okay, so six months from, I mean, like in the past six months has been... Um, a good time for us <laughs> in the office, and um, just when the meeting, uh, the, 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 the um, series. series started, um, it became hotter. I personally, by God's grace, uh, little here, little there, I feel I know how to go about things based on maybe little, little experience of uh, touching here and there. I mean, you know, small, small suffering here and there. But this particular one, uh, it got to a time I knew that. Uh, we need God's grace here. <laughs> okay, so when you actually are alone, it looks like you can just wither the storm alone. But when you have to look at faces of people that one way or the other are looking up to you for a solution, and you know you don't have a solution, 
you are going to solution, it's, it's, it's not coming from there. You are coming back to the people, you are looking at their faces. They are trying to say, what is going on, sir? You know that you don't even know what is going on. You are their boss. Then, <laughs> then you know that there's a major problem. So at that point, you are sandwiched in between and you are thinking, what is going on? I, I don't want to go into details because it's, it's actually a lot. But thank God, just last week, I was just coming, you know, I was walking, I did my normal walk in the morning, coming to the office, and I saw a horn, a small horn, just around. I said, what is this thing? Normally, I would usually pray, you know, God, as we go today, keep us and all that and all that. But I just saw this horn. I said, this is unusual. There's something about this. And I remembered, you know, um, scriptures, you know, where I spoke about the horn that actually rose against. So I felt like, ah, this is unusual. I need to actually take time to actually pray about this. But how to actually pray about it also? In fact, there is no strength to draw from within because of the, you know, the, the, the boldness of the wars that is actually in front of you here and there. I mean, you just come, you hear of people that are, that are attached to you. They are facing their own problems here. Somebody is dealing with this one here. Somebody is dealing with... Wars this, and rumors war, of wars. War everywhere, sir. So it's, 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 it was strong. But somewhere there, I just, I just remembered an encounter, an experience that the Lord told me some times ago to say, at times like this, don't forget to ask me for mercy. So, it was, it was on Thursday morning. I was, dry, I was going to work. I just started saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show mercy. Okay, so one of uh, the persons actually reporting to me was supposed to have one, one meeting also that was also going to also affect him and affect all that has to do with him. I mean, we are, we are a bit of um, accountable brethren, you know, working together. So, you know, so by the time I just kept saying that, just Lord, have mercy. And then I just, the Lord just opened my eye a bit up, you know, above the situation to see that most of the people that are actually going against us, you know, and when I mean us, I mean we're, we're, we're in number, is actually, you know, they, they, they're under influence of spirits. So then I began to take charge over them. Now it looked like they are actually the major problem. But the Lord actually opened my eyes. Immediately I began to pray about mercy. The Lord now began to open my eyes to say, now begin to take charge cut the influence of those spirits over them. Because so long as those spirits are influencing them, they are actually a problem to me and to all that were around me. So I just felt like, okay, I, I, I began to take charge. I began to take charge. I began to take charge. And God helped me. Immediately by that Thursday, I just sensed a note of victory. As in, I sensed it so much that it was like somebody literally gave me, you know, something to, to say, this is it. It's the end of the problem. So I called the people in the office and I said, guys, you have to pray. We have to actually pray about this. I said, I hope you know that we actually are a, an extension of, of the word of righteousness here. I said, how may, I said, you know that normally you would give your tithes when you actually get your salary, right? I said, you know that normally one brethren here and there will ask you for money. One here and there, eventually you have to give. I said, don't be surprised that everything that is looking like is happening so big can be just because of you and you and you and you and you. So that you actually have to watch for this particular period and pray about it. I told him, I said, guys, please, this I want all of you to pray about it. Take time to pray. And on Friday again, again, I had to pray. And one of the major prayers that kept coming to me was mercy. Lord, you show mercy. But from that Thursday, I saw a change, like almost rapid. I've never had such kind of experience before. There are some prayers, uh, prayers I pray, I eventually know that by faith is answered. But this one, I knew it so much that it just started happening almost immediately. And to cap it all up, by the time that it was round enough yesterday's message, and he now began to talk about mercy, know how to use mercy, know how to use mercy. We are all agents of mercy. There is something that I know that does not fail. Even when all seem to have failed. That's true. All that you try to know how to do. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. And daddy now began to talk about, if, if, you, if you heard in that administration yesterday, towards the end, he started praying about a particular brother. I know that, I, if, not, if, if I'm not the only one, I'm a part of them. And he began to rebuke spirits, you know, that are actually praying on, yeah. you know, businesses of brothers yeah. that are actually in, in that regard. So, that we are agents of mercy, and God's mercy don't fail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians chapter one. Amen. All these stories. Were you, were you blessed with those stories? I'm sure you have your own now. If I call you, you'll come out now. Praise God. But let me read. We don't have it. We don't have all the time here. Uh, from verse 4. So that we, our, we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecution and tribulation. Paul was telling them that we, Paul was being troubled and his colleagues, we have been troubled together with him. But we are so much concerned about the church in Thessalonians and they heard about the, Paul was saying, we glory in you, meaning we boast of you, we boast of you, we boast of you in, your, in, in all the churches, meaning in all the churches we go, you stand as a testimony. We talk about you in all the churches of God, for your patience. So you see, one of the things that you can't, one of the days I was teaching, I said, you can't, you need patience. The only way patience can, and patience is a currency in the spirit, the only way patience can be developed, the only way patience can be earned is true tribulation. You know, he was talking to them about their patience. So Paul was glorying in their patience and faith in all their what? In all their what? In all their persecution and tribulation that they endure. They endured it. What it worked out was patience. That faith was purified. That faith and the currency of patience. Now he said something, he explained it to us. What really is here in verse 5? He said, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. So what you go through, that's what he was telling the church, that what you're going through is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. So it means if you're not counted worthy, then to be counted worthy is to be counted worthy for entrance. To be counted worthy for entrance. He said that you might be counted worthy for the kingdom for which ye suffer. So it's a manifest token of God's judgment. God's righteous judgment. God's righteous judgment. I don't have all the time because our time is that somebody has not gone through it. But when you're going through it, he will tell you it is because of word of righteousness. It's because of your commitment to God. It is because of this. That when you we are not this committed, things we are okay. How many of you have seen like that? Yeah. It tells that to everybody. When you are not this committed, things we are okay. But right now you're committed. Are you seeing it? It's not the right thing to do. Just handle these things softly. No. I want you to press in. Because at that moment, there is an entrance. There is an entrance that is being ministered. It's a fight of faith. It's a fight. It's a fight of faith. It's just a fight of faith. It's a fight of faith which you must engage in. It's a fight of faith which you cannot shy away from. It's a fight of faith. For what you're looking at, what you're seeing right now, is a fight of faith. But it's a fight of faith that you cannot afford to draw back from. 
For see the Lord, my soul will not have pleasure in them that draw back. For they that draw back will draw back unto perdition. But fight, press on, press on, press forward. Press until you gain entrance. For entrance is being ministered to you even in the time and the moment of pressure. See the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye suffer, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Not them that trouble you. Spirits. Spirits. I won't give you this gist, but I've experienced it. I was told specifically, this thing is the... So something I went through a particular time, and I knew there was a spirit that was, and the Lord just said, accept it. I want to judge a spirit. I want to judge a spirit. And though difficult, I have to accept it, and a spirit was judged. I witnessed it. A spirit was judged. So they that trouble you are actually spirit, and also men, because they use men to trouble you. And also, and also, God will, you know, he said, them that trouble you, he didn't specifically mention spirits of men, but of course, by the spirit, I can deduce, deduce it. He said, and to you who are troubled, he said, the rest. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, you know, when you read the book of Revelation chapter 14, verse 13, he said, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto them, Right, blessed are the dead. No, 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 that's not the place where I, I, I want to go to. He said, a, a white, sorry, a white raiment was given to them and told to rest until all their brethren that are to be killed will also be killed. Now, when you read that, you will think of it as physical. Yes, it, it might have a physical interpretation, but it's also a trouble because when you're being troubled, your garment, your, they are changing your garment. They will give you a garment. They will change your garment. And that garment is to give you a rest. And there is a number of those that must also partake of that tribulation in that season. Amen. It has to be completed. And he said, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. So Paul has already entered into that rest, which he was telling, rest with us. We've crossed this place we are at rest right now. I'm encouraging you to rest with us. Amen. He said, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in the flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with an everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be, I want you to see that, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints. I want you to see that, that the end of it is that he shall come to be glorified in his saints. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe. Because our testimony among you was believed in that day. There's a time when he will be glorified in the saints. And the saints that he will be glorified in are these ones that Paul was talking about. He was encouraging the Thessalonian church. He said, rest with us. Rest with us. There's an appointed time. There is an appointed time, a time of God, glo uh, God to be the Lord to be glorified in his saints. I love that. Not just glorified in his saints, glorified in his saints. That word glorified means to be manifested in his saints. To be manifested, meaning there's a life of glory that will be manifested through you when you go through this. There's a life of glory that will be manifested through you and also to be admired because it's an admiration. Heavens, we admire you. 
Heavens, we admire you. Angels, we admire you. You know the thing about it? One of the things about our gospel and our testimony. Thank God for ministering spirits. Thank God for the, you know, the role they play in our lives. But I will tell you one thing. I'm sure they do wonder at you. That in the midst of your, you know, there's a way they know God. There's a way they also, you know, stay in the presence of God. But in the midst of your darkness, in the midst of your incomplete knowledge of his presence, incomplete experience of his presence, in the midst of darkness, you're able to hold forth. You're able to hold on. You didn't give up. You're a testimony to them. You don't understand what I'm talking about. You're a testimony to them. You're a wonder that these people, these frail creatures, these frail creatures are able to hold on and they are not giving up in the midst of whatever it is that they are going through. They still believe God. Amen. Can I tell you something? That is what it means that down to principalities and powers in the heavenly places might be made known the manifold wisdom of God. Principalities, both the good ones and the bad ones, we'll see. Amen. The good ones, you'll be a judgment to them. That's how you judge angels. You'll be a judgment to them. How? They didn't go through what you went through. They, they, they had opportunity. They, of course, Adam was made a little lower than angel. An angel messed up by I mean, messed up real good by a fallen angel with all his whips and caprices that he kept man down, kept man in his bondage. But man was able to rise because of Jesus. Was able to rise and believe the gospel, stood against all odds, stood against darkness, and saw, you see the man rising, and that man is transformed. We have a testimony uh, um, just to put it this way, with all humility, sense of humility and, and, and soberness, we have a testimony to bear that they can't bear. You know one of the testimony? Huh? I was lost. Now I'm found. I was blind. But now I see. I was dead. But now I'm alive. It's a testimony. It's a testimony of the fact that you've gone through a lot and then you're coming up. But, but I, one of the things about it is that I want to thank God for Jesus. Amen. I want to thank God for Jesus. You know, He's the author. Amen. He, there's nothing, there is nothing that you go through, there's nothing you're going through, there is no situation that He, ne that he didn't go through in the days of His flesh. God didn't create happy and way for him. He went through it all. And he stood. Amen. And then he now said, Lo, I am with you. There is, he's touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He, he, he has been tempted at every point, And that is why he can stand as a high priest. And also to succor you that are being tempted. We have an advocate. We have an advocate. You know, Jesus had to go through it alone. The father was watching him. He had to go through it alone. He had to cry to God. At the point, he, he cried with a, the Bible said, a strong cry to him that is able to save him from death. And he was heard in that. But you see, our Lord Jesus, amen. Our Lord Jesus went through it, but in your own tribulation, in your own trial, he's sending comfort. The comfort of the Spirit. He's also comforting you. He's sending ministering spirits to you. Amen. He's making sure that in all that you are not alone. Amen. 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 So I want to encourage you this morning. Hold on. Amen. Pastor T just said, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. And you will become victorious. Amen. You will let us say, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us. That's a great testimony. Hallelujah. Are you been blessed through this teaching? 
You've been blessed. It is well. We give God praise. Hallelujah. All right, let's have the musicians come up. Sorry for the long roundup. We needed to do this. Uh, I'm sure you were blessed. Were you blessed? If you have your own testimony, you can also send it to us, please. It will be good to read them uh, and, and also see how God has helped you. Amen.
can't see the promise, I can't see the future. You're the God of season, and I'm just in the winter. If all I know of harvest is that is what my patience, and if you're not done working, God, I'm not done waiting. You can see my promise, even in the winter. Cause you're the God of greatness, even in the winter. For all I know, season, start to take your time. But save us in the second.
our hands in just worship the Lord I want you to open your mouth you've sang but I want you to speak words just bless his name speak from your heart David said bless the Lord all my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name let your soul speak. Let your soul bless the Lord. Let your soul bless the Lord. Lord, we bless you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you for this visitation. Thank you for this visitation. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Glory to your name, our Father. We worship you. We praise you. We thank you. We honor you. Glory to our God. Oh, we worship you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Majesty, honor, praises, adoration, thanksgiving. Be to your name, most high. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the visitation that has been prepared for us this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you are glad to be in church this morning? How many of you will say with me, Daddy and Mommy, you are welcome. Daddy. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, you know, that parable of the uh, marriage in Cana of Galilee, the, one of the lessons you learn from there is that the Lord actually reserves the best for the last. Amen. You know, I've been wanting daddy to come. Daddy has been, you know, from one place to the other. I tried to trail him, see how I can make him come. I know his heart is with us, but a lot of places had need of him. And I didn't want to be so possessive. Because actually, I'm the first son. I have the right to say I want you here, but I just say, let me prepare my brothers. Amen. So I allow them and, you know, they've drank the wine, but they are yet to drink this wine. Amen. I believe the Lord has prepared something for us, something great this morning, you know, uh, wine on the leaves. Wine well refined. It's good to be patient, though. <laughs> it's good to be patient. Wine well refined. I was just looking at it yesterday. I said, you know, I know the Lord brewed something in his heart and he'll just start sharing it gradually, 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 gradually from um, Ibado to Ilori to you know, on dough and all of that. And then the team is getting stronger and stronger and clearer. Thank God that we waited for it to be on the leaves, well refined before he comes to minister to us. 
And I also, you know, somehow God so loves us so much. You know, why they, you know, when they came back, the first meeting we had generally uh, was with mommy during the uh, workers' meeting, workers' retreat. Praise God. We had mommy come during the workers' retreat. That was the first meeting she was to preach in, you know, uh, immediately after they came back. And it was so, so, so powerful. So, so anointed. You know, coming with a fresh anointing and it was just dropped on us. Amen. So somehow, I'll put it this way, mommy brought the alpha and daddy is about to bring the omega because they'll soon be traveling and so we are having the Omega before the journey, and then we will, when they come back, we'll see how we can also have the Alpha and Omega thing. How, how, how do you enjoy it? Amen. But I want to take time to appreciate the servant of God and the handmaiden of the Lord. We love you so dearly. We love you so much. And we are so, so privileged and so opportune to have both of you as our parents in the faith. I'm sure I'm speaking the mind of everybody that is here. Uh, we will not have been able to get the coordinates right, both in doctrine and also in conversation, if God has not raised the two of you to stand before us as an example, to embody this message. I'm somebody that reads a lot. I read books a lot. And I've, I've, I've read books of guys like what George Warnock, Paul Trulin, those guys that had, you know, messages along this line. But the thing about it was that we were, I was no opportunity to, I, was, I didn't have opportunity to see their life. Also, read, try reading Watchman I think I read uh, most of his books. But I wasn't there. So something happened. You know, uh, I think it was Witness Lee that was sharing a testimony about with, uh, uh, Watchman Nee. I was shocked. Because when you read Watchman Nee's book, you, <laughs> the judge, you feel Watchman Nee was poor, trouble. But the guy was a millionaire. Because there was a time when they needed to, you know, give money for work. That was those days. What he brought out to give was in millions. It was Witness Lee that said that. When I, when I read that, I was shocked. I say, it means that we really don't know these men like that. And just, just one aspect. So you can read books and then you might not really know. I'm just exalting what God has wrought in them. I'm also thanking God for the privilege that we have to watch their con seeing the two of them embodying, you know, they embody this message. They embody this word of righteousness. And uh, I want to thank God for their life, their commitment, their love, their doggedness. We can't, we can't talk about it all because it's plenty. Amen. But daddy, mommy, we want you to know that we love you, we appreciate you, we appreciate what God has done through you and what God is here to do through you, and we are glad to be your children, and will always want to be your children. Thank you for all the patience, thank you for all the love, thank you for where you stand, thank you for uh, allowing God to take your lives, because that's what the Lord did. The Lord took your lives. You don't have your lives. I've, I've seen it over and over again. You just don't have your life. Sometimes I used to think, maybe you're beside yourselves. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I used to think. So I said, maybe this, 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 these our parents are not all together. <laughs> you know, you know, you know that there's a way people do things, but I just see they are not, they are almost not conscious of, you know, what the Lord is using them to do. Um, but, I, but I, I just know it's a heart of sacrifice, a heart of sacrifice that we are also learning in this work, giving our all, giving ourselves, giving our time, giving our, 
you know, I just watched Daddy one of those days. I said, does he do any other thing apart from preach? Because he basically preaches every time, and I'm like, who does that? For crying out loud. And mommy is following suit. You know, I, it's, it's a great testimony to me. Uh, testimonies. You know, I had to allow some of them share testimonies, and I just, I just see the beauty of this life being, you know, mirrored out in the life of these young ones. And I also look back at other young people who, of their age, who are outside this community, and I know what their lives are like. But I thank God for the Lord has used the two of you to bet us into a life of purpose, a life of great destiny. A life that is that has nothing else in pursuit of apart from pleasing the Lord and apart from eternal life. We thank you. We appreciate you again, sir and ma, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we clap for them? Let's please rise up as we clap for them. Just appreciate them. If you can, please do that. Let's celebrate them. Amen. They, Paul said to one of the churches, he said, if I'm not apostle to anybody, I'm apostle to you. They are our apostles. Daddy and mommy are our apostles. They are our prophets. They are our pastors. They are our evangelists. They are our teachers. They are everything to us. And we are glad to have you much more as parents, spiritually. Thank you, Daddy and Mommy. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. So this morning, I want you to open up your hearts. I've told the pastors to cancel the house fellowship for today. So uh, we are just going to sit and be blessed. Amen. We'll have our fellowship other Sundays. Today is special. Is the Omega. Is the, is the... And then we have also communion to seal the covenant. Amen. I'm trusting God that Daddy will start from where he stopped yesterday night. That's what is in my heart. I just want to say it, sir. So that maybe you will go another... But where you stopped yesterday night, I feel, I, I just desire that the Lord will help you again to continue from there because we really want to drink. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Yes, sir. I'm not hearing you. Are you ready? Yes, sir. No, that's not good enough. Are you ready? Yes, sir. With a great God bless you. Let's be on our feet as we welcome our daddy to the podium. Let's welcome our daddy. to be here today. 
And I want to thank, I want to thank, including Pastor, I'm greeting you first of all. Say thank you for being patient uh, till now. Praise God uh, that you allow me to go to a learning. I know Pastor's house is when I'm coming from London. I listen there, she's just landing near and living with just straight daddy. This is come and start. And so I remember when they said, well, How are you going to do it? I said, You have to endure this, your brothers, especially Pastor Thompson. Are you getting that? <laughs> it's not leaving you alone. Are you getting that? Yeah, it's, uh, Pastor is running after Pastor Emeka a lot. So uh, praise God. And he doesn't leave my neck alone. And so. I said, you have to, you have just, he's just been born, and then we need to take care of him. Are you getting, he's like the prodigal son, are you going right to say, that the father, are you getting, he has to watch over, are you getting, me? so, so, and uh, Pastor Timatos is another um, uh, wonderful son, again, you know what I mean, so, uh, Pastor, thank you for being a father too, thank you for I know God is enlarging your heart. You are following me, and he's going to enlarge it more. <laughs> because we still have many to cater for. Many, many, many. Many, many of the many churches will be born. Um, and we are about their verge now. Praise God. Uh, just to say thank you. Pastor, I want to say thank you, sir. Um, Mommy Lillian, thank you. I love this dress you wear this morning. So it's a... Um, <laughs> Lily, Lily, you don't know, every time I see you and you look sparkling, you encourage my soul. Are you listening to me? Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Please keep looking sparkling and hallelujah and, uh, and beautiful for Pastor Maker. He needs it. He needs that. Uh, this hallelujah. Forget about uh, Pastor is a very holy man of God. I can, is more holy than myself, so uh, hallelujah. But thank you, sir, Pastor. So thank you for bringing me here this morning. Mamilian, thank you. Um, I want to thank all the pastors Pastor Tayo Faso, Pastor Ken. <laughs> Amen. Pastor Hiola, Pastor TJ, Pastor Ayo, Pastor Sam Outa, Pastor Ike. Pastor Holiday, Michael Goye, Michael Luwale, and all our pastors behind. Can you help me appreciate all of them? Pastor Kunle Ogunjobi, amen. Amen. I want to turn to my right hand side and give thanks to some of our father, Pastor Abu Ajem and Moni, and <laughs> Lake Moni, hallelujah. All our wonderful sisters, all the way from Lekki, untiring soul, spirit. Thank you, my sister. How are you doing? You are looking fine now. And you are looking younger. Amen. Happy to Sister Eugene, thank you, ma. Eugene, God bless you. See why? It's been long. I've seen you. You are looking straight. And uh, uh, thank you. Can, we, can you greet somebody next to you? Everybody greet somebody next to you. Welcome them to the presence of Jesus. Say welcome to church. Hallelujah. Uh, praise God. I, I, I was just... Somehow, I, I watched that video of mommy's celebration. Amen. And I'm not supposed to jealous my wife. Or not that I'm, that's anything you do for her, you have done for me. I love that thing too well. Praise God. I want to take time now to specially thank the whole church and all the daughters of Zion here. Who, who took the challenge to rally around mommy Lillian and to celebrate mommy please men let me appreciate these ladies yes amen 
thank you all. Thank you for the Lord will celebrate you too. Hallelujah. I saw all the gifts and uh, though it was for mommy, I was able to pick some things and say, come on, lady, this one fits men too. I can wear this color. Hallelujah. It adapts to my skin. Don't worry. Amen. Just tell it that they think God took me too. Praise God. Can we shout hallelujah? And I want to tell you one secret. Mommy loved it too much, too well. He loved everything. She was drunk. She was drunk. Hallelujah. When you get my wife to that tipsy level, know that you have actually done a lot. Amen. Praise God. And uh, please, can you help me appreciate some beautiful people here? Your sisters, all the way from Lekki. They... Amen. They decided to take it off, Pastor, and said, Pastor, you don't need to worry yourself. Allow us to also celebrate past mommy and daddy for all of you. And they did it well. Let me just appreciate them. All of them. Those who are not here, I appreciate you. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, can you thank God for yourself? Just thank God for yourself. Amen. Not to make keep you standing. Uh, just one minute before you sit. Can you hear me appreciate my wife? Brother Henry, please. Yes. Amen. And in, uh, the prophecy for our anniversary was that an Eden has been opened to us and I'm mindful of that prophecy. And I want to say to you, God will give me mind to give you an Edenic experience. Are you listening to me? I just want to say to you that I don't think this soul has forgotten. Hope he has not gone back to his old ways. And just to let you know, I am mindful of that prophecy. That this guy you are seeing here, though he's an apostle, he's your husband. Though he's a prophet, are you getting He's your darling. I just want to say, I love you, I love you, I thank you, I thank you so much. Let me appreciate her. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor, thank you, sir. Pastor Emeka, I don't know if I'm going to talk about you, I'll write a book. Uh, the way you don't want me, I don't want you to talk about me, that's the same way you don't want me to talk about you. Amen. Praise God. We are careful talking about one another. If you allow me to open the vault of talking about you, I think people will buy the book. A lot of people want to buy that book. If I'm greedy, are you getting me? And I like money too much, I know one way I can make money. I will title the book, A Maker. That's all. <laughs> It may come, my son. Everybody shout hallelujah. This guy is my son. Amen. This is my son. Amen. Hallelujah. God gave him to me and Lillian. I just want to say thank you. Sorry for calling him's name. That is, it's with utmost respect and a dear, cordial, affectionate uh, address. Oh, just to say to you, with that, you can know what is on in my heart. With that, with that simple phrase of appreciation to you, know the depth of where you stay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Please have your seat. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Most holy, most righteous.
praise. Let's praise him. Let's let's worship Adonai. All the us. Down in of a glory day, we enter into the day. Oh, Adonai is a dawn, down in of a new day, down in of a glory day. I found in abundance in Adonai where in a cost nembre and egg I found in abundance in Adonai where grosh bashin on I found in abundance in Adonai. What I wish to have in eternity, I can see it in abundance in morning star. Adonai is a prince. Adonai is a king. Adonai is my eternity. Adonai is a morning. Adonai is a star. Star of the morning. Adonai. Jesus. I want to take time and say thanks to you. Our Lord Jesus, King of Kings, Oya Nakela, the only potentate. Trosiga, Trosiga Mahaga, Trosiga Nihelokom Hedo, Trosiga Maste. Thank you. I honor you. I praise you. We are sitting down on a cater on a cart and throwing a colo at a cast and cloy in a grim nazi. Ornese, we may have. We may make courses, you know, or a bit stain on station. Arnonian Eshen Onion Mon Erevedanotusion Engion Sustelon Eanon Shishion Ivi and Juni Munte Kentoa Eredo Eredo is the Lord of Yeno. Eredo Boyana. Stish the Clem to Stin on and Gagion Shea. I am in Telos. Ingo Creo Telos, that's the Yana. Yes, is who I am. Yes, is who I am. We judge a Janeni. We judge a Janeni Hotel. Chichilo Masters, Reto Spey, Lesene, Lelogos. Oh, my Father, my Father, have mercy on me this morning. Have mercy on me this day. Have mercy on me today. Help us to get from your Son 
the love, the things you have given to me. That which you give to Jesus, you help me. Help me to show me mercy. Show mercy. Show mercy. Help us today, help us, help me today. I want to check, see your people's inside, see, see their hunger, help them, bless them, bless them. Jesus has sent, we are here to receive from Jesus through you. As the Holy Ghost directs, and as the Holy Ghost will inspire us to help to receive from you. O angel of the Lord, we receive from you. We welcome you here. We recognize the ministry on your inside. Angel of the Lord, we, are, we know you're here. We know you are here with a blessing from our Lord Jesus.
For you have prayed, you have prayed by put burden in your heart, and you have prayed, and you have prayed, you have prayed, you have prayed. Oh, you have prayed, yes, you have prayed. Mame Odomia Geli, Brianto Giangeli, Ebi Brianga Geli, Amene Brianga Geli, Gigi Gang, give Gay the Angel, Amene give, give, give the Angel. I give the angel. I have given the angel. I have given the angel. I have given the angel. Even things that pertain to your petitions. I have given to the angel. Things that pertain to your request. I have given to the angel. For your angel, Andrea. Even your angel. Even your angel. For NBA Day, Okomedelia, Kakajomia, Gria, and Stephania. You've got to that point again. You got to that point again. You got to that point again, again. Where you ask, where your heart yearn for my mercy. Where your heart plead for my mercy. Because the ground where you are touching is an unknown ground. Is an unknown ground. Is the realm of the unknown. Is the realm of the unknown. Is the realm of the unknown. And I bring the answer. I bring the answer. I bring the answer. Even the mercy. Even the mercy. In the very core heart of my father, I have given it to the angel. I have given it to the angel. Amico begeli andria tete sevini ebri and the angel. Egele bruga venria kakabedi the angel. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Look into it. Look into it. Eat it. Give it. I have given him. He's an angel that brought the answer for mercy. Say the Spirit of God.
I have a great desire in my heart this morning that the, that the testimony of Jesus will be in the heart of if we can achieve that that 20 percent in the body of Christ I'm talking at large we have the, the new testament Many will carry the spirit of, of prophecy. It is clear God wants to cause a multiplying effect of the testament in many churches, many people. I'm anticipating and desiring the God. I, imagine, just imagine, that we have 50 churches in Lagos and the pastors have New Testament spirit. They have the spirit of prophecy. Not so. How will Lagos look like? I want to just look at the effect of new and living with church, not so just one church in this environment, in the lives of people. Sure, you know that all of you, if nearly all, are you listening? You have the spirit of prophecy. <laughs> or you don't believe you have the spirit of prophecy. Amen. How many people believe that you have the spirit of prophecy? Not so. Shout hallelujah. They call it the testimony of Jesus. Not so. It's the spirit of prophecy. How many of you know of me? Who want to be rest assured that Lord, I want to carry that spirit of prophecy. Let me see. Not so. Taking it easy with you. I'm already in the world. I'm ministering the world. Amen. Already ministering the life. Not so. So. Let me just sing for a few minutes. Our song at the farm. I want to sing that song so that that uh, you'll be aware of the presence of that spirit.
maker of the New Testament, minister of the sanctuary and the true tabernacle, mediator of the new covenant, Will you speak, speak, speaker of the New Testament, minister of the sanctuary and the true tabernacle, Take me to the Alpha and no bigger your father. of the sanctuary and the true tabernacle mediator of the new covenant of fire hey. oh my my of the heavenly calling will you consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession Jesus Christ wherefore holy brethren take us of the heavenly calling will you consider the apostle and the high priest profession Christ Jesus Alufa I'm following the Alufa you take us to the Alpha and Omega your father your father
Yesepa and a trefnon Elustekel gave them no seer. Erodos turns. It was a satellite. They are not near to light. Bring you to such a little make you big girl. I bought you. I'm bringing you Christ to sense to bring you light. Christ to sense. It's just a Christ to Christ to bring you to bring you light. Sent me to bring you light. I brought you brought you light. I have brought you light. Light. I brought you my light. Jesus sent me to bring you light. He, he sent me to bring you your light. It is giving you light. He has given you light. Jesus has given you, you light. He has given to you light. Jesus has given you light. Amen. Brother Yola, Pastor Yola, interpret that tongue that came. It's an, there's an angelic inter interjection. So I've been able to say that and announce that. Yeah. testimony they bring to make you see the testimony we come to say to make you see the testimony to make the tindrin di kabambri to fendri no testia for to raise a bearer of testimony for to raise men of the testimony for to minini and tinombri in tebando krindu bandin temunonoti a man of testimony for to raise men of the testimony for to all raise orders of the testimony for to raise bearers of the testimony for to many neon ten hundred do fell at the atomukala gibane to muna near the word shina no more word as you never at the word elemukoro davalati at the word for the men of costa vera the atenia tavranda baradula testivene word word and testimony Word and testimony, word and testimony, word and t t testimony. For I brought a word, I brought a word, I brought the word, I brought your word, I brought his word, I brought your word, I brought the word, I brought the seed, I brought your word, I brought his word, I brought the seed, I brought the seed. I brought the seed. I brought Tistofen. I brought Te Christavana. I brought Te Frondoshila. I brought Te Pringida Sitona. I brought Tendri Tofendi Lekiba. I brought Tofila. I brought Te Frendosa. I brought Tilembri Kabando Sevenon. I brought Tendusa. I brought Tile Dofendi Temaka. I brought Tilo Shandro Beritenai. I brought Tindi Vinin Sungalante Krugeba Ten India Tasaga. A John of Andrina Vostesi. Easy heart, a dear heart, 
Even at on any heart of flesh. Even at a seven and to near heart of flesh. A brand of fed in the antelica do veratini and to seven and to near heart of flesh. A provenango tisti adobena shula brada barketelia tesiate heart of flesh. For there is an agony or tenning group attending the winner to make heart of flesh. Friend of Shenry and Mantelia to none to make that heart. Make that heart unto me. Make that heart unto me. Make that heart unto me. For I sent even my angel, my angel, for to bring unto you even the word that would make a heart of flesh. For I want to write. I want to write. I stand as a writer. I stand in this season as a writer. For it's my season of writing even upon men. It's a season of writing. It's a season of writing men up. It's a season of writing men up. It's a season of writing men to the throne. It's a season of writing men to the throne. It's a season of writing men even to the right hand. It's a season of writing men even to my God. It's a season of writing. But I need a table. 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 Preach that table. Preach that table. Prepare me a table. Prepare me a table. My servant, prepare me a table. Prepare me fully a table. Prepare me the table that I can land my pen on. For I want to write even my spirit. I want to write. I want to write. I want to write. For he has to fall. I want to write because he must fall. I want to write because he must fall. I need a people. I need a people. I need a people. I need a rod of my strength. I need a rod of my strength that will bring him down. I need a rod of my strength that will bring him down. I need a rod of my strength that will bring me down. Bring, 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 bring him down. Bring him down. For I need the people up. I need the people to me. I need the people with me. I need the people to me. I need the people with me. My pen is ready and I want to write. Preach me a people. Preach me a heart of flesh. Preach me. Preach unto me a heart of flesh. Bring them and present them to me. And I would write. And they would rise. And they would sit. And he will fall. Say the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody come and sit. And then we will just, all of us together, we will pray for five minutes. No prophecy. Just keep praying. Let's pray. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm not here today to just preach to you. I want us to get something from God. Individually, I want us to carry it home. I want you to prepare your heart um, as if even more than when someone promises you something that uh, it's very key to your natural life. There's a way we react. I want you to know what you are in church for today is extremely more valuable, highly valuable, higher than the things it gives. This is uh, a very, very they are tainted to God. It's, uh, it's God's taint. It's a, it's a taint of God. So uh, the Lord wants to do it. Today, by the time we finish meeting, we'll have recorded some de degree of success to this uh, 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 to this effect on the things of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Can we all bow our heads and begin to pray? The Lord has done so.
Our Father, we are set to hear from you and at the same time take to the spirit the leading into pastures. Help us, Jesus, today to drink of you and we help us. We, we just say, I, I trust the, in you, Lord. I trust in you. I trust to lead us. I trust in you. Thank you for your ministry and spirit that has come to heed the giving of today. Receive from you everything you give to him. Help me today. Help us and bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. You can have your seat. Um, Shout hallelujah. It's clear from the Spirit of God we know our starting point today is to. I want to appreciate all of them that minister. Help me just appreciate them. The Lord will want us to appreciate them. Amen, sir. Thank you so much. Amen. Ah, hallelujah. Um, it's clear what is, what is set on the table for us today is one of the major cross of our meeting. That's what heaven is shedding light on. And um, I think um, it's go, we go in that direction. Praise God. Uh, thank you, my son, for giving me the book of Revelation chapter 1. It said, the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass is sent and signify it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear the record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. And of all things that is so. Now, all the tongues together, we align, it's clear. Uh, uh, one of the first tongues talked about testing and the other one talked about water, to dig water. And uh, I felt that girl was taken over by the Spirit of God to demonstrate the, to this message uh, with the, our cooperation, all of us together, we are, that's what they're saying, that we can't get that water. I said, you are also willing to dig. It means as you are hearing, you are also digging. We are all digging into the well together with the speaker and those who hear, those who, amen. So we must all participate. If you are not digging, you won't drink water this day. You will not take out of here the water. It means dig thy own well. Right. How do you dig your well? What they mean by meaning labor to understand. Labor to what, sir? Understand. So there are things that are over your understanding. Take out the sand. There is still some sand. Amen. Can we shout hallelujah? Where you can find very resourceful aquifer. 
spiritual aquifer, the living water, the living water. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. I, I know I, they typify the water from the revelation of Christ. Are you getting me? The allegory or the description of what our crisis, what uh, the Bible gave us to us an example as the water from the rock, which does not need the help of anyone, praise God. It's just the rod of Moses that will get that done. But everlasting water, when they go to the promised land, they have to begin to dig wells. It means you must have been trained to find life everlasting life hallelujah you must be willing and obedient to eat of the good of the land praise god you you must also be willing to drink of the good of the land amen shout hallelujah can we shout hallelujah i'm not hearing you say amen he said, gather the people together and I will give them water. Then Israel sang the song, spring up, oh well, sing ye unto it. Hallelujah. Spring up, oh well. So, so to us, a, water, a well of water will spring out of us all. Is that clear to all of you? Is there anybody who will say amen to that? If I, so I'm going to take it gently. I want to find the vein of the water gradually so it's clear the water from tongues the tongues are actually navigating i get him uh, readings for locating the message it ends up in testament it ends up in bread that i was listening to the tongues the last lady that gave tongues said bread and said many other things. But the interpretation came as uh, God wanted the table to be prepared before he would give. So uh, as a careful um, man who have received help from Jesus, uh, I was also watching the message, looking out for it. Amen. So, but my mind stayed on the book of Revelation 1. Let's see it. Revelation chapter 1. Shew unto his servant the things which must shortly come to pass. He sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John. Amen. And who bear the record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Something is paramount. Now, they didn't include of all things that is so. Now, this is just the, it's a, a synoptic of what occurred in the book of Revelation. Not so. Then verse 9 is why he was in Patmos. Now, verse 1 and 2 is a synoptic of what happened in the highland of Patmos, not so. So the vision is from Patmos to heaven. It stopped in chapter 3 in Patmos. Chapter 4, it was taken to heaven. So the rest of the vision didn't occur here until it came back from heaven. So what he saw in chapter 12, everything he saw on earth, they were from heaven. Everything he saw that occurred on earth, he saw them in heaven. The Antichrist rising up from the sea, he saw it in heaven. He saw the vision in heaven. The world to come, not so new heaven, new earth, he saw it in heaven. Heaven, when he was taken to heaven, the angel of the Lord 
took him to heaven. Hallelujah. And showed him things. But at the same time, other him, he was exposed to other angels who also showed him things. So they were, there were showings in the showing. Not so. Praise God, sir. I don't know if you are making some spiritual sense. So there are, what's my brother? Showings were in the showing. So the major potter was what happened through the angel. And I know, I said I'm wrong. It's not who proved me wrong, but I know that first angel was different from the rest of all of them. Amen. Praise God. Do, 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 are we here? What did I just say? Was what? Was different. You know, even though he dressed like the rest of the seven. Those, that, those seven angels and the first angel, uh, I perceive and I know, I feel, and I'm convinced that uh, from what I've checked in scriptures, the, uh, if there are more like them, Anyone who is, who, was, who is like that must have been the chief princes that the angel in chapter 10 of Daniel told Daniel of. Those are the chief princes. But uh, the lead angel amongst the chief princes is Michael. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's see. Why did I say it's the first angel is different? Um, having verse, um, I turned to see the voice of him that spake with me. Being turned, I saw seven candle, seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and got about the paps with a golden girdle. And his head air were white, like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as flame of fire. Praise God. I'm not hearing you shout hallelujah. Yeah. Then can we go further? Fifteen. His feet like unto a fine brother, as if they're born in the furnace, and his voice as the sound of many. What he has the same description of uh, uh, of dressing like uh, the ooh, sir, the one in chapter fifteen who had a fine linen garment. Let me see it. Hallelujah! Yeah. After this, after that, I look and behold the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. These are. So it's clear these are the angels of the testimony, not so pastor. In heaven was opened, the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven place clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts guided, hallelujah, guided, with, guarded with golden girdles. Not so? Amen. Can we shout hallelujah? Amen. Breast, the same thing with the angel in chapter 1. Amen. But the only difference here is that they never mention how their head looked like. But for, the, for chapter 1, to describe the head of this angel, shout hallelujah, that tells you they may not have the same head shape. Just mark that. The Bible is very detailed when it comes to accountability. Amen. And there is something different which I want you to also notice. What is it, sir? Huh? What is it? It's feet. Okay. Hallelujah. And oftentimes their feet is always the same. But it is something. Who can tell me? All of them have the same highs. He too has the, the similarity. Gidul is here. They, Gidul is here. But there is something there. Garment. They didn't mention it on as fine linen. This is a garment. Amen. Do you see that? 
it was clothed with a white sir if it a gun fine linen he will mention it have you ever thought of that okay seven even if he saw seven angels the same way dressed when i mean the same dress pattern i'm not talking about the same quality of material gold upon breast am i communicating to you and they are also in the tabernacle of the testimony where the ark is not so so amen praise god i'm not hearing you shout hallelujah so uh open to book of revelation chapter 22 to high jesus i've sent mine not so much so bible can be i jesus have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches hallelujah i jesus are you saying that every one of you i what who jesus have son sent mine m-i-n-e uh there can be two mine i think so or there can be six mine. Hallelujah. When you say mine, that being that king is mine, angel. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the angel that was actually now prophesying. Let's see verse 15 or 14. Give me 14. Blessed are they that do his commandment, that they may have a right of right to the tree of life and may enter into the gates of the city hallelujah for without him mention hallelujah without our dogs all of that all of that 16 i jesus is the angel that was talking amen now this angel happy to let you know he may not is not the chapter one is one of those seven so the angel, praise God, is just recounting that the person that actually showed them is that one. Every revelation you saw came from that other one. I mean, so inside him are the activities of the rest of the angels. Please take time to read it. If you find I'm wrong, let me know how I want. Just show me, I will adjust. I mean it. Amen. But have you seen what I'm saying? Uh, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel. That mine angel was responsible for the, what? Vision in Patmos, vision in heaven. Hallelujah. It was his voice that John had. Now, he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I was in the spirit of the Lord's day, of course, being in the Spirit, it's clear here. John must have experienced an out of the body experience. It was a trance going on here. Reverend Kennedy Hagen, our blessed memory father in the Lord, said, um, Vision. Trans is also called falling over bodily. Hallelujah. That when they be falling over, your body is not engaged in the vision transaction. Unlike I see an open vision, open vision, I can see an open vision, and my senses are not suspended. I can, all the faculties are not suspended. I can see you. And I can see the realm of the spirit. That day, John was still seeing Patmos. But John saw another realm over Patmos or in on Patmos, which, is, which was the realm of the spiritual. Amen. Can we shout hallelujah? I'm not hearing you shout hallelujah. Now, that tells us that John was not, hear me, are you seeing that? 
John was in Patmos. John's spirit was in Patmos, but not just in Patmos. You agree with me? John was spiritually, bodily in the Holy Spirit. I was saying there. John was in the Holy Spirit. So John never went into the spiritual without the Holy Spirit guiding him. So Holy Ghost was in charge of John's trance. As one of the gifts of the Spirit or the gift of the Holy Ghost is the sunning of spirit. You cease into the supernatural realm by the Holy Spirit. You, you go into the supernatural realm or into the spirit realm by the Holy Spirit. So John was in the spirit on the last day. That was vision. They didn't take John bodily from Patmos. His body was lying there, not so. Amen. I shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I've got no proof that they took his body to heaven. The body was lying there. Amen. Hallelujah. And he saw Patmos. He saw, he saw heaven after some time. So being in the spirit is being in the Holy Spirit. Jesus will help us, all of us. Do you understand what I'm saying? What did I just say right now? So when we say the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace, righteousness, peace, and joy, where? I hope you are listening. I hope you are not tired. I know my route, the way I move around, and when I'm journeying, people fall asleep easily, and I understand. It's not, uh, I normally take some dangerous journey that makes people to sleep. But I, I believe God will bless you and some people are ham with tea or some biscuit. Okay, go ahead. Anything you can chew as long as it can keep you awake. Amen. Praise God. Hope you're not eating swear so that you can uh, shout hallelujah. Uh, if you're eating swear, the smell of swear will distract your brother. He said, please, uh, do you have another one there? Hallelujah. Uh, uh, those things are... So is, uh, Daddy, but swear is also a meat offering or something like that. You can it's a sacrifice, and uh, if this is a temple, we are priests, we are, we are free to eat it here. And then we praise God. Praise the Lord. I just want to tell you that you have been moved from Old Testament to the New Testament. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we ready? How many of you are alert? For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, uh, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying with all prayer in the Spirit. That has nothing to do with gifts. It's not the gift in Holy Spirit. It's the kingdom Holy Spirit. When I say walk in the Spirit, I'm not supposed to be walking in the visions. That's not walk in the Spirit. Amen. I, there are two dimensions to understanding and to experience, to being in the spirit. I want everyone to know this. This will help you. This will help you. So people tell us of the encounter. A lot of people love encounter. How the Holy Spirit took me to a great high mountain. You can, you can have many takings like that, but you have not been taken at all. If you have not been taken in righteousness, you've not been taken into peace, you've not been taken into joy, you are just have giftings 
take. But not what's a kingdom. Huh? Kingdom take. Now, um, I want to show you. I want us to say it in the Holy Ghost. Say that to me. So when we say, I was in the Spirit, John was in the Holy Spirit. His person was in the Holy Spirit. Now, you prophets used to be in the Spirit. Holy Ghost speaks prophet. I was taken by my locks and was brought to a valley of dry bones. Something took his lock. When I say lock, the Holy Ghost came upon him, took his lock and jacked him out of his body. Are you listening to me? Holy Ghost can touch your skin, your spirit leaves out of your body. So you go into the spirit. So Old Testament prophet experienced that. Amen. But they did not encounter this one. At, they saw the New Testament but couldn't interpret it. They could prophesy them but they could not interpret it. Hallelujah. So, um, first of all, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. If any of us are in the spirit like this and you came back, I know what John saw. It would take, Pastor, it took John's stature to be shown this kind. I have read account of many people, of some people about book of Revelation. It's nothing to be written home about. They are very carnal, amen. Many had children. Somebody saw the tree of life and he was swimming in the water of river of life. Am I communicating to you? That has nothing to do, no matter how much you swim, it won't change you. So the, some people can say they even ate the tree of life, that it was so sweet. Not so. So uh, even when you, by vision, eat the tree of life, even nothing will happen to you because you are a child to the tree. You don't have power to unlock those trees. Is that a spirit that are familiar with you? Or when you say familiar, Spirits who looks like you, who can play you, they know you, that they can mimic you in the realm of the spirit. Call them so. We have some spirit who knows you very well. They they followed you for years. They follow your ten generation. They know the man, the guys that you look like. In that your family line. So ah, this is. This one, this is a booby. Now you get him again. And uh, who will follow him? They will call the spirit, go and follow him. Another one has come in like manner, but it's not him. But you can, you understand how to deal with, how you dealt with a booby. You can take this one too down. That's, those are familiar spirit operation. A lot of Kerubo and Seraph people use that also. And let me tell you, a familiar spirit can lash on a Pentecostal pastor. Yes. They can, if you break the law of the realm, I hope, uh, I hope I'm not taking your time. Okay. I'm feeling it, that it took me time to get this message out. Shout hallelujah. We give praise to God. I shout hallelujah. So the, the, this, this spirit read people and copy them. The necromancer spirit, necromancy, sasra, witch, witchy, a witch. There is a spirit involved in the operation of somebody who is a witch. In fact, I pity a witch more because the witch is oppressed. A spirit of divination also. It's also they are also in oppression because that thing 
the, the things deal with them. When everybody is gone, are you listening to me? It oppresses them. It's a demon that the person has. Shout hallelujah, divination. And if you, can, you are not careful as a child of God, if you want manifestation too much, <laughs> if somebody wants, is it that thing that is making you so it's a character, it's a faulty character that you have to consistently check. So some of our brethren who are falling into excesses of spirit, that's a problem. At times, they want to overtake their brethren in prophecy. So secretly, something talks to them, shine here. Maybe somebody is giving prophecy. I get him, and then you feel bad. This person is going to give prophecy, and attention is drawn to you. Thank God for you. Your own is going down. No. Raise the bar. So that you will not fall into the hands of spirit. Rest and wait for the spirit to rest on you. You are not doing it and acting it empty. No weight. No something. No weight. No spiritual enablement. You can tell spiritual enablement when, when someone has it. Something is added on you. A weight is put on you. It even touches your flesh. Tell you something is on you. Something is on you. You didn't invite it. Amen. And secretly, if you don't care, you can secretly call an evil spirit to rest on you. I'm not saying you are calling a demon, but you desire it not rightly. I don't know. I hope all I'm saying is not discouraging anyone. Shout hallelujah, praise God. And uh, when you do that, somebody can land in hospital, in psychiatric home. I don't want any of you to go to any psychiatric home. But the spirit realm is real. And I can see it operating in many of you. Come to church, hallelujah. You are not even thinking it. You want to just hear the word. Certainly something hits you. Yeah, you are safe. You are safe. Hallelujah. Under the Holy Spirit, in, under the atmosphere of Jesus, where Jesus is praised, no evil spirit can hit anybody anyhow. If you are not getting out of order. Before evil spirit takes over persons, you must have broken order in the realm of the spirit. You see, all those fruit I, I just discussed with you, the fruit of wanting to be, to have preeminence over the rest of those who have the gates. You see, when every time, or when message is going on, you're always like this. You, you, you come to church to listen, not to give tongues. But God, we need the tongues, so. Allow, we want the Holy Ghost to come, but you see, don't come to church that today I'm going to give terrible tongues. They will know, say, they will know my new realm. I'm operating in. Are you listening to me? Maybe before your tongue is Kalos, Kirsty, Lee, Trenny, Shagli, very lovely, simple, but now you want to give another kick. We are, Iune, Idaya. Kai. Another spirit has taken over. I think we should be gentle yeah. in the realm. Let the Holy Spirit move us and carry you gradually. When Holy Ghost, and when the Holy Spirit is called, okay, you are, you are very good with this wine. Okay, then we can trust you at another level. And then move you up. Make sure you are faithful. Check your heart. You are faithful. You are faithful. Then they increase the dosage, the power. So that the difference in giftings and being in the spirit. Now, you are not going to be in the spirit when you are operating outside the 
revelational gifts. I'm talking about in terms of the gifts of the Spirit. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirit, or word of knowledge. Discerning of spirit is a vision, spirit of vision, open vision, a trance, and spiritual vision. Open vision is, um, I'm not in a trance. My spirit is not out of my body, which most witches do. So the spirit operating in a witch, the spirit of a witch is a trans spirit. If you know Bible, you describe those things. Is an angel attached to a witch, are you getting me? That move her out of her body and then take her to go and attack somebody. Yeah, there are witches. I understand. If the Bible talks about witches, you should believe it. Amen. Amen. And a witch can see also uh, an open vision. Won't, she won't need to move and see her far and can attack through that medium. The spirit will tell her, do this. Now, they are not powerful. They are just agents of evil spirit. Really, you are not fighting witches. You are fighting the spirit disturbing them. So, a lady divinated for Paul. That is not the lady. It's a spirit. And kept saying it every day. And our masters were making money out of it. Am I talking? Until one day, Paul was vexing the spirit. This is not Holy Spirit. Get out of her. What was the spirit wanting to do? I can also dictate men of God. And before you know it, it wants, the spirit has an intention. The divine, he knew that those abilities that the girl was actually manifesting, what was in Paul, has stronger and better and a more real one, was in Paul. So he knew, okay, and they also are servants of the word of God and the mystery of God. Can we shout hallelujah? hallelujah. I hope you're not tired. Let me just know. Do you give me the confidence to carry on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm making sure we will not we'll close early today. I'm, I'm fighting. Honestly, I'm pitying all of you. Somebody might be saying, for daddy not to start early, we're all in trouble today. No, no, no. I want to assure you, don't worry. Amen. Praise God. I will not rush. I won't keep you unnecessarily. Praise God. But I just want to bless you. Just allow me to be a blessing to you. Amen. And don't be in a hurry. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, like I said, when I, I was saying something, something is opening up about gifts of the Spirit. What is it? What did I just say? The last word. Yes. And there was a reason why that Spirit was interjecting. The Spirit was also thinking of the future of the work. So that he would take part in the work after Paul is left. That's the purpose. So that when people, because this was the person that was talking about them, Paul. So it means, so then what happened? Because he knew after Paul is left, has left, what happened? Our operation would be this redundant. For them, Paul to have arrived at that place, the attention that girl, that spirit is gaining through that girl, what will happen to it? We, we actually want, like the spirit that beat seven sorts of skivers, not so. That spirit was suffering from defeat and pain for Paul occupation. Not so, sir. How many years was he in? If he was in Ephesus for some time, for years. Not so. Amen. We only knew that he taught in Tyrannos for two years, but I don't think that was all about Paul in Ephesus. 
Amen. So Paul has disturbed that realm. But, and some boys, seven sons of Uza. Amen. Seven sons of who? The chief of the priest. Hallelujah. So, so, so what were these priests doing in Ephesus? This was not Israel. Sir? All his sons did not stay in Jerusalem. They, I was talking, they must, have just, uh, they must have left. I get it. What were they doing? They were supposed to be in the land of Israel. Shout hallelujah. It means they, must, uh, they are not in their right position. Sir? They, they jack by maybe money. Or <laughs> Shout hallelujah. So they are in diaspora. And sons of one Skiva, a Jew, and a chief of the priests, we did so. He said, and verse 8, 16 says, and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on, what? And overcame them, prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and so I want to so all the pain Paul has caused evil spirit. Because the spirit said, Come, come. So you think I mean look at you. Everybody is casting, they dealt with them, you two you came, you guys came. Then it was with hunger. If they flee, real beating. Am I talking to you? One slap can, are you getting me? Can leap a man. You know, a slap that you're here. <laughs> and you know, Jews are stubborn. For something to overcome them, it must have been a real, real beating experience. Can we shout hallelujah to beat out that Judaizing stubbornness out of them? Praise God. So they, they, they fled. That tells you, look at it. Evil spirit too can initiate things. Evil spirit can initiate things. Evil spirit can... So the, the, the girl that had the spirit of divination, uh, some, you know some people say, okay, they pick spirits. If something is in families, some people pick evil spirits of, is it, there are all kinds of operations, of oppressions, not so. Some of us are spirit of hunger. We have some... So when some people get angry, you'll be afraid. And it's not just heart of anger. There's something rest on the person. They are anointed to be angry. When they display, even a pastor what's a terrible spirit. So all manner of spirit. But you know, people have spirit of character. But also you have spirit of performance. A witch is, are you getting it? That of a witch is a terrible spirit too. Like I said, it is a spirit which induces vision. Through vision, they attack people. That's why you see a lot of pastors who believe in witches and wizards. When they see them, they react vehemently against them. But it's not different from the spirit of divination. Really, that one causes harm. But that other one draws attention. And his harm, the arm of divination, is not easily. F you don't reject it, you welcome it. That one brings you around it. 
And let me tell you, some pastors, if you are not careful, can have it. So familiar spirit also act as spirit of divination also. Praise God. Familiar spirit does that. So, but uh, I just want to show you that to what we have in God's side, Satan too has his own, not so. Um, John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. John was where? In the spirit. Where? On the last day. Now, uh, for somebody to operate wizardry, praise God, and sorcery, and do things, ordinary man can't just start right there suddenly. Now, in families, for example, activity of, um, what is it called, sir? Activity of all these sorcery, witch, wizardry, witches, witchcrafts, and all that uh, started with some people, long age in the family. Uh, some people who by walk encountered spirits and spirits were able to talk with them, and they have what you call covenants with spirits. Are you listening? So the spirit gives them permission and give them a kind of safety anytime they are in that operation. So even in the evil other side, you don't go there without permission. We don't. You don't. You don't watch that. So you can see one young man who can see an evil spirit. And if you see that spirit, if some other person sees the person will be mad. So that operation, I hope I'm talking to you. Can we shout hallelujah? That operation had an initiation effect to it. It's from their ancestors. Amen. Amen. Can we shout hallelujah? It's from where? From their ancestors. Say that after me. It's from their ancestors. So you can see it's a gifting in that family from the devil. And these spirits you are seeing, they are actually fallen angels. I want to get in They're nothing to, they are fallen angels. Fallen angels as Dabaru, the realm of the spirit lied about it so that you won't think they are from God. That their special deities and entities from somewhere is a lie. Some summarized them and put them as angels who are worshiping God who ran away from the Almighty to go and do their own thing. I think is that all settled? What is in a witch as a spirit is a falling local angel. So when somebody say I'm a witch, you are not doing anything, you are, you are not, you are not uh, showing anything too serious. Very little scripture can handle a witch. Yeah. And a witch bed or anything will be crying heavily. Are you listening to me? That's a, just little power, little tiny power. Even before you call Jesus, J.E. can handle it. Are you getting me? Yes. Just a... It's, it, so, don't fear witches. Amen. A friend of mine one time ate new creation realities. I'm in him, as in me. Those things too are powerful. And uh, a, a witch came to press him and he said... I want to see where, where you can kill me. Yeah, try and kill me now. Um, yeah, do it. Try it. He said, he expose the spirit, his own spirit. Yeah, kill it. Let's see whether, which one is more powerful. The thing, Phoebe Chris. What did he do? <laughs> it's okay. 
You know what happens is that they attack you through fear. <laughs> Lord Jesus, in the night, Lord Jesus, guide me. Guide you against what? You are Christ in your spirit. Who are you? Do you know the meaning of Christ? Can we say amen? amen? Shout hallelujah. I think, I think I'm meeting some kind of need. Amen. So don't fear anything called devilation or anything. So, like I said, I can be in the spirit in, in other matters, not at the level of John. Amen. I can be in the spirit. And I, I shouldn't yearn and I shouldn't desire to be in the spirit. I should not desire to be where? In the spirit. What you should desire of is to know God. Desire, are you getting me? Even though desire spiritual gifts is not that kind. That is not that, that's not the way you should desire. Desire spiritual gifts, oh God, we need help. This gift will help us, not for the purpose of showing yourself. So desire the spiritual gift, I get it, and covet earnestly the, uh, uh, I say follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. You, are, you, you should desire spiritual gifts, but on a healthy ground, healthy manner, desire it elderly. Amen. Lord, give me power. When I give me healing spirit, so that by the time I go out, my story has changed. One, one pastor, one woman was among our sons in ministry. So one of them now said, listen, Kai, as I am right now, I, when I move near you, I can easily know things that are wrong with you. Then one of them, one among them shouted, Obe! <laughs> Do you know the meaning of that? Obe means soup. Are you listening? Meaning, what is he saying? <laughs> For commerce. Ah! If it is him. In, in five months. You see Pajero parks in my front of my house. You mean you have this kind of thing? You see how some people pastor see those things. Shout hallelujah. Now, over vocal gifts, prophecy, tongues, tongues, that's a diverse kind of tongues, interpretation of tongue, you don't get into the spirit. Spirit rests upon you. Am I talking to you? Can we shout hallelujah? Gifts of the working of miracle. Not so gifts of faith. Not so, sir. And what again? Gifts of healing. You don't enter the spirit. What happened? It rests upon. Now, it's true. Healing can also occur via discerning of spirit. You can see a vision how to carry out a healing. You enter the, and you can get into trance and travel and see how something occur. Vision operating through word of wisdom. I'm talking to you. Word of knowledge. There can be word of knowledge in the sign of spirit. Word of wisdom in the sign of spirit. So all these gifts intertwines once in a while. But you don't necessarily get into the spirit to operate the miraculous, working of miracle, gift of faith, and what's that? And gifts of healing, no. But you must, to a degree, get into the spirit. Shout hallelujah. You have to be in the spirit to see an open vision. Partially in the spirit to see what's that? A spiritual vision. A spiritual vision is when you close your eyes, you see, I have... That has happened to me. Amen. Once a vision, open vision. Hallelujah. But 
you will be in the spirit more when a trance is taking place. You only goes need to come upon you and yank you out of your body. Then you are going to be in the Holy Ghost. That time that you are operating that game, when somebody is in a vision, Holy Spirit is around you. Holy Spirit is around you. Because you can be in the Spirit and you see demons. Holy Spirit is around you. Holy Ghost is what, sir? Can we shout hallelujah? hallelujah. One of my friends that asked that thing, is, it was normal for him. Almost, they easily see things like that. I think he drank, his blood sugar went too low. He didn't know. Suddenly, he was open to the realm of the spirit, was about to die. The world of the spirit opened to him. That realm of the spirit is, he enters and he can come out. He, so he, immediately he saw it, he now saw demons waiting for him to go. So demons know when you are eating something wrong that will kill you. And they help it, not so? So they will pray you will do that mistake until you get out of your body. Waiting. They know when you are breaking the silver cord. So immediately he came out, he saw, what did he see, my son? He saw demons. He saw demons. They were waiting happy. Then he now saw angels, maybe about two of them, and one said, it's not yet time. It's not yet time for you to go, to come home. It's not yet time. Go back to your body. And he entered the body back. Can we shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Pastor, sir, if someone, that kind of a thing happen and you leave your body and, in the, and heaven saw that you can never grow in the spirit if they leave you on earth, that you're, you are sold out to carnal life, what happens, sir? And they can just say, at least he's true, let's take, we take him home. Am I talking to you? <laughs> That's why you must have an account in God willingness to serve God. So when certain things are called by mistake, what happens? Uh? And if you are not willing to come, what happens? They beat you back. And some of us, when our, I'm not hearing you say amen. amen. When some people, when you don't feed enough, you, when you don't feed enough, when you get out of your body and you see glory, what happens? Uh? Are you getting, maybe you have just finished Christ and you see the kind of angel that come to welcome you. And the angel can tell you, you can go back now. You have some school to say, no, I don't want school. You see, as I am, it's okay. Ah! That is, at this level, I don't want anything more. You can, what will you do? You say, let's, let's quickly go, take me home, take me home, take me home. The troubles here are too many. The way Nigeria is going, I'm not sure. I don't want to be here. I get it. <laughs> not so, Pastor. It does the read Jackpa. <laughs> and some will tell the angel, evil spirit is coming here. Are you getting me? Satan is coming here. Dragon will fall. I don't want to be that type. I don't want to be any man child now. Are you <laughs> Can we shout hallelujah? Are, are you happy for what I'm saying to you? So you can be in the spirit. Hallelujah. You can be in the Holy Ghost, but not in the Holy Ghost. So there are two realms in the Holy Ghost. Uh, there is a deeper and an invisible realm, more, more spiritual. When you say something is spiritual, hallelujah. When you say you walk in the spirit, you are walking in spirit, 
that are inside Holy Spirit. I'm sure you get me. You are walking where? In spirits that are where? Righteousness is a spirit. It's in the Holy Spirit. Then peace is also a spirit where? So when they say walk in the spirit, it means you walk in righteousness. You walk in the way of peace. Then you what, sir? You walk in joy. That is the kingdom of God. So, you can have the encounter of being in a vision and may not be aware. Oh, glory to God. I want everybody to understand me. I don't want to, I don't want to use normal Christian spiritual language. Some people don't, can't phantom that. Now, let me say if you day inside Holy Ghost, <laughs> and where you day for inside Holy Ghost, now one kind of them where, where if he carry you, you go see things. You go just see things. You feel see heaven. You feel see angels. Wow. That one feel amuse, amuse you. You go see your man. You go see, if you see cloud. I get see things, see guys, see heaven. If you see your mama self, we don't die. Am I talking to you? Nah, one can end in that. A day inside Holy Ghost, now nah, vision. We Holy Ghost permit you to experience. But another dimension, day. That one, they call kingdom. That one, no, we say you just stay inside Holy Ghost just like that. Holy Ghost gets spirits where he can get himself, when they carry. If you feel enter each of them, it's not easy to enter inside those spirits where Holy Ghost carry. Righteousness, now spirit it be. Peace, now waiting him be. Joy, now waiting it be. Now in the Holy Ghost be that. So when you be inside righteousness, pray in righteousness. That's praying according to the law where, they, where righteousness be. Praying in the Holy Spirit. You are praying in the Holy Spirit. Let's see Jude. Mommy Lillian, thank you. But you beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying where? Who can tell me where are you praying here? Which realm? This is Jude, the last chapter to Revelation. Who can praying where? In joy. This is praying where? When you do that, then keep yourself in the love of God. Not so, sir. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto where? Say it again. Now, where eternal life day? Eh? What is, like, what is that? What did you say just now? Is <laughs> For where? Yes. How many of you know that eternal life they inside Holy Spirit? So, is, so it means you will enter into eternal gates from everlasting gates. Okay, let's see. <laughs> lift up your head, O ye gates. For where are those doors they? Be ye lifted. Ye everlasting doors that who will come in. Not so. Then verse 8. Can you help me read it? Uh-huh. Then 
then what happened again? Who is asking question? The gates are what? You want to enter me? Who are you? Lift up your head, O oh ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. Then the gate will say, Who is the king of glory? Eh? Because the gate, now spirit. Eh? The gate is what, sir? So it, it, you can't enter. If, if you don't get waiting to answer and back, you see what he said? He said, The king of glory shall come in. He said, The Lord strong, mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Why mighty in battle? You're a mighty warrior. Why mighty in battle? You have just defeated Satan. You have overcome the dragon. Then you are what, my brother? Mighty in battle. I Means there is a battle associated, associated with the blessing. Not so. Eh? He shall. With the blessing. When is given verse 6. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. This is the generation of them that seek the day that seek thy face. Oh, Jacob. Verse 5. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord. And what again? Who is this? This is they who have one, who are seeking his faith. What is the blessing? Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Now, everlasting life, that this blessing is everlasting life. Is not work. It's crown. That's an everlasting life. That's why the person talking to the Lord say, I am a king of one glory to another. I have changed from glory to glory. I now have the crown of glory. He said, okay, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Now, you can see many of the scriptures are working to us. Some of those scriptures, they are not works. Some of those scriptures are scriptures of crowns. So the blessing here is not bless me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Because all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus is everlasting blessing. It's different from the blessing. Oh my God. All spiritual blessing. Hallelujah understanding to assess work that will build me up, meaning I must be everlastingly blessed. So your stature must be everlasting stature. But God is saying, no, it's not enough. Seal your stature. Seal your stature. Wait for the crown. Wait for the crown. Works and crown. Leke, you agree with me that works is simply the trajectory of precept to lines. Not so. Say that after me. Movement of precept to line. Everyone say lines. I don't want to enter language that some people are not hearing. I'm sure pastor must have taught you. Pastor is a careful student. Lines. Lines. So lines are spirit of precept. Spirit. Say it, son. Lines are what, sir? Say it again after me. God bless you. Now you are blessed. <laughs> Say lines. What are lines? Everyone. Shout hallelujah. That's line. Or we call doctrine. Doctrines are spirit. Every wind of doctrine. Every spirit of doctrine. 
So winds carry spirit. Holy Spirit as doctrine. The rushing mighty wind as doctrines. Amen. Amen. If you want to be a secure spirit, are you listening to me? You must have doctrine. Now, you, cannot be, you can't be free from a spirit if you have not removed his doctrine from you. So doctrines, what are doctrines, Pastor? Spirit. Say spirit. Shout it, every one of them. Now, righteousness is a doctrine. Peace is a doctrine. Joy is a doctrine. Or they are spirit. Now, and doctrine should metamorphosize. Not so. From spirit to truth. From truth to life. Don't forget. What is spirit? Spirit means what should turn into what? A desirable expectation. So it's a, it's a token of a being. Spirit is a token of a being. If a being is a spirit being, am I talking to you? It means you have, what is in here? Spirit token. Things of that spirit. If you see Satan, everyone look at me. If you see Satan now, and Satan is talking, who are you? Your name is Auta. Who are you? You see pride. Where is he coming from? He has things. Ah, Kailabata. So he can send it to you. Mommy, upland, pomp and pageantry. Even in church, some people want to. Where did they get it from? Tokens. Tokens. And Satan took everything, anointed them with his things. With his, took housing, I get me, took money, gold, Satan stole gold. And what the was that? And washed them, where? In his spirit. So when anybody wear these things, it should show off. Ah, I just bought a new car. A spirit comes with the car. Do you think, how should you drive when you're wearing A guy who normally like I give the purple eye brother, we change. Oh, for sure, oh, go on, we are Gogu. Telling you, so there is a feeling around things. Those spirits are kingdom properties. And there are many, my brother. There are what, sir? Many. Spirit. I think I'm teaching very easy. Is that, is entry? Yes, yeah. TJ is entering. 
Amen. Shout hallelujah. Is entering, my brother. What's your name, sir? Gabriel. I like that name. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Can we shout hallelujah? <laughs> Spirit. That's all. Uh, now, another thing, Jesus calls spirits leaven. And you know, leaven swells bread. Not so. So, when you see people, when you see spirits, they have things in them. Who gave leaven to Pharisee? Huh? Jesus said, be careful of the leaven of the Pharisee. <laughs> a Pharisee will be passing. It's feeling incomplete. It's going on the street that nobody is greeting him. It's painful that nobody. But Jesus will be passing. People will be begging. That was a turn, a pain. Imagine all the world has gone after him. A Pharisee wants to be the popular what sir? on the streets. Shout hallelujah. Why should you be popular? But Pharisee beg for what sir? Eh? Recognition. That's the word I'm looking for. We'll go to the market and do long salutation just to get an attention. Of what of one so how are you doing? Ah 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 Mama Rebecca for a long time we've not been able to see what of what of Mama Rebecca Ah they are fine <laughs> ah, how are you doing? He's talking okay oh God bless you God bless you I sent something to your house. Were you able to receive it? Yes, we receive it. Thank you. Oh, I want to be sure it got to your house. That's what I'm asking. Okay. Um, many more. I will send some more. Ah, who is that person? Person. What's your name? It's like I've seen you before. Yes, sir. Around the temple. Okay. Say ah. you're okay. The Lord bless you. The Lord, what? Make his face shine on you. He will give me, Lord, be gracious unto thee. He will be praying for a long time. The salutation is what, sir? Then something as it's going, something will fall. He mistakenly, not mistakenly, throw it there, intentionally. <laughs> ah, Baba, don't want. <laughs> He enjoys. You see, that thing is a disease, oh. Yes. It's a spirit. Yes. They, that was the thing they were enjoying when Jesus came around. One boy from Nazareth. Ah, ah. Stole the show. First of all, a rugged boy came from where? From the wilderness. Every mountain shall be filled. <laughs> Where Italy? They say his name is John. We don't need prophets again in Jerusalem. We are on ground. That is his time has passed. So they all went. Immediately John said, Woe unto you, brood of vipers. <laughs> That's 11. Not so, sir. What were they attacking? They saw things in them that made them a viper. Satan took time to produce them. Are we blessed? Say, I'm blessed. Can we say we are blessed, every one of you? So, finally.
finally. Are you, so you don't, so some of you are walking. <laughs> you don't know that heaven can perform a miracle. If anybody believes me, now my wife believes in me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Shout hallelujah. So, so we have spirit. A precept is knowledge. Not so. But spirit. Are, are, are bread of God. Amen. Can we shout hallelujah? And there is a way you must understand them. Bread for the attitude of God. I need to teach this, sir. I must, sir. So, when he says he gave me spirit, he gives me grace. It's the grace and truth are in Jesus, meaning spirit and truth. Truth is a, a spirit that has walked and become truth is an established grace. Not so. So when we say grace and peace, peace is truth. Be multiplied through the knowledge But there is a peace which is more than truth. Are you listening to me? That you don't say, I will give you. <laughs> so all these things are materials for working out things in you. And they can... They also have their names in reward. Peace I live with you. This is, this is not just my peace I give unto you. This is not peace for doctrine. This is not doctrine. This is a stamp. It's a crown in the spirit that Jesus wants you to have. Am I communicating to you? So we should know the name of this spirit. So Jesus was using them, calling them. Now, you can read them and not know them. So he said, peace. What are you saying? What are you talking about? When God says, okay, I have given the son of Eliezer, what have I given to him? The covenant of peace. Giving him the, and he shall have it. Wherefore say, behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace. I gave him, when I give to him, my covenant covenant of peace and he shall have it and his seed after him even the covenant of everlasting priesthood what is he saying there he will get he will forever are you listening to me be a priest in the most holy that his seed shall not what uh, be be void of 
the everlasting priesthood. Everlasting priesthood is actually most holy priesthood. Is not this sense of everlasting is not New Testament everlasting. So because the priesthood really is not really, really everlasting, they took it away. It was taken away. It has a season of its endurance, not so. So when God says, I'm giving you the covenant of everlasting priesthood. So, so you can see, sir, peace is everlasting priesthood here, this peace. But what kind of a peace is this? This is a peace of the kingdom of joy. That you have to see, sorry that I'm opening your mind again. Hope you are not confused. This is a peace where? Of the kingdom of joy. Okay. Grace from him who was? Who is? And he is to come. John to the seventh church in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him, which is. Is it grace, peace of Christ? What peace is this? This is the peace of the kingdom of God. And from the seven spirits that are before his throne. This is a grace, this is a peace. From where, son? From the kingdom of God. Now, it's from him who was, which is, which is, which was, and which is to come. This is a high power, peace, and grace. So, grace and truth, you hear me? Truth is peace means set to grace. It's called peace. I will, I wish when I come back from London, sir, pastor, I will still come and teach. If pastor is teaching, I will still need to teach you again. I want you to have mastery. We are in the re-season of these things. Pastor Ken, in the early 20s, when I first met him, he told him, that God told him that he's going to partake of a kind of ministry called the joy of the Lord. I knew, right there I knew what kind. I knew he was talking about the realm of the manifestation of the sons of God. And I don't know, I told him, I said, that is where you are. So, because of what God told him, is that was already ready in the spirit. While he was in Kano serving. So his eye was not small as in preparation of the heart. So he didn't involve himself too much in some ministry because he was looking for something. God told him, you are going to be ministering the joy of the kingdom. He said he doesn't know the meaning. Hallelujah. God told him a long time ago that you are going to the ministry. And again, this is what God told you about. You are there now. It has been fulfilled in your eyes. Now God has given you now capacity to minister this thing they told you. But it was a long journey. 
You went through rough parts to get there. All kinds of things you went through to be able to make you a minister competent to teach this joy of the kingdom. Of course, joy of the kingdom is everlasting life. It has his own peace. Walk in the grace, in the spirit of it, and then come to its peace. That's right. When you come to peace, you have come to covenant. Meaning when you come to peace, you have not just walk, mommy, you have come to covenant. First of all, grace. Not so? Say amen. Say grace. grace. I want us to shout that, sir. Grace. Just show you, let's say an attitude of grace. What grace mainly does. How many of you are happy to have that? Let's see. Hallelujah. Uh, Acts of Apostle chapter 20. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. It's a word. Which is able to what, sir? So what is grace all about to build me up. It's in the word of it. So you can see, grace is transferred in what, sir? In word. God, so able to build me up and to give you where? An inheritance amongst them that are sanctified. Not so. So, an, sir, an is not the inheritance. So there's an inheritance be before the inheritance. This inheritance is life. God gives it to brethren who are sanctified. So it's not inheritance, it's life, not so. So God gives this inheritance to beings who are sanctified. It means sanctified brethren have inheritance. But they just need to go on to a greater inheritance. In Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, elect according to the foreknowledge of God, of the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit. Those who have undergone sanctification of, of the Spirit. Eh? Unto, they brought them, sanctified them, coming to obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace again unto you. And peace be multiplied. So commending them to two measures again. Shout hallelujah. What measure is there? Two measures. Where? In the next level of the kingdom. Meaning they will need to be built. Not so. Say they will need to be built. Shout hallelujah. Then they will need to be sprinkled on. But that other one, they will need to be built and then they will need to be washed. With water to present as they are building you. Water is also what, my brother? Building is bread. There's a bread called Christ. Give it to people. Give them the water of the bread. Can we shout hallelujah? hallelujah. I'm not hearing you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But this one is the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So what comments to us? Grace. Grace for building. Grace. Grace. Grace for building. Can we shout Hallelujah. And then peace be multiplied. Now, sanctification to 
Are you listening? Through sanctification of the Spirit, verse 4. Now I say obedience and what? And sprinkling of the blood. Sorry. Again, to an inheritance. So, grace and peace. Not so. Say that after me. Grace and peace. Can we shout it every one of us? Be multiplied. Not so. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit. Unto, not so, sir. Obedience and sprinkling of the blood. Unto, not so. Meaning you're supposed to move to obedience and sprinkling of the blood. I hope I'm talking to you. Then to an inheritance. So without sprinkling of the blood, obedience and sprinkling of the blood, there won't be an inheritance. These things must be divided. Shout hallelujah. To an inheritance. Say that after me. Incorruptible. On the fire. That what? Faded not away. God will bless you. I love the split. Sanctification of the spirit. Meaning you have been sanctified. So that was how you became elected. You are an elected one by sanctification of the spirit. But you have not made your election sure. But you came into election through the sanctification of what, sir? Of the spirit. Unto where? Unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood. Kolomo. Blood of Jesus Christ. Kolom. Grace unto you. Not so. And peace be what, sir? Apostles were in ordinary. If you say you are an apostle, you must know what you are writing. So you need to, I hope, did you get what I'm saying to you? I'm watching you. Mm. Sprinkling, not so, say that after me. Or obedience and sprinkling. Obedience and what, my brother? Sprinkling of what, sir? Of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you. I love what I'm doing in church today. I love now in writing division. I would not have not be able to do that yesterday, but I'm love what I'm doing t- today in church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. What I'm doing is I want you to see something here. Hallelujah! I'm repeating this thing again, which may look monotonous, but to those who are open, it's sweet. Unto obedience and what again? And sprinkling. So you have to be sanctified to be qualified to assess sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Not so. Immediately he says there's a grace to you. And what again? So it means you can't participate in sprinkling, obedience and sprinkling without grace. So, sprinkling, obedience and sprinkling, these two things will officiate it. You can't experience obedience without grace. You can't experience the sprinkling of the blood and not come to peace. Thank you so much. And not what, my brother, come to peace. When you have done that, the end result is an inheritance. Not so. Do you get me? What is the end result, sir? What is the inheritance? Incorruptible. Sir, you don't inherit 
if you are not looking like an inheritor, you must be legible enough. If you avoid sprinkling of the blood, you will not inherit. You have an inheritance of the incorruption, undefiled, and that faded not away. So, to be able to inherit, shout hallelujah, you must undergo obedience. And what, ma? Now, what does obedience do to you? Obedience is against disobedience. Obedience is what? Do you love what I'm saying? What is obedience then? Obedience as against disobedience. When obedience is fulfilled, God avenge all disobedience or fulfill obedience. Fulfill obedience. Fulfill obedience. Fulfill what my brother say I will fulfill obedience. What am I supposed to obey, brother? I obey by doing something God commands me to do. Pastor, God commands me to build. When I give you an instruction, build this, this, and you refuse to do it, what have you done? You have disobeyed. Can we shout hallelujah? I want to say something more. Are you ready? Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Now, there is something to disobey. Michael Goye. Hallelujah. Tap somebody beside you. Pack yourself together. Don't pray for me to finish quickly. I won't leave here if it is that. Because I have an ambition for you to what, sir? To carry something home. That's, that's, that's it. I want you to get to a place where you say you're able to communicate this thing like I'm communicating it. If I ask you, communicate, or if I send you, go do something, I can rely that, that you will communicate it well. Shout hallelujah. Those who want to go and we will, go and we will, go and we will. So I'll be repeating what I've been saying. Then when I see that all of you come back, no problem. Amen. Yeah, some of them are the ones drawing me back. Shout hallelujah. Just hold it for me like that. Let me wait a bit. Or oh, there is a message in toilet or something. Then I can continue, Pastor. O obedience as against disobedience. God attach obedience to something. Also. To building and disobedience also to building. Let's see obedience. Open to the book of Ephesians. We're in, I want you to see Bible. In time past, ye walk according to the course of this world. Course of this world. Not so. Then, according to the prince. You know, at the course of this world, 
is not the same as the cause of the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now walketh where? Now, to a very great, to a some great degree, we have walked in the course of this war, and also walk to a degree in the course of Usa, in the course of the children. So somebody is in charge of the walking of the children of disobedience. Who is that man? The prince. Lucifer is not directly in charge of this cause of this war. It's got beings there. You all know them. Rulers. Rulers of the darkness of this war. What is the darkness of this war? Cause of this war. Darkness is that cause. Now, according to the cause of the children of disobedience. So you can see what God is attaching disobedience to. So disobedience is really disobeying God. Not so, sir. Ability to look God on the face or do things God Hate. So Satan is a teacher of how to disobey God. So you can see disobedience really, amen, when you, what? When you do the walkings, when you disobey God, when you do the workings of the prince of the power of the air. So it means a spirit needs to, a spirit is in charge, that spirit, the spirit, this prince of the power of the air is the son of the morning that fell. So he knows exactly what it means to disobey God. Do you agree now with me? What it means to what? So when we say somebody is not disobeying God anymore, it means someone is not doing the bidding of that spirit. So outright clear disobedience is when God is being disobeyed. When you disobey Christ, is the beginning of it. It's a, it's a small disobedience. Small, great disobedience is great debt. Or great or mighty debt. Not so. Do you want to be mighty, disobey God, mighty in Satan, disobey God greatly? I don't know. Am I making some sense? So, uh, what heaven wants to stop is uh, the cause of death, the two cause of death, small death, great death. Shout hallelujah. I give glory to God. So you can see that 
more disobedience is attached to what, sir? To the prince of the power is a training actually. What is it? Satan is training a personnel, is in charge of the person himself. Not so. It's doing that. It's only Satan that can teach a man how to disobey God. So this one opens us to light. I can be doing disobedience, but not God. I can disobey Christ, but not God. So it means you need a bulletin on how to disobey God. But it's in the hand of someone. Who is that son? Prince. How does it cause cease you to disobey God? He will give you gifts and sacrifice. Yes, man. So I preserve what it takes. He will offer it to you. So, Mama, that word temptation is actually an offering. Temptation is a gift. Somebody thinks he's blessing you. Now, the gift is that he has a robot in promises. Now, God spoke to me and said, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that you saw on the tree, Satan didn't preach the, the right to the tree. He only preached the tree. Satan was preaching the fruit. No, you will not die. No, but your eyes will be open. Number one, it didn't say what the open of the eyes will lead to. Even he said that, for God doth not doth know in the day that we eat there or then our eyes. Then is it God? Okay, this is what Satan said. Yea, yea, you shall not surely die. Satan reverse the meaning, telling her you will not die. Because Satan knew they won't fall and die. That will see they will still be existing. Adam was afraid of that death. He doesn't want to die, but when Satan talked to the woman, he said, you will not die, but what will happen is that your eye will be opened. That's what God meant. Okay. Uh, yes, sir, that your eye will be open. Okay, that's what God's saying, that I will know some things. Maybe that's what God is trying to say. He said, you shall not surely die, for God doth know, look at this, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as God's, knowing good and evil. Now, this is, that day, they were as God's. Knowing good and evil. This thing, if you don't have eyes, you won't see it very well. They are what, sir? They became as God. And God said, behold, man has become like one of us. Or as one of us. Let's see it. 
Behold, the man is become as one of us. To know good and evil. Now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat, and he shall live forever. This is what God prevented. This is beautiful. Your eyes need to be open to see something there. Amen. Amen. I want to ask you one question. There is no promise of God called as God is like God. Another promise is as God. And God said, there is no any other God beside me. But you all know that the, what Satan wanted, Adam didn't become it that day. I'm not talking about even dying physically, suffering. The promise, you see that promise has not really come fully. The promise has not come fully because it has process, not so. Open to the book of Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Sorry for taking your time and feeling it seriously. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come. Said they are come, a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed, exalted himself above all that is called God, all that is worshipped, so that he has God seated where. Now, this one is a full-blown. Now, you must oppose. Hmm. The difference between this one and Adam was that Adam can still refuse the effect of the tree. He had eaten. So the tree has not come full circle, full blown. If you are going to check that one, Old Testament put that word God, small letter. This one is big capital letter. Please. There is something there. If Adam accepted it, it will become like this. Even he ate that thing, look at me. Eating it wasn't the finality. It's supposed to follow through all that. What's that? That thing will tell him to do. Ma, Adam had a stature inside him. Pastor, am I communicating, sir? Huh? He, has a, he has life in his soul. His spirit was extinguished, remaining his soul. So, Adam loved God. Some people may not know what I'm saying. He still has regard for God. Now, God has come to him. And he knew how tender God was. When he fled before God, he felt, immediately he ate the fruit. It occurred to him what he has done. 
Adam knew. Adam knew. Immediately after he ate the fruit, that something wrong has gone. Something has gone wrong. And if Adam will reject God, if Adam were evil, he will refuse the clothing, the animal skin. He will leave God's presence like Cain did. You see that they were obeying. They were still in obedience. It means he, he fought the fruit from having his full cause. Adam was like a nursery of the promise. So Adam died, but God didn't allow the death to come to pass. But the person that began to actually do the bidding of the tree started with Cain. Can we shout hallelujah? I'm not hearing you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All of us say amen. amen. Iniquity. Now take me back to where we came from. I said obedience. Not so. Satan now to engineer out disobedience to teach men how to watch sir. When majority of men, look at me, when majority of men disobey, pastor, the air was cleared. What did I say? Meaning they were no longer occupying the air. They were in the air by obedience. Even, Adam, even though the spirit of Adam died, look at me, Adam left Eden. Look at me. But Adam has not left the air. Because of Adam's soul. Amen. Amen. If Adam left the hair, Satan would have been a dragon then. But the hair became, sir, the powers of Adam were not ordinary. So if the devil take him out in the spirit, kill the spirit, is he? Adam in Eden is different. It took, it can only take his spirit, soul, body. I get him. To have a presence in Eden. If his spirit wasn't intact, he would never have presence in Eden. So Eden, Pastor Sir, is a place for all the man, spirit, soul, body, to be what, sir? Complete. So to me, the person that was in Eden, ask me, who was in Eden? Sir? Jesus Christ. When Jesus was walking on earth, he was walking in Eden. How many of you know they came to pick him in Eden? Garden. Why is Jesus going to garden? Oh, hallelujah. It was in the garden, the voice came, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Jesus operated Edenic life. That was he then. Hallelujah. Amen. Son, where did they pluck him out from? Where did he raise, was he raised from the dead back to life? Where? Ma? Huh? Eh? It was in a garden. If it, was, it wasn't in a garden, Mary Magdalene would not have said, I thought it was the gardener. Wow. Oh, no. So, oh, oh, no, no. Are you getting that? Where was he taken from? You discover as long as he was in that garden, 
nobody can locate him. Pastor, he, he normally hides himself in that garden. He withdraw from people, go back to the garden. As long as he was in the garden, he was protected. Shout hallelujah. The Lord is your strength. The Lord is your strength. We call it Garden of Gethsemane. Sir, that was the place where Jesus died. Anytime Jesus is in that garden, no, you can't. It's not an ordinary place. Shout hallelujah. Mm. One person sing that Garden of Gethsemane is a place of prayer. It's not a place of prayer. Jesus prayed on the mountain. So you see where Jesus was caught from is where you can catch living Adam that is alive. Yeah, he was caught in the garden. We give praise to God. And where was Jesus raised up into? It was in the garden. Then the tomb of Joseph and Matthias must have been what God chose. It must have been a tomb that, that has what's a garden. Why garden, my brother? God is saying that the person that died was the last Adam. According to supposed him to be the gardener. Look at me, sir. Eh? So the tomb of Joseph and Matthias was where? Around the garden. Baba, pastor. Do they plant tombs in garden? But this one, God made sure it was not Ari Matthias that owned the tomb. It's my father. Anything Jesus will use, he gave it to you. Anything you are giving to Jesus, they intentionally gave it to you so that Jesus can use it. You are not the owner. So if Jesus use your, what, sir? your donkey, you are not the owner. His father gave it to you. So if Jesus borrow it, tell Jesus, thank you for using what was yours that you gave me to caretake. Praise the Lord. Can we shout hallelujah? Pastor told me that honestly when I was coming, I was coming with the mind of quickly pastor stop, da, we are finished. Just, I'm begging you, have mercy on me, every one of you. Don't be angry with me. I'm going gradually, I'm gradually. I am mindful of all the people. Is anybody gaining today? So, hello? So, when Jesus came, Pastor Yola, what happened, sir? Satan was seeing Jesus in heaven. Oh. Eh? What did he see, sir? He saw it being there. Ha -ha. What, how did this one come here? So you can see, he didn't leave him alone. Hello, Pastor. Do you know that Satan 
Satan didn't know Jesus. Amen. What I mean knowing Jesus, hear me, is not physically. He, didn't, he never saw Jesus in the air until the Holy Ghost left, left his heart so that you can see him. Wow. How did he come here? When Jesus appeared in heaven, then he decided to fall him and kill him, remove him. Because Satan believed that power does not, is not served on a la carte. You must. And what, sir? And what again? That's what, that's Satan's ideology of power. Satan is mean. Everyone say amen. amen. Thank you. So Adam disobeyed. Look at me. Adam disobeyed. He disobeyed. Adam did. Because he's got the stature to actually disobey. He did disobey God. And his spirit died. But his soul never went bad. Meaning he did not continue in it. He did the first instance. Then his eyes opened to continue to disobey. The Bible says, in dying, thou shalt die. Thou shalt surely die. Many of them, in dying, say it, son. I'm not hearing you say. That's your word, sir. Meaning, what is in the tree is that thou shalt surely die. So, the interpretation is in dying. Thou shalt, what? Thou shalt die. Thou shalt die. Because it's surely you will die. You know, this is our father talking. I'm telling you, you will die. You, you will die. And there is a death. Adam died. Then Paul calls it the similitude of Adam's death. Not so? Amen. Amen. Uh, Michael Gwenye, what is the similitude of Adam's death? It's difficult to explain. Can you try? If you say something, and it's not what I want to say, but it will throw light, it will create room. That's what I'm looking for. Please let me give you a microphone. Sorry, oh. You are my baby who sleeps on my chest, so hallelujah, <laughs> Pastor. He is in the bosom of the. <laughs> so if you are my son, I should be free to ask you anything. Okay. So the similitude of Adam's death speaks of the kind of death yes, that sir. Adam died. Yeah. So, um, Adam died by disobedience. Yes. And that disobedience means that um, he, he understood what God wanted him to do. Yeah. But somehow, by choice, he chose another pathway. That's right. And he chose that pathway, not because um, he had a, uh, let me use this word, he, not because he had a grief against God. Yes. He is at lunch, he wants the promise yes. of the tree yes. of the knowledge of good, of good and, and evil. evil. Yes, sir. So it was the promise 
Adam never rebelled against God. But Adam disobeyed God. But you see, you can't have the full-blown promise itself. Except you are ready to be a rebellious soul. Which Adam didn't want to do in the beginning. Pastor, one man said, Adam had eaten the fruit already in the spirit before he came out. So, am I communicating to you? But God just did what's up, help him to bring him someone. Hallelujah. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. <laughs> the man traced that journey of how he hated it. It, that Satan talked with Adam for a long time. And he followed Satan, took him from Eden and showed him things that he would become. But Adam understood. You see, but what Satan refused to show Satan, to so show Adam, was to turn him into an Eater of God. When he ate that food, there was enough power in Adam's soul not to hate God. I just want to eat your fruit. All I'm looking for is the promise. I want to be rich, but I can't kill a baby for ritual. Ah, look at this one. Look at this one. You want to be rich and you don't want to kill? I want to believe, but I can't kill. You didn't tell me. Ah, okay, if I tell you, you won't put your hands into it. This is the way. That was what happened. So he thought, if I... Now, Adam never saw that area. That one I'm too sure that... Amen, sir. He hid it. He hid that area. If Adam knew that he would hate God, he won't put forth his hand. So... It, it brought the temptation on the pre premises of what Adam can become. And if you check it, it was a friendly introduction. It wasn't violently suggested that after some time, you see, Satan didn't go around and said, God, you trust in God? The way Satan spoke to angels, he didn't speak to Adam that way. Satan filled the angels with rage. Adam didn't have rage. Can we say amen? Adam had what's still okay. But Adam's son gained rage. The watch can destroy. You don't know the pain in Adam. Seeing his own son following the devil. Everybody, are you blessed by what I'm doing tonight? Yes, How many of you say, Reverend, we like you, we still like you, we like you, we like you, we like you. I'm looking at some people there. Can I continue? Yes, I am very slow today, not so. I'm sure it's for some people. God wants to get some people. And I thank God. I'm, I like when I'm doing a job for all. I like to. I don't want to talk and some people say, I will get you. And some, mm -mm. I want everybody. And I'm tracing the path. Shout Hallelujah. So, Mike, Adam's sin is this. Adam's death passed upon all men. Not all men seen the similitude of Adam's transgression. They didn't do it. So, Adam had a transgression that brought sin, that brought Death. Not so, sir. 
He said, who was the figure of him to come? Hello, sir. But some people took, stood on Adam's transgression and pushed it to the zenith. It was, that is not Adam's transgression. They exploited death. And they were dying. So when God said to him, Surely in dying thou shalt surely die. It was the death of the soul. What God was saying to him is, I don't bring this thing that will completely aspire you. That this tree has power to bring you to the end of death. But that day, the death started. It began in the spirit for him to enter dying. But one thing Adam did not enter was dying. He never entered dying. But Cain, pastor, enter dying. And Cain died. Then men began to die in dying. They were dying. Hallelujah. So to get to death, you have to be dying. So but you die, then to be dying. So Adam didn't die the way some did die later. Not so. Because Adam's will to remain with God, even though he has experienced extinguishing of life in his spirit, but his soul was still intact. And Satan went after his child to kill that child. He never left him. Thank you. So there was a disobedience. Not so. Later on, disobedience was fulfilled. Sir, so, man died. I will not explain to you death. Disobedience, disobedience, disobedience. Men began to die until they die. Now when you get to die, you die. There is dying and there is death. Now when you now get to death, amen, praise God, there is death in death. So when all men have seen and have fallen short of the glory of God, it, are you getting me? No, not is wrong. No one is righteous. It came to pass. People were no longer dying. People were dead. Amen. Is that clear? So you can never call Abraham dead is not the dead Abraham was living many Old Testament did not get to death they were dying and God what, what did God do he called them back and made them living Cain has not started dying. 
He opened it to be dying. So dying, son, is disobedience. Amen, sir. What did I say, sir? So what do we inherit, human being, in this lifetime, these last days? Can you tell me what we inherited? Death. So death reign. Death reign by how? By men dying. So death was causing men to reign, to die, to die, to die, to die. And how did men die? Commitment to death, to sin. Men, be, they were committing death. They were committed to death. Thank you, Jesus. And they were dying. These are Pastor Kenza, now this is mystery of aspiration of woman race. I've, I've never read this in any book. And this is the first time I'm teaching it. I've never taught it before. So heaven is exposing what happened to mankind here in church. Man was dying. Me, I love this teaching. I love this teaching. What will happen to mankind? They were dying. How? Satan take lifetime from men. He sold to them lifetime of death so that man can do what, sir? Can die. Hello, sir. If man hadn't died, you can't teach, you, there's no need to teach men Christ. So God never started with Abraham like he started with them in Exodus. He started with Abraham with the covenant of the Almighty. They were, they had death in some essence, but you see, they've not died to the degree where, are you listening to me? God will get them to where they need to be taken away from the dead because Christ is a resurrection from the dead. Son of God, teaching of the Son of God is a resurrection of the dead, which is dying. You see where that soul died until he entered death. Not so. Praise God. And death and that death experience shout hallelujah. Say that after me. Say it again. All of us must shout that I beg you. Is what it up the stone in man. The stone of the flesh. Satan got man back to the dust. This is from the dust you were taken and from the dust shall thou return. Man came to dust. You see, people like Job, Satan had trouble with them because they were not in the soil. They were not flesh. So Satan was announcing to God, doors to doors, ashes to ashes, telling him, telling God, I'm going to get men there. A time came, sir. Everybody say, hey, amen. Everybody say, a time came. time came. Satan succeeded at the time of Jesus. That was when John the Baptist came. All flesh shall see the glory of God. Abraham was not flesh. John the Baptist announcing it was not flesh. But John was talking to flesh, Pastor.
Now, there can never be death if Satan did not teach you how to exchange your life and give you something else. Now, what is in Satan as a gift is death. But Satan doesn't package it as death. He packages it as an opportunity of life in the flesh. So people sold their gifts, exchanged it to the devil. With the devil, Satan took their life. What did he do to them? He exchanged it with death. So men kept dying until men expired dying. And man, bah, it dropped. So Jesus has to go to the lowest part of the earth to be raised from where? From grave. Yes. Now, that was the time called the fullness of time. Fullness of time was when man will be in death, but there is still a room for, for recovering man. God has that soul right to take man back from the dead. There, man does not know God. Man is not looking for God. Man is not showing up for God. There, nothing, nothing. Uh, there was none righteous, not one. There is none that understands it. There is none that seeketh after God. But you cannot tell me that shed in us did not call. Was he not seeking after God? What were they doing? They were calling Musa the name of the Lord. Here, if we generalize that is everyone. Look at that verse. Sir. Then look at Genesis. And to say to him was born a son. And he called his name Enos. Then men began to call Kai. All men began to seek. Are you getting? Man began to invite, inquire of the name of the Lord. Bring man, bring the Lord back. Because Adam was still around. Everybody say amen. amen. Adam was still around. Amen. Amen. And Adam wasn't letting the generation of man go. So Adam and Eve will have held set. Don't go the way of Cain. He killed your brother. You used to have a senior brother that your most senior elders killed. Don't go after his life. And set later on gave back to a nurse. Immediately you do that, then men began to what, sir? I want us to say that after me. Then men. So the day they gave back to a nurse is not two children of other than one earth. Am I coming? A nurse as uncle. Don't you believe that? The junior brother upset, the senior brothers upset, or junior brothers upset. Can you shout on? Because between set, are you listening to me? And a noise of a hundred years, are you listening to me? So now there are brothers and Adam gave birth to sons and daughters. Hmm. They might be up to four or five, they may be up to six, they might be up to seven. Everybody shout hallelujah that they must have given birth to. Can we shout hallelujah? Is it what really matters is a firstborn son? I mean, you gave birth to firstborn son. You don't wait for every hundred years you are giving birth. No. They didn't tell us that until they got to 800. So it means they must have been, they must have been giving birth to children. Shout hallelujah. 
Can we say amen? amen. No, there is a, an angel here. He's systematically teaching us Genesis. They are teaching us the Bible. They want us to see scripture. Can we shout hallelujah? For, you know, he said, I am bringing you light. He sent me to give you light. So they are giving us light to decode certain meaning that are cloudy to our minds. Can we shout hallelujah? All of you shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can we say amen? amen? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. A season of disobedience, I disobedience was Genesis chapter 6. That was not ordinary, Pastor. That was disobedience. Hello? Many men died. Now, Satan got to men. I, wish to, I need to say these things. It's necessary. In Genesis chapter 6, death varies. Now, those sons of God were dying. They've not finished dying. Noah wasn't dying. Noah was not disobeying. What who is God? This thing called the, the realm of the spirit, teaching the spirit and following the spirit is too real. How do I mean? They called that season disobedience. First Peter chapter 3, towards the last verse. Verse, yeah. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometimes were disobedient. Tell me what happened there. They were dying. Not so. So you can see. Now, it was not only Noah, God saved. God saved the sons of God. This, who were they? They were aware. In this obedient, sir, pastor. Is it, which sometimes were disobedient. When once this long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing. Who are these spirits? Are they angels? Okay, will Jesus preach to fallen angels? If you're a fallen angel, my brother, and you disobey God, that's your hand. They don't preach to you. You're not, you not a man. You're not supposed to. Why? Ask me why. And because the world we are in is angelic. They, listen to me. This is their world. We are just imposed, we are just introduced into their world. That's not our world. So an angel has information of the present modern man. They know what death is. You don't know. It's only scripture that can teach you death. So they were in disobedience. So the people who were in disobedience was not, look at me, listen to me. Sir, they were not the rest of men. They were not sons of God. All the rest of men were not just disobedient. Those ones are become disobedient themselves. Pastor, they have broken their building completely. Yeah, am I talking to you? Then God now told Abraham, Noah, build. Build to Noah. What is, was Abba Adam building? Pastor, that, that man. No, 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 build back the man. It's called the Ark of Salvation. Save the building. If the thing was so big, did God build it for three people? Eight persons? 
he built it for more than eight percent. Of course, he didn't build it for the rest of the world because they can't stay there, all of them. He expected more to come in. Those sons of God that came into the daughters of men were God's target. He didn't want them dying. So if God said, okay, if they can summon up and to repent, God knew their wife won't follow them. Because their wife were so powerful that they dragged them. Not so. These women, so you might say they are spiritual only, that they are allegory. They are real ladies. Pastor, they marry them. They settle with them. There was something the women wanted. Pastor, when you are a person on the path to sonship, they will not allow you to marry some women. Honestly, God will fight you. It's not all ladies you can marry. Some girls will not allow you to follow God. Because of a path of redemption. And what God is wanting to redeem. Why do they call you son of God? Men that God does not want them to die. Men God wants to recover. Those are sons of God. So these sons of God were dying. They were disobedient. But what of the rest of men? They were dead. They have corrupted the ways of God. There's no use for them to be on earth. Take out the earth. Take out the earth. Cleanse it. Cleanse it. <sighs> Hallelujah. 2,000 years later, not so. Jesus saw them and preached to them. Not so my pastor. He preached unto them. They were disobedient. What was their disobedience, every one of you? God said they were disobedient. What of the rest of the world? Were they not disobedient? No, they were not. Yes, sir. The reason why God was not cleansing the wall was because they were there. Now, if you measure the ark, then you will measure the amount of sons that became, that disobeyed. Why were they disobeying? They broke their building. Yeah, they were breaking their stature. And that was touching to God. So, God quickly killed their body so that their spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord. So, Jesus went to hell back, found them, preached to them. Moses, um, Pastor Yola, what kind of message would Jesus preach to them? Who, who have who, who know what to say it? Let's preach together. Let's say. Hallelujah. Thank of all of you are anointed by the Lord, our Lord Jesus. Okay. Everybody, you still like me. Yeah. If you like me, you like Jesus. That's all. I'm happy you love Jesus. Yeah. Um, two, Kai, two things this about. teaching is a masterpiece. Two, two, La Makata. Jesus, thank you for giving us this teaching. Go ahead, sir. Okay, two things. I feel that um, yes, sir. these sons of God, they will, they, 
the God will have promised them Jesus. Maybe waiting for him, coming, we read them and they start dropping. Okay. Those are my proposition. And secondly, the appearance of Jesus alone as the ideal man that had walked the earth and God was able to build. Seeing Jesus alone is enough preaching. That's the answer. What did they see? They saw the building. That's all. Thank you so much. You must have said that one inclusive, but it's the building. Why did they build Ark? To save them. The way God, God, sir, God, when I read Bible, I see spiritual intelligence in the Lord God Almighty. And the intelligence of God is so sweet. His wisdom are on parallel. I have moved to the second phase, finally. It's been openly rejected. You must develop muscle to do that. Now, Every debt people have, say it after me. Shout it, every one of you. We must say that after me. Is a destruction of building life God gave to mankind. Not so, ma'am. As against the debt they are inheriting. So, when we say debt, it's departure from God. So there are things that bring the connection of life that makes so, not so, to get connected to God. It is a frame inside that God sees and that Satan gradually erodes, bring into ruin. It is this construction ma, that makes my body to be decaying, me growing old. Yes. Something used to hold us firm, but now we are no longer firm. We have infirmity. Yes. So what can make me gain my firmness is obedience. Thank you so much. Pastor, God bless you. My prayer, my heart prays for you that you will see Jesus and he will, he will appreciate you. Many years when we'll see Jesus together, I want Jesus to, my heart is that you say he has K, he has done well. That's all. That's all, my do You have done well. I want, that's the prayer I want for everyone. I mean, people may not see it all. I mean, there's a lot in that prayer. But I and Reverend Henley will stand before Jesus and they will say, you have done well. Yeah. Sir, pray for me that way. I'm not... That prayer, it matters to me. That's my prayer. That's my prayer. I'm afraid. I'm always afraid of that day. How many of you are afraid of that day? <laughs> you know, if you see, hello, sir, if you see Jesus physically, I'm begging him, don't look, don't come, don't show me yourself. I'm always talking to him, don't show me yourself. At times I'll be studying, I'll sense some things. Once I say, take it away. Take it away. Don't show me yourself. Some of you are blow to ask him, but me, 
just correct me through the Holy Ghost. Because I know you are too great. Them Hagen, they were highly ordained to see him. The first time Hagen saw him, just tiptoeing, tap, top, tap, toe. I think it's Texas a pal, so. In an hotel, as he entered, he said, all my hair stood. Like one animal, like that, my wife sent to me, that was a frightening. <laughs> one animal like that. I, I say, is this animal? Is this? I, I thought it's a demon. It's an animal. Fear. <laughs> Your hair stood. Egg is in my hair. And the hands, they stood. <laughs> Hallelujah. Imagine something waiting for you at the uh, tell you, how are you doing? Uh, <laughs> you know, to recover from that thing. Amen. Say amen. amen. So he said, Jesus appeared to me, appeared to me. It was, I mean, if you know one man called J.C. Duplantis, he used to complain, appear to me, Lord, appear white. He was angry, fighting. Then one day he was sleeping. Jesus said, come and turn around. <laughs> he said, well, he said, vibration. Bam. He said, you've been asking to see me. You want to see me? Here I am. I'm, oh, yeah, turn around and, and look at me. <laughs> he said, he said he was waking his wife. The wife was stone. What's that? <laughs> Wake up! <laughs> I am God. You've been asking to see me. I'm here right now. <laughs> he said, Please, I beg you. The only person that can discipline Jesse is God. That's the only person that can handle him. Pastor, he fear nobody but God. That man is afraid of nobody. Jesse, <laughs> Jesse the blood, he said he's afraid of nobody. The day he got born again, Pastor, his mother was like him. I think he picked that character from the parents, both of them. They told the mother he has accident. He said, the mother said, I hope he's okay. Now, is he born again or has he met Jesus or something like that? <laughs> Your son just had an accident. She's asking. She wasn't asking maybe, was he able to maybe come, eh? Prayer or something. Was he able to do something that will make him get born again? If not, <laughs> she didn't pity him because he was a pure rascal. He used to paint his face. You know those rock artists? That's how you normally play guitar. Jack it down. His face like <laughs> metal rock until Jesus changed him. Amen. So if you want to see God, you can pray. And the day he comes around and says, Turn. Amen. So, uh, what did I say last before Jason? Huh? I said something. Huh? Obedience. So, you can see disobedience ate up our family. There is something that your flesh rests on. Yeah. There is something that is holding your flesh. Not so my pastor. Somebody has what, sir? At eating everything up. That is your actual body. That is your actual body. So you can see this skin falling into disease easily. is because of that inner one. That has been. If disobedience ate it up. Immediately, man went further from chapter 3 to chapter 6, was close to 2,000 years. So it took 2,000 years for Satan to get there. And God said, They are age. 
he has become carcass. It shall be 120. 120 minus nearly 1,120. They took about 800 and something away from man's life. Yes. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet is days. Kai. Do you know God didn't cause him? His days shall be what? An hundred. But at Exodus, their days became 80. By strength, Abraham, out of obedience to God, he got to 180. To pass 120 was in ordinary. So you can see that Genesis was 120. 100, 120. Then Abraham, at that 100, that's when he said they began to give birth to children. Because God led them against that collapse of building. Now, I want you to see Exodus men, 80, David, 60. By the time he got to Jesus Christ, I listened. Pastor, I don't know. It was mercy that sustained men. We say, to even be having old men on earth. Can we shout hallelujah? Now, uh, we are keeping ourselves by exercise, abstinence from food, that one, that one. You, are you getting me? A guy would say, hey, you are looking so young and people will be praising themselves. Not knowing that uh, you are only what, uh, you are being, are you getting me? Uh, what I did was this. <laughs> you only, t what are you doing? You just... What you just did was that you what? You only put something to make that flesh stay, but it doesn't have life. Jesus, I beg you, I really beg you, put these things in us. Jesus has power. He knows this terrain. He can put things in you. And these are mercy givings. For example, your flesh, your body, to pass the sojourning of what was given to you, what your parents and my parents handed over to me was carcass. Our body, I get in me, has gained some things that are not God's. Amen. I'm not hearing you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So that's why this message is not an ordinary message. I'm not lying to you. Hallelujah. It's recovery. This is the restitution of all things. Restitution of all things begin with its gift of light. Then obeying it. Not so, sir. Shout hallelujah. Now, and then later on, obeying it by doing it, you come into obedience and when you have done obedience, something occurs. Obedience is the first response of life everlasting. Not so. Then blood or sacrifice. Hmm. All of these are what, sir? Obediences. So an inheritance incorruptible, undefined, that faded not away, is not going to be put in your hand. It's going to come into your being. The same place Satan has occupied, so you can see why Satan has fought the gospel. A whole lot of people claim things without their purification. There's one that's called purification. You can't... Priest... Are in priest until they are purified. Now, they don't even put things in them. They cleanse the hold to now in, introduce in them the new. Shout hallelujah. Then they anoint them. They anoint their new bodies. Torah cleansing. And then sprinkling. Then anointing. 
That's how you prepare a body. You prepare persons so that they can do that. So all these things are meaning in the realm of the spirit. For example, like I said, what did I say? I said obedience must be fulfilled. Obedience must be fulfilled for God to avenge disobedience. Obedience must what, sir? Now, sir, in Abraham's life, God did some avenging. He did some avenging. Not so. So some of us, some things that have taken over our body by vengeance, God needs to avenge them. So obedience to God is vengeance of God. It's invitation of God's vengeance into our body. The lesser light of God comes and eradicates those things that kill our body. That tells, that's why it tells, it's clear to you all, this teaching, this teaching I'm teaching will become common. This thing I'm teaching. You don't believe what I'm saying? This is the secret to a living body. This thing I'm teaching today will become common. And people will come and say, how do you do it? These are one of the lights that Zion will shine. Wondering what is the secret? Then they will say, come and teach us of your way. Come and teach us of your law. Am I communicating to you? Yes. Because law shall come forth out of Zion. It is out for out of Zion shall go for the law. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Two things. The law. Word of the Lord from Jerusalem. What is the law? What is the word? What is the word? The word is for the building. The law. Is for sacrifice, for spirit, for the flow of the blood, for the testimony. Those two things. The word of the Lord and the law of the law. Can we shout hallelujah? How? Oh, you can't get those two things except in this way. For to the house of God of our Jacob, he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. Amen. He will teach us of what, my brother? What are his ways, my brother? His ways, the first way. Grace, truth, then life. They are all ways. What you are being equipped with are secret. I lie not before my God. If they are secrets of God. They are the secret things of God to teach Way. It's not easy to teach way. You can teach letter. You can teach precept, but not way. To teach way. Because righteousness is a way. Hallelujah. Peace is way. A particular way. And what again, my son? Walk, we will. So the secret of life is for you to walk in his path. Amen. I'm not sure it's hearing you say amen. amen. I want us to say amen. amen. All of us must say amen. amen. Now there are three that bear witness on earth. What are they? Water, the blood. And the spirit. Water, say it after me. And what again? And what again? I want us to shout it again. Say it again. And what again? And what again? It's a tree that bear witness in earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. These three agree in one. Then there is another one, not so, sir, that bear what, my brother, record where in heaven. Those ones are promise. 
here they are what? Water talks about grace, not so. Again, blood talks about truth, covenant. Spirit is life. This spirit is what, my brother? Can, can we shout hallelujah? I'm not hearing you say amen. amen. So if you don't walk by the blood, by water, by the blood, and then spirit. Can we shout hallelujah? hallelujah? I'm not hearing you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Now, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. What I hear is a spirit. Hmm. Water is a spirit. You know, I started with spirit giveth life. I'm reteaching it again. Hear me. What I hear is spirit. It's not physical water. It's to is the spirit that you start with. There is a spirit that gets to blood. I hope I'm talking to you. And when it comes to blood, so this, the water is the body. That's the spirit of the body. Oh my God. Water of the word. Hallelujah. The spirit of the body. What of the blood? The spirit of the covenant. What of spirit? That is life. Then the, 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 the one on top is the crowning of the fulfillment of the three. I hope I'm talking to you. I'm not hearing you say amen. amen. So all the three, say it son, are necessary. But if that witness is not there in you, when you have not done that, those witnesses, the one on top, will not be conferred on you. And Jesus came by water, not just by water only. Not so, sir. Shout hallelujah. Amen. But Jesus came also by water and the blood and the spirit bear witness. There are three. This is he that came by water. And blood, even Jesus Christ, not only by water only, but by water and blood. And this is and it and it is the spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. It's like the thing is confusing, but it's very clear. Can we shout hallelujah? Amen. I'm not hearing you say amen. I'm not hearing you say amen. amen. I'm not hearing you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Is God not truth? And is God not life? It's life. So when they say the spirit is truth, he's talking about the spirit. Is what, sir? Is God. Is, are you getting me? The spirit is real. Am I talking to you? The spirit is on life's side. Are you listening to me? I, I don't know, maybe I'm talking to you, but water is the body, is for the work of the body. Water builds. Blood made covenant. The life of the body is the blood. Am I communicating to you? Shout hallelujah, that you might worship by the washing of the water, by the blood. So there is also a life water, a water of everlasting life. So when they say, you are using everlasting life. Now, you know, they talk say, unto blood of the sprinkling, but you won't get to blood. There is an obedience by water. Not so, my pastor. There is what, my brother? Obedience by water. And there is what, sir? A sacrifice to be made by blood. But somebody bears witness, the Spirit. Meaning, hallelujah. The Spirit is a proof. That this life is true. Can we shout hallelujah? hallelujah. I'm not hearing you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You must do this on earth. To get back your body. Look at five is almost knocking. My God help me. You must do, what did I just say my brother? To get what my brother? Now, uh, the 
purpose of the new test, new, oh, new, the table. The purpose of the table is your body, recovering your body back. You must eat your body back. Eat your body. Eat your body. When you are eating the body, obedience is eating your flesh. Obedience is eating your body that was stolen from you. Eat it back. Obedience is receiving the building back. The frame that your body should rest on. But Satan has given us his own body which transfer, translate, amen, into death to our physical body. Shout hallelujah. And that is what is called graveyard. That's grave. That's the grave. Amen. That is the grave. Oh, death, where is your, oh, grave, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? As we obey light of everlasting life, can we shout hallelujah? I'm not hearing you say that. As we want, sir. What happens to us? We build back our body. And as we go, sacrifice means journey. Journey to do the kill. Journey. Live your body. It's a, it's a system of obedience that demands moving from one place to another. Which, which shows that the, the body is a compliant to God's injunction. You have built the body. It's a lot of obedience to build. But another thing to make the body go and sacrifice. Go and sacrifice. To sacrifice is to make covenant. Is it gathered my sins to me? Those who by sacrifice have made covenant with me. So season of sacrifice is the season of covenant making. Covenant. Now, you can have the word and you don't have covenant. You can have the word and what, sir? But God doesn't, doesn't want us to just have, have the word. He wants us to go ahead and what, sir? And make covenant. Shout hallelujah. And that is why there is no entrance into the holy of holies except the body is washed with pure water. What does that mean, sir? What does that mean? Meaning build your body. Say it, my son. Build your body. Am I talking to you? And then what happened? And your heart sprinkled from an evil conscience. So are you seeing that, sir? So it means there is a programming. What is the evil conscience, every one of you? It's a programming of the former blood of Satan. Not so, sir. But when, as you are coming here, there is a sprinkling taking place. There is a washing taking place. There is a sprinkling taking place. There is a washing taking place. There is an obedience that you are receiving instruction. When you have water, it's an instruction. That same water is the tool that will help you build your body. Can we shout hallelujah? I'm not hearing you say Amen. Father, we thank you. Everybody say amen. amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, the season of the blood is the season of the testimony. Uh, I want to just talk a little bit about testimony itself. Um, <clears throat> so that you have a covenant, testament, covenant, testimony, testimony. Testimony covenant, testimony covenant. Now they call it Ark of the Testimony, Ark of the Covenant. It's the same thing. It means that that testimony is a covenant. Are you getting me? Can we shout hallelujah? I'm not hearing you say amen. amen. Say it after me. Ark of what, sir? 
So a testimony that is still a law is not yet a covenant. Not so. Say it, son. So I can give you the law, which is my spirit. Hmm. But it has not yet become your covenant. But you now need to write the covenant where? In your heart. Amen. I will, for this cause, I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds and in their hearts, write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Ten. I will put my laws into their heart and then write it in their minds. Not so. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. This is wisdom. So there is a place. If I want to write in your heart, where do I put the laws? I will put it where? In your mind. Then I will write it. So if I want to put it in your mind, I will put it in your heart and then write it where? In your mind. So I can give you the law and it may not be written. So there is a way a testimony should be done in the mind and there is a way it should be done in the heart. Do you agree with me? I have waited for it, but I teach you with a little lie that I used to have. But now it's, it's clear to me that uh, uh, you put it somewhere so that you can, it's like you drop ink somewhere and then you begin to take out of the ink to actually introduce it by writing somewhere else. You don't drop it on the same place. Because if you put ink on the same place you want to put the writing, you have spoiled the writing. Shout hallelujah. So when God says, I put ink, I put spirit in your mind. Then take it, I will write it where? In your heart. So it, I supposedly believe that it happens to heart first. Put in the mind first. Write it in the heart, then put it in the heart, then write it in the mind. Because the hand is that you should be minded. Now, he that is spiritually, what's that? But here, he that is divinely minded. This person is a spirit, not so. Can we shout hallelujah? Immediately this covenant is made. This man still need to wait. He has done the will of God. He's not yet finished. He's not yet finished. Then the next time, next one, I'll say, I will be to them a God. This is a promise. This is a promise. Then he will, he has never been a God to them. You get me? Even though he's leading you, but he's not yet a God. So there is something about being a God that he is to you. This is a crown. Promise here. Crown. That is, are you getting me? Crowning the effort. Crowning the work. And they shall be to me a people. So we can see, sir, I can have body of a covenant. But I don't have promise body. Yes. I can have spirit body. I don't have a covenanted body. I can have, I need to wait for his promises. 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 Chapter 8, verse 5. 
I'm about to finish this four four twenty. Is it four forty nine? Amen. Four fifty one. How many of you are blessed? I, I discovered now you are no longer fighting. You have actually stayed with me. You have fought your wars. You are now enjoying it. Uh, I discovered that when I can see the flow. We've broken through. Not so, sir. The prophet said everybody should come and dig, dig, dig. Everybody is digging. That time you are sleeping, you are digging. 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 Amen. Thank you. I want to say congratulations. You have dug your well. <laughs> but now at he obtained a more excellent ministry this is the lamb by how much he also he is the mediator of a better covenant establish where so that tells you and I that from obedience to be his house then 7 chapter 7 are you listening to me you come into covenant. Eight. Are you listening to me? Idea of promise is beginning to come to you. Promise. I want to be your God. So that you can water, you can be my people. Like Pastor was saying yesterday, it, it can only take fathers to do to what sir? To do sacrifice. But the building is the capacity to take the animal and kill it. If Abraham wasn't built, he wouldn't take Isaac. Let me, I want to tell you, the test is not whether Abraham can kill his own son. Mm -mm. I want to show you. There was a king in the book of Judges who took his son when Israel was overcoming them, put him on the wall and killed him for their God. That man, did he achieve anything? Because that was not God's way. There is something God was looking for. Who, where? In Abraham. And the devil, Satan, was there to break Satan. Look at me. You want to break Satan? You break Satan during covenant. You break him. Covenant and promises. Satan wants you. If Satan fight, he will fight so that promises won't rest on you. How? Covenant attack directly promises of Satan in our body. Getting hold is a promise. It's not covenant. It's wages. Getting, getting hold is what, my brother? So you see the journey. It's not you. You can't take scripture. Lord, I will not get hold in Jesus' name. I will not get hold in Jesus' name. No, 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 no. And go and announce obedience. Get obedience. Are you getting me? Obedience. Build, be built. Then they will now tell you, okay, you can now make sacrifice to that effect. Pastor, someone like Enoch. They receive, they obtain promises. So he didn't see that. What Elijah was running into, he ran into promise. Moses obtained promise. Only that they are not perfect because of all. They didn't obtain promise. Some people receive not their dead back because of a better promise, which is better resurrection. I hope I'm talking to you. I hope I'm communicating to you. They were obtaining promises. Men wrought and obtained promises. They were there. It's there in that 11, Mark in uh, Hebrew 11. Hallelujah. Amen. You can bring it. Show me. 
where men uh -huh, who through faith subdue kingdom, wrought righteousness, up <laughs> subdue kingdom, not so wrought righteousness. What did they do? Obtain promises. Stop the mouth of lions. Quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of sword. Out of weakness we are made strong. Was valiant in fight. Turn flight the enemy of aliens. It, what, these are not just faith alone. What through faith they obtain. Now you can't kill 800 men by yourself if promise is not attached. So these people are enjoying, they enjoyed promises. One of our fathers said, if I have, is it, I will not die, I will be translated if I have the fate of Enoch. So Enoch did not go to heaven by faith. He went through faith. He went through faith. So it was not faith that was the problem. He had, before his translation... What did he have, sir? What is that testimony? Covenant. So I can have faith and not have covenant. Amen. He has this covenant that what? That he pleased God. And therefore, what happened, sir? He was translated. He pleased God. He pleased God. I say, what did he do, sir? He pleased God. God. Shout it again. Everyone say that after me. So we are not going to have everlasting life as the first life. Not so. Can you tell me what is the first life God gives to us as everlasting life? The way. Then the truth. Pastor, the way is the grace. Then the truth. So there are three lives there. Anytime you see spirit, it's life. Life that is not full. When you see a grace, when you see the grace of life, I can have grace of life. I don't have the life. The grace will empower me to get the grace. He said, you are an heir to the grace of life. Because grace has come does not mean automatically it has come. If grace comes, it will teach you. It will teach you to do some things. Not so. Teach you to deny. So there are certain denials. What is denial? Disobedient. When grace comes, it teaches me how to disobey disobedience and obey. Hey, obey. Obey God. Obey God. Obey God. Get me to truth. Grace will get me to obey and get me to the sprinkling of the blood until I get truth. When I have truth, then the next thing is what's a life. So life is when you see lives, they are promises. Promises. Elect. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Simon Peter. Elect. Simon Peter. Verse 1, chapter 2, second chapter. I, I rest my case here. My pastor, sir, I still need to teach this message here. I still need to teach this message. Amen, sir. This thing is another world entirely. The Bible has changed, sir. Bible has become something else. Ken, Bible is no longer, these are the secrets in Bible. The secrets of God are with them that fear him. He will show them his covenant. 
When God shows you a covenant, he has shown you the life. Because it is covenant that leads to life. Children, children, when you are going through contradiction, oftentimes, it's not just grace. You're actually making covenant. We, we need to understand what is happening to us. And when you are making covenant, you are breaking free from a spirit. You are breaking free from a spirit. Hallelujah. You are breaking. To break covenant of a family is not to cast out demons. Those ones are oppressors. Those are oppressors. They come as a result of covenant that is there. There is a covenant. Every household makes covenant. We, we make it. We make it. No matter how gentle your family is, there is a covenant there. That the prince of the power of the air has engineered. Second Peter, Simon Peter, a servant, an apostle of Jesus Christ, amen, that have obtained like precious faith to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you, grace and peace be multiplied. To you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Finally, according, now he went back, hallelujah, praise God, he went back to Christ, divine power, had given unto us all things that unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to everlasting life, to glory and virtue. Say it again, son. To what's that? Glory and you understand that virtue gone gone. Everybody say virtue. What is glory? Building. Virtue is the spirit, the life, the testament. That's the virtue. Amen. Praise God. To glory and virtue. Whereby are given unto us. Now, listen. Whereby, after you have done glory and virtue, they need to give to you exceeding great. Ah, Mike, did you see it? Glory, your house is built. Virtue, you have the testimony. And the covenant is struck. Amen. When you now have covenant, you have testament. You have the spirit of prophecy. You are the one God will give these things to. Exceeding great and precious promises. Exceeding whereby that by this ye might be what, sir? Partakers of divine nature, having what uh, escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss, exceeding great and what again and precious promises, Ex and through precious promises, we come into nature of the covenant. Promises. May God bless you all. I, I just want to say to you that every home here, every family here, that is passing away completely. Yeah. My brother, every sorrow is being wiped out completely. Yeah. Why? Who can tell me? Because the covenant of death and air is being disannulled. Yes. Every, are you representing your family? What you carry will touch the rest. Yeah. The Lord God will lift you up. Yeah. You are going to be an habitation of promises. Yeah. Promises. Uh, I want to thank God in this my lifetime. We are seeing promises.
very easy. There is no need to go into interpretation. Now, the reason for that thing, uh, I feel the Lord was talking to me somehow. Amen. That's my student. Uh, she talks about testimony. My gem, not so. And then she mentioned the lady, the lady. Now, and what is that, sir? Promises are for the head. That's the actual Yoruba translation about promises. The lady. The lady means something you like a turban. It's actually a crown. Uh, am I talking to you? So, so some of these languages hide secret things of deity. Amen. Hallelujah. So, the, the, the promise, the tongue's key. I don't think she machinated it. Shout hallelujah. She, she, I, or do you think she, she, she crafted it? You know, I used, you know, at times you can pretend to cry, this girl wants to bring some alcohol. But I don't think so. The way the spirit came upon her, we felt the presence in our hearts. Amen. That is uh, both testimony, house of covenant, and then it becomes what, sir? House of promises. So that thing does not come. Promise will not come until you have done the will of God. So that's why we have need of patience. To come to promise, you have to be patient. Many people have run and left some glorious, glorious promises. They left in anger. And then you have left something you will ever regret. Satan is a thief. Is a thief. I want to talk to you. Fight to take your promise. Are you getting? Don't let, if somebody say you will not survive in this church, tell the person you and I, we are going to die here. I say, you, you can never stop me. Instead of me leaving, you better leave. I don't care if you have the teeth of an iron. Here, I get my promise. You know, Satan can tell somebody, here they don't care too much. But are you sure they are giving you what you need for life? Your God-given destiny. If you find it anywhere, they may not be giving you everything. Not you. In this church, they don't love. They only teach big, big things. <laughs> are you listening to me? Uh, if I'm in a church, nobody loves me. As long as that word is coming, I know God's love coming to me is enough. I don't care about whether you love me or not. I'm not looking for I didn't come here to come and look for your love. I didn't come here to come and look because I did not know you from Adam. I only came here for God. I came here for who, sir? Now, now these are the things you should have. Some people, certain things in the state you <laughs> crying for who? Who are you crying for? Because somebody has sharp mouth. Go and take your sharp mouth and I don't care about your sharp mouth. Something is here. If you are working in a bank, will you get angry where they pay you 800 naira, 800,000 naira in a month because one, 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 one wooza is shouting at you. You want to frustrate you. Frustrate who? Frustrate who? I say frustrate who? Frustrate me. Frustrate me. Frustrate. I will frustrate you, Oga. I will look for a way to. How will I frustrate you? I build the frustrate me. I will buy you cake and chicken one day. Oga, if you eat this thing. Oh, Motania was a bad guy. We, wicked lunch. When I, I set it for you, I invite you to something. I arrange you, then I will get an. Now, K, send them to you. The bad boy, he knows how to wash the hands with an elder. <laughs> I will become his friend by force because you want to drive me from where I'm eating from. You can't drive me, you can't discourage me. Where something is. No, you develop wisdom when something is. Are you getting me? Is good for you. You, 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 you protect it. I said, you, you what, sir, my brother? You protect it. Amen. You know, in the world, some ladies are wise, so I know of a woman. 
Hallelujah. Your husband slept with somebody and she, she counts the cost of if this husband go, guys are not outside. You know what happened? They said the lady has given but she went, Pastor Emeka, you know the lady. She went and took the baby from the side chick and brought the chick, baby inside. Took care of it just to keep her husband. Then someone says, Oh, look, back, 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 back. What? Amen. She knows, and the husband will be shaking. Such lady, the husband, every day she was there. Where are you going? No, I just want to go there. You better sit down here. No, let me go on. Let me wear my bag. That lady has power. Am I talking to you? One small thing, you say you want to scatter yourself. I'm not, I won't, if it is me, honestly speaking, I won't come to church. One, you know, you both can, they have right. It's when you have right too much that you get angry. He came to church and, and somebody sat on his position, edge of the chair. Where are you going? He sat on my place. I tell him to stand up. He never stood up. I'm going home. So he doesn't know the meaning of church. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You don't, in church, nobody should get you hungry. Yes, sir. Oh, sister, something is something, something. What's your own concern about that, sister? Something, something. Amen. If somebody frustrates you out of choir, join cleaners. Yeah! Mm. Join cleaners. Join. Look for somewhere. Join. Yes, now, look at this person wants to frustrate. It's like the devil has possessed this sister. Okay, I know where. Okay, I know where she can't come. I know where she can't come. Toilet washing. Toilet, let me go to toilet. If she comes there, let's go. Where nobody likes to go. Here I come. She would, when you are like that, every demon worrying anybody, amen, will, will start avoiding you. You're a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. So how many of you will say, Daddy, we want to wait. No, no, don't get discouraged. Nothing should discourage you. What are you waiting for? Oh, husband has not come. You don't know what heaven is doing for you. They've been waiting for you to have covenant and promises. It's not easy for those who marry. But you, nobody, no husband say, wake up there, something, something. Shout Hallelujah. I know how I disturb my wife too. I have one problem, stew. Everyone shout hallelujah. Even this everlasting thing has not changed this taste bud. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Pray, forgive me, everybody. Everyone's just saying. Shout hallelujah. So my wife dealt with me. I came back from Lekki. There is this stew she cooked. She's the only one who knows my recipe. The, you understand me? The taste. All my daughters, they try, Daddy, what is wrong with Daddy? What is wrong? What kind of... They, they cook so I said, I don't like this kind of stuff. Forgive me. Oh, is, this Daddy is carnal somewhere. Please forgive me. In that area of soup. So my mommy cooked the soup, finished. I said, Mommy now had me complain. She said, oh, don't like the soup. Then we're about to go for prayer meeting. Then she went and bought the pepper the way they used to buy the pepper. Uh, hallelujah. Praise God. She has the... She alone can teach Jacob to take the promise. Are you listening to me? Uh, uh, <laughs> she, took, she brought the cook and cooked it less. While she was cooking it, I said, why are you cooking now? We are going. He said, I said no, you say you want chop soup. I said, yeah, but I didn't say you shouldn't go to work. Forget about it, you can do it. Mm -mm. And we are going to cook this soup. So she cooked the soup. I said, let's go to church. I said, no, she's not going. If anybody asks you, tell this. <laughs> I said. <laughs> so somebody said, What of mommy? Why mommy didn't come to that? I said, She's just resting and. <laughs> Pastor, hallelujah. Now still cause that problem. Everybody say, Hey, man. I'm not hearing you shout hallelujah. Amen. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's hungry, here. Don't let anything stop you from getting God. 
There is enough here. There is enough water. There is enough bread. There is enough wine. There is enough blessing that will bless your generations. What is here is for to your 10 generation. Now, do you like this word? This is house of bread. And this is Bethlehem. So, you know, I've not just used enticing words of men to which not. Or cunningly devised fables to declare these things to you. It came from heaven. You are going home. You know you are going home with a different body. With a different demeanor. And so, why you stay here? You didn't stay here to just hear what? Now, if you go to a shrine of demons, you pick things home. You can't be in God's shrine. You've been here since morning. And you think you are not carrying something home. I hear the Lord said, I will make my promises so. I will fulfill my promises in your life. I'm, I am hearing it in Yoruba language. Mamui, lady, me share. That's the, I will fulfill the promises. The promises. I said the promises in your lives. In your lives. Trust God. Trust God. Trust the Lord, living God. Amen. Are you blessed today? Yes, Quickly so we can, we can begin to go home. Amen. We, all, we, we have had mysteries of bread. Not so? Now, we are partaking of obedience. Bread is obedience. Not so? Is the body of covenant. Not so, my pastor. And it's also a promise. Not so? It's a promise. Everyone here, you will take this bread. I say you will take the bread. You will eat it. Shout hallelujah is a celebration of the things you have been hearing. And uh, after this experience, after this experience, there's going to be a blessing. A blessing upon you. I'm not hearing you say amen. amen. Uh, God wants us to take it and eat it. It's a great gift God is giving to us. It signifies what we have had today, what heaven has given to us today. The cup as well, you all know, is the life of the body. Not so? The life of the body is the experience of blessing. They call the cup the cup of blessing. There is a blessing. The, the bread also is blessed. Even your body should be blessed. <laughs> there is a blessed body. Not so? And there, are, there is also what's a, a blessed life. These two things, Satan ate them, Satan stole them. But these are the season of recovery. Is it possible for everyone, apart from our pastors, can you begin to thank God for restoration of these two things back to us? Thank you.
thank you, Lord Jesus. I, I worship you. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus. In Jesus' name, he has had thanksgiving to you, Father. I want to thank you for you knew that we will fall into darkness and fall into ruins before the foundation of the world you you made a remedy for redemption you, we thank you for slaying the lamb from the foundation of the world you gave us so much you saw the fall and you made the provisions more than the assault against mankind in the fall. So you gave more than the fall. You gave to us a body of obedience that you know that we have to journey in doctrine to receive to which your son the high priest at the right hand side of the majesty on high Jesus the son of God the great high priest passed into heavens my apostle my high priest our apostle and high priest of our profession thank you thank you I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your son. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the honor that we have to share Jesus' body and to share in his stains too. You gave us this body. He said, This is the your body broken for you. Your flesh. Both life and everlasting life and even eternal. We receive the body with thanksgiving. Jesus. You have opened our eyes to see the blessing and the cup. You have made our eyes to see the covenant. You said you will show them your covenant. Thank you. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for we know as we as we are holding this cup we are holding something. Uh, our hold of this cup We resolve to hold in the very cup in the spirit. And as we drink, we drink the same cup and drink in blessing. It's clear. The blessed life which you have given to us through your son. That Lord, everyone here, everyone here will indeed drink the cup. They will drink the blessing. They will have blessing in them. They will have life in them as against what Satan has given to me. Thank you for the life. Open their inside as they drink even this. Do a walk in them. Do a walk in them. Cut them. Open them. Incise them. Lift the veil. Let them assess the condiments of life. Bless them. Honor them. Give them gifts. Move them forward. Help them. Thank you, Father. Heal them completely. Take away the diseases of Egypt from our midst. 
Do it, Father. Thank you. Help us to, to pack it. Okay. As the cup and the bread is coming to you, please put some things on the line. Things that what you want Jesus to take care of. Let it be at the back of your mind. You are not drinking it for that sake. You are drinking it for both obedience and sacrifice. But if we drink this cup unworthily, we drink damnation to ourselves. And the Bible says those who do that unworthily sleep are weak. Not so. They sleep. Not so. And what happened to them? And what again? They are weak and they sleep. The third one, they sickly, weak, weak and sleep. Exactly. Sickly. So if this thing of disobeying this bread and this cup can make someone to go to sleep, to die physically, to be sickly, your body will be sickly because you have offended the cup and the bread. If this thing can happen, it means the other, the opposite is present. It's present. Trust in Lord. Let it be the beginning. Let there be a taking away of my infirmity completely. There is enough power to do that here. Shout hallelujah. How many of you will say, Lord, I will trust you. I will trust you. I will trust you. So shall it be in Jesus' name. We can go ahead. Yes, sir.
Praise God. Please, if you've not gotten wine or bread, wherever you are, just lift up your hands. You've not gotten what? Wine? Quickly, wine. Quickly, wine here. Those with wine here, the whole of this place.
life for my life And in response I give my life for your life Uh, you've gotten bread, you've gotten wine. If you've not gotten, let me see your hand. Okay, it's coming, they are coming. Those of you there, bread or wine? Bread or wine? Wine is coming. What of you? Amen. It will go around, don't worry, it will get to you, we have enough. Praise God. Now, I, I, I want mommy to pray for us finally, and so... While you're taking your bread, your wine, I want you to be attentive um, for this last blessing. Please, just do it calmly. If you're standing, just make sure you're not moving around. Okay. Hallelujah. Father, we give glory to your name. We adore you, Lord God Almighty, for your mercy. Lord, I thank you for the mercy that has visited us today. Thank you, God Almighty, for the opening of your bowels. Thank you, Father, for the giving of your secrets. Thank you, God Almighty, for the oppression of your spirits in this place. Lord, I ask, O oh God, that your grace will be multiplied to everyone. Lord, one thing I ask, O oh God is that you will enable everyone for obedience. Every, everyone will be empowered to obey you in the name of Jesus. Lord, you will open everybody's eyes to see, to see your commandments. People will understand what you are saying. They will receive commandments from your spirit. Amen. And they will be enabled, oh God, to obey. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, there will be empowerment Amen. for the exchange of life. Amen. Lord, you will empower everybody Amen. to agree with what you are giving. Amen. And to let go of what Satan has given. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You will bring everyone to the place of making covenants. Amen. And you will enable them to make covenants. Amen. Great grace, great grace will come upon people. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will, from today on, Lord, I ask to enable your people Amen. to stop dying. <laughs> You will refuse death. Amen. You will live. Amen. And live. Amen. And live. Amen. By refusing the offerings of Satan. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, I ask that eyes will open the more. Amen. Let us recognize those things that make for death. Amen. And let us re refuse them. Amen. By your power. In your mercy. In the name of Jesus, Amen. everyone in this assembly will leave. Amen. You will leave. Amen. You will leave and leave again Amen. by obedience. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Feeble knees shall be strengthened. Amen. You'll be strengthened to walk Amen. and walk Amen. and walk in his path. You will understand his laws. As he teaches you his laws, you will understand them. Understanding of God's laws will come to every heart. In the name of Jesus. And you will walk in his path. In the name of Jesus. Father, I give glory to your name. I give glory to your name. Thank you, Father, for coming to arrest death in our midst. Lord, you will enable every household to arrest death in the name of Jesus. Father, I exalt your name because this shall be a, the community of the living. This shall be called the community of the living. 
People will come to come and learn how to live. Because they will see that everyone is living. In the name of Jesus, you will inherit life. You will inherit everlasting life. In the name of Jesus. Father, we exalt your name. You will raise everyone. You will enable everyone to build. Build their houses. Build their houses. That you are going to inhabit. In Jesus' name. Lord, I exalt you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Ma. Hallelujah. So if you've not gotten, please, if you've not gotten wine, have you gotten wine? You've gotten wine. If you've not gotten, let me just see your hand so that they will reach you wherever you are. Okay, I want to assume everybody has gotten. Okay, the choir. All right. Just get to them. Bread is not finished. There are some other people carrying bread, trays carrying bread. Are all the trays returned? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you are blessed? As I was, I'm thoroughly blessed. And I'm glad we have this meeting. Thank God. Our time has not been wasted. Our time has been redeemed. I want you to understand that. And I want to beg you, make sure you listen to this message again. It will do you good if you listen to this message again. Hallelujah. Can we say thank you to daddy and mommy? Thank you for spending and being spent. We appreciate you greatly in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have some of our uh, brethren that are traveling that would want, before I hand over to, okay, let me pray for those who are giving their tithe. We are just trying to make sure we round up in good time. Uh, if you have your tithe to pay, let me just quickly pray, for, pray with us. Just rise up. Maybe you've transferred it within the week or you're just doing that today. Father, we ask that the blessing of today, the blessing of the promise, the blessing of the covenant, Lord, the grace will redound back to them in every way. In the name of Jesus. Father, I ask as they give their one tent, O oh Lord, I'm praying for them. That the, rebu the, the devourer will not have authority over anything that is yours. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the Lord will open the window of heaven and pour out to you a blessing which you will not have room to contain. In the name of Jesus, thank you, our Heavenly Father. Thank you for receiving us. Because as a high priest, you do not just receive tithe, you also receive men. Thank you for receiving us today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. All right, you can. Who is rounding up? Okay, uh, let me pray. We have two sisters that will be making a journey very soon, and they requested we should pray for them. Uh, you want me to do it here, or you want me to do it in the office? Praise God. Okay, let's, let's pray together. Where is Sister Amy? All right, both of you come forward. Let's pray. Let's stretch forth our hands and just ask for journey mercies and that the Lord will be with them throughout their stay. Let's pray for them. Father, we thank you. We thank you today. We commit these ones into your hands. And I'm asking that the same atmosphere of the Spirit will remain with them. In the name of Jesus, I declare the enemy will not afflict you. The son of wickedness will not exert upon you. Yeah, the amount of life you have received will increase exponentially. The enemy will not be able to steal from you. I surround you with faith and love. I surround you with salvation. Let the activities of salvation increase in your life. Even in this period, in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you will take them safely to where they are going to. And be with them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
God bless you. All right, Pastor. Amen. You're going to be very, very snappy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let y'all lift your hands and say, Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Okay, we believe there are special people that join us in today, one of the service that the Lord, by his mercy, bless us with today. If today is your first time worshiping here with us in New Living Livingway Church, can we see you by you raising up your hands? Do you have any newcomers in our midst today? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. Just welcome yourself in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, midweek service continue. Tuesday is our epistle life. And we've been encouraged and admonished to make sure that we often connect to this meeting. is our weekly activities. So please, let's endeavor and trust God so that all the package that God is giving us in this season will fully receive it in Jesus' name. So Epistle Life is every Tuesday by 12 noon. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, house fellowship will not hold today. Hallelujah. House fellowship will not hold today. We've been admonished by God's servant, our daddy, to read after Kenny Hagin books. And we can go to the book stand at the back and just pick like last week, daddy encouraged us to read after God's genera and some other book that were recommended for us. Okay, praise God. So please, let's endeavor and go there and collect our... Okay, praise God. Amen. Sorry, I've forgotten that we've not collected our offering. Please, can we bring out all our offering while we pray? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give glory to your name, our God. Thank you for the blessing that you showered on us today. We ask, O oh God, as we give our offering, Lord, we increase in the declaration of this life that the Lord has given to us today. In the name of Jesus, you will touch every area of our life. You will increase us by your mercy. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Okay, you can give your offering. Praise God. Amen. Okay, we also have Bible games for sale at the sales and library stand at the back of the church. Please, you can go there and pick your copy. And also, charity board that Daddy advised us. That is the First Corinthians 13 that we advise, you know, to take home, buy it, and just put it in front of your, or in your parlor, where you can always see it, and it will encourage us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let somebody say, Season of the Spirit. Season of the Spirit. Amen. Aren't you excited? Praise the Lord. This is a great anticipation in the Spirit that awaits us on the last three Sundays of April and the first two Sundays of May. Last three Sundays of April, that's Season of the Spirit, and first two Sundays of May. That it is starting April 14, next month, and it will run all through to May 5th, sorry, to May 12th. That is the Sunday of April 21st, 28th, and the 5th of May and 12th of May. Please invite some other people. And also, you can put it in your status. Let every other person know about it. Praise God. Okay, so circle this date in your calendar and engrave them in your heart. Prepare to transform. Prepare to be transformed. This is not just a notice. It is called a life altering encounter. So he's talking about season of the spirit. 
We have been encouraged to sow throughout this year since now the Spirit. Praise God. Did you hear what, what I just said now? We've been encouraged to sow for this year's season of the Spirit. And this year's season of the Spirit is starting April. So please, let's allow the Spirit of God, you know, let's yield to the Spirit of God and sow as we are being led by the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, please, sow. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. The account to sow in this season of the Spirit. Uh, please, uh, the media, can you display the account? It's Life in the Spirit Ministry. This is Asset Bank account, not the one you use for your tithes and offering. This is a special account, Asset Bank account. It will be di displayed on the screen. But meanwhile, while we're waiting for them, let me call it. The name of the account is Life in the Spirit Ministry. That is our mission account. The account number is 0760 5549496807605949968. Asset Bank account. Okay, that's it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. EJPM meeting, Tuesday's prayer meeting, 6 p.m. at Noik. Please, let's endeavor to be part of this meeting, either physically or we connect online. Lake Iso Center, Wednesday, hold by 11 a.m. Legacy House, beside UBA building, Admiralty Way, Lake and also... School of the Spirit on Thursday by 10 a.m. Venue, EJPM Auditorium 559 Krodu Road, Kosofe Bus Stop, K2. Praise the Lord. Revelation Hour Hall this Saturday by 6 p.m. at Noi Compound Charlie Boy Bus Stop. Praise God. All EJPM meetings can be streamed online. Praise the Lord. Let somebody say, wedding, wedding, wedding. Hallelujah. Okay, we have um, Brother Ogumbayo, Stephen. Brother Stephen, is he here? And Sister Akiwale Esther. Is she around? Praise God. Their wedding is Wednesday, Saturday. Wednesday this... Sorry, their wedding is this Saturday. Sorry, Saturday, 23rd of March. That's Brother Stephen and Sister Esther. On 23rd of March, 2024. Praise the Lord. All right, if this today is your birthday or wedding anniversary, or during the week you mark your birthday or wedding anniversary, please can we have you to come forward? Why? We'll pray with you. Praise the Lord. Wedding, anv wedding anniversary, birthday. Okay, we'll invite our pastor. Yes, sir. Pastor celebrating that day, Pastor Ayo, Pastor Tayo, and even popular day. Uh -uh. Wedding anniversary of birthday, well, wedding anniversary. 
um, and birthdays. Congratulations. Uh, do, do we have cake for them? Okay, so I, I think let the ushers move this so that we have a bit of space for cake. But shall we pray? Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you. Can we stretch forth our hands and just thank the Lord for them? Let blessings roll out from your mouth to them. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you for, first of all, your servants that you have added to their age. Thank you for Pastor Tayo, Pastor Lord. I thank you for your grace upon his life. Thank you for how you have used him, oh God, to be a blessing to this community. Lord, I thank you. And Lord, even for Pastor Ayo also, Ayo Mosey, Lord, I thank you for how you've used him to be a blessing to this community. I pray for them, oh God. I pray that, Lord, they will increase and increase and increase in every way. There will be multiplication of grace, abundance of grace. You will cause the work of faith to be perfected in the name of Jesus. That in this season, the things that have been declared will be their portion in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, O oh God, using them as a point of contact to reach every one of the brethren that is also here for birthday. I said that the same will be to them in the name of Jesus. I said you will not lose your portion. You will not lose that which is meant for you. You will come into it in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bless and keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you. The Lord will be gracious to you. The Lord will lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, even the peace of everlasting life. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Thank you for those who are celebrating their wedding anniversary. Father, I ask that the wine of their marriage will yet grow stronger and stronger. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray, oh God, that these homes will be a heaven of peace. In the name of Jesus, let the atmosphere of the Spirit, the atmosphere of love, atmosphere of heaven be upon these marriages. In the name of Jesus, thank you, our Father. We'll give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we have your cakes here, so just come forward for cutting of your cake and the table is long enough to contain all of you go on pastor please all of you file in as much as hallelujah praise the lord Hallelujah. Filing, 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 join. Come on, come on, go on. Hallelujah. Amen. So what do we say to the cutting of this cake? Huh? What do we say to the cutting of this cake? Promises. Hallelujah. Praise God. We say covenant and promises. At the count of three. One, two, three, go. That's your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. We give God praise. So sorry if you're worshiping with us for the first time. We don't normally close this late, but we have to receive this blessing today. Thank you for waiting. God bless you so much. All right. Amen. May we rise on our feet together as we share the grace in fellowship. Thank you so much for being patient. Thank you so much for waiting. 
God bless you. Amen. Turn to someone and hold him and tell him, surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And let the saints say, Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest on about with you throughout this week till we we'll see you again in fellowships in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.